this is the old cards run about to start. The first half is entering in 734 passwords. So if you don't want to watch this, watch the second part. The next stream, we're going to be doing all the collecting and farming enemy cards and all that stuff. And uh, that'll be a lot more interesting to watch. But just for archival purposes and proof that we did this, to get all the cards, I'm going to be starting the game and entering in 734 passwords. Because uh, that's literally the fastest way to do it. And apart from that, I'm actually picking the Thunder Nyan Nyan starter deck. Because uh, this is actually the easiest way to get the card. I could start with the KTW deck to get Firewing Pegasus, and then farm, uh, what's it called, Goddess of Whim from Deckmaster S, because I'm actually going to use Deckmaster S and I in this video. Um, but, uh, until then, we, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start with this deck anyway, because, just screw it, I just wanna start with a deck that isn't Patrician of Darkness or something, like, overpowered. Let's go! Hey, everybody, what's up? Keep the stream muted for sending positive vibes. Keep it muted? Well, that's silencing my voice. Sugar, how's it going? Disaster Beats, how's it going? How's my weekend? Good so far. It's about to tank because I'm going to be entering it over 700 passwords. Oh my god. Someone send help. Somebody help me. Send help! Nah, it's all good, guys. Appreciate the love. Um, Yeah, how have you guys been? How have you guys been? Send the tools to speed run. No, no. Yeah, guys, there is a new emote, by the way. Clovis edits. Sorry I kind of didn't announce that. That happened over the break of five days when I wasn't streaming. And also, I literally submitted that emote like three weeks ago, and it took until now to do it. Look at this. How, how, how different is this? We're doing a lowercase A instead of a capital A. Yeah, lots of editing ahead, lots of menuing ahead, lots of just torture, just pure torture. This is for archival purposes. I'm literally doing this so I'd never have to do this again. If we're ever doing like another wild unhinged Duels of the Roses stream, it will be something like a speedrun with a different starter deck or something like that. Yeah, just do that. If you ever want to absorb the culture and language of something, just keep, just be around that language as much as possible. It's like all the people who, uh, English is their second language. They improve by watching a lot of, like, English media and talking to people in English. Whether that was, like, online video games or whatever. That's right, I can use, uh, Turbo. You know, I probably could actually use Turbo during the run. Again, this is an official speedrun, I don't really care if it's disqualified. It will be split up in two parts anyways, probably. It depends, honestly, how long it takes to do the passwords. I don't even know, I haven't timed it. It will take... I'm predicting, like, hours. I'm hoping not. I'm really hoping not. Anyways, we're going to pick the Thunder Yarn Yarn starter deck. Because it comes with Goddess of Whim, so we get that for free. Um, and again, we technically can get that from the slots from Deckmaster S. So we could probably have picked King Tiger Wanghu instead. But whatever, I'm just going to commit to this. You're cooking the pizza today, Tana. Hey, Tana, what's up? What pizza are you cooking? Let me guess, it's a vegetarian one. It's a vegetarian one. Nice. You gotta eat pizza while you play Pizza Tower. I like it. And then change your name to Pete. And your last name to Zah. I'm so funny and original, aren't I? Guys, ah, I'm so happy to have you all here. You really mean a lot to me. And I'm sorry, again, I didn't stream for uh, a good five days. But yeah, really just real life stuff is it's quite important. And really, I want to give you guys a good stream. So I want to make sure I'm at my best um, so I can deliver you guys a high quality stream. Yeah, big brain shit. Big brain shit. Pizzeria Griffin. Um. Anyways, guys, for anyone sub, you already know this. I got more emotes coming. And if Angel Roastart sends me the finals of those, we actually will be getting whatever one of those are auto-approved before the blush 
and the smug emotes are going to be approved manually by some Twitch staff member at some point. I don't know. I really don't know. Oh man, I can't believe we're doing this. I actually can't believe we're freaking doing this. Who's ready? Who's ready to start entering in passwords, huh? Can I deliver a delicious pizza? Yeah, I can't really make one without some experience, but uh, yeah. Hopefully me. Ask my doctor if Duel's the Rose Law cards is right for me. You know, my doctor would probably say no, but... Doctor's office is closed, so... Boom. We're actually doing this, guys. We're actually... I, I am not prepared for this at all. So, this is gonna be fun. You know, it's gonna be, uh, interesting, to say the least. Interesting, to say the least. But hey, you know what? To keep myself entertained, what I can actually do is, uh, perhaps provide commentary on each of the passwords we'll be entering in to see if they're actually, you know, common and if they're good or not, you know? Uh, here we go. You guys ready? Literally 734 passwords. Good practice for a speedrun, right? So the first password is Blue Eyes White Dragon. You guys all love Blue Eyes White Dragon, right? That's the ultimate clickbait. Next we got Sayayu. Now Sayayu is one of the passwords that was originally released in the early sets of the game. Uh, there was like up to 20 passwords. And basically, this was like poor man's Blue Eyes White Dragon. It was a light dragon that had decent attack value when we didn't actually know the passwords for anything else. Next is Kaiser Dragon. Now, Kaiser Dragon, that's one. That's actually the highest attack card you can get in any starter deck in the game. It's in two starter decks. It's in the Luminous Soldier starter deck, and it's also in the um, Twin-Headed Behemoth. That's the card, right? That's what it's called. It's in that starter deck, and it's the highest attack card you can get from any starter deck. Next is Blackland Fire Dragon. You can also make this card by fusing a low attack dragon with a uh, low attack spellcaster. As long as they don't exceed. These are again passwords I've literally never entered in my entire life. And apparently there's fur in this password, so that's... Don't get too excited. Kimori Dragon is similar, so to get Kimori Dragon Oh god, this password's been entered wrong. Alright, so... Apparently, uh... No, it hasn't. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing double. The password's just so long, because there's all M's and W's. The password looks like... It's nine characters long, but it's not. Kimori Dragon, you fuse a fiend... With a dragon. There we go, it does work. Curse of Dragon... So, you can actually also fuse this as well, Curse of Dragon. You fuse a zombie with a dragon, but uh, they need to be... At least the zombie needs to be 1600 attack or higher. It's definitely at least one of those. Also, you guys heard about SM64, right? Well, this is SM63, apparently. So, that was the prequel, I guess. The prequel... To... Um, Gonna do all duels. Yes, I have to. Um, I actually literally have to duel and beat people to get cards from their graveyard slots. So, yeah. We have to actually beat pretty much everyone anyway. And also, um, to unlock the extra map, like the map creator, you have to beat both sides of the game. Darkfire Dragon, you can get this card from my... Everyone loves Mai, right? Taiho number two. Uh, you use this card, actually. If you fuse Taiho number two with any Dark Dragon, you will make a Red Eyes Black Dragon. Very, very cool fusion. Even though it's a bit jank, but... It's very, very, very handy to have that fusion. Rear Ran, you can get Rear Ran from Joey, by the way, in the slots. 
Not actually sure if you could reincarnate to get this guy, but you don't need to. Possibly every card without passwords. No, it's not. It's not. So I'm only entering the passwords of all the cards that have passwords, and then we have to get the rest manually. Mungaree ran... So you can get this from... Um, Pegasus, obviously, from the graveyard slots, but also reincarnate for this, too. Let's move. Now I'm obscuring because it's going to bring my passwords closer to my screen. What's next? It's Crawling Dragon. You get a uh, Crawling Dragon from Joey. Really not a good card with Crawling Dragon. It's just not. Five stars for 1600 attack is just bad. It's just bad. My eyes are failing me. Let's see. Cursed password. This is hell already. Because I'm like... Yeah, this is why I'm not really caring about most of this. It's not going to be 24 hours, there's no way. I'm going to be doing this in different parts. Um, I'm going to be entering the passwords this stream, and then we're going to be moving the frick on from that unfun part. Oh, this is an easy password. I don't know what the hell this is. Because to have my uh, passwords closer to my screen, I am literally... Like, obscuring the actual names of the password. It's Meteor Dragon, there you go. Meteor Dragon. So, are there any glitches in this game? No, actually. Um, well, uh, that's not right. I mean, in, in terms of skips or whatever, there's no glitches like that. The only glitches in the game are just stupid things that, like, you can't actually do in the campaign. Um, the most game-breaking glitch I know of is you can actually take control of the enemy deck leader, but you need specific cards to do, and it's literally impossible unless you're controlling... Both of the people, anyway. Um, it's actually just like... It will literally never happen in a normal... Uh, like, run of the game. Like, it's impossible to have that happen on the campaign, so... By the way, if I'm not paying attention to chat enough, just yell at me, because I literally would love to uh, have as much interaction as possible to keep me sane. What is this password? I recognize this. Uh, UMQ. What's this? And then Ducat. Look at this. Like Ducati. Yamatano Dragon Scroll. Well, there you go. There are glitches, but as I said, like, it's... Just... In, in a speedrun, like, nothing. The only glitch I know of that can occur in a speedrun is basically if the AI shit themselves, which only Ishtar seems to do. Still haven't really figured out why that happens, but I have experienced that in a couple runs before. How to get Dungeon Worm in this game? I'm pretty sure it has a password, otherwise you just reincarnate for it. Like, now is not a time for me to, like, scroll through the list. Um, if you look at below my stream, at the cards, that's what, or the panels, rather, there's actually a resource there that has the spreadsheet that I'm looking at how to get all cards, so have a look at that. What? 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 What's that? Let's try entering this password again. UB2T 8-1-A-M Okay, well that makes sense. So, I was trying to enter in the password after this and then started entering in the previous password because I didn't move my mouse. That's great. It's great, we're off to a great start, guys. We're off to a fantastic freaking start. Alright, don't get it wrong this time. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what we wanted. I 
I recognize this password. This is uh, Parrot Dragon, right? Parrot Dragon. Because it's got Utah, but spelled with an R. Yes, Parrot Dragon, the motherfucker. Guys, uh, Parrot Dragon is one of the upcoming emotes. Unironically, one of the four upcoming emotes that I'm currently in the process of commissioning. So if you like Parrot Dragon, get prepared. What is this, 8 Hardcore X? This is the most hardcore freaking dragon I've ever seen in my entire life based on this password. I don't even know what it is yet. I don't even know what it is yet. The Legend of the Rent was way hardcore. Oh, it's Fairy Dragon. That, that is absolutely hardcore. Fairy Dragon, guys. do 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 Hope you guys like the uh, deck edit music. I already cannot wait until tomorrow because that's gonna be. Uh... Look, it may not be. It's not gonna be as reliable as this, but I'll tell you what, it'll probably be more uh, interesting to say the least. Oh, we're in the spellcasters now. That's a good sign. There's gonna be so many spellcasters, actually. E52. You know, instead of the B-52s, it's the E-52. What is that? J-F... Nehek. That's gruesome. Gruesome goo? Not quite. YP? What is a YP? Isn't that like, um... That's like a guy on Twitch? Uh, I swear I've said that before. Really, uh... <laughs> Unless I see something really remarkable that's worth commenting on... Probably won't be providing a really massively insightful commentary on that card. Unless something's quite remarkable. Like Lamoon! Oh, she's cool. She is cool. Uh, she's actually really not a good card, but I, I love her monster model. One of my favorite uh, deck leaders in the game, unironically. He's basically a spicy dark witch. For anyone who played this game, what was the password that you guys most relied on as a kid? Because I'm pretty sure we all use passwords as a kid, right? I absolutely did the first time when I was beating the game. And let me tell you, the Royal Decree password, I could not enter enough times. Aqua Dragon is also one of the better ones, it is absolutely amazing. Even without realizing the amount of, like, cheese you can do, um... Everyone knows this password, because the end of one of the sides of the game tells us every single time. This is, uh, Fairy's Gift, which is actually a very, very, very cool card. Aw, isn't she... isn't she cool? Oh, and this is another one. G-M-E-1-S-3-U-M. I'm pretty sure this is Magician of Faith. Which is also very good, because this allows you to, like, revive stuff like Mirror Force, you know, and then you feel like a boss, because the AI crash into it. Yeah, there you go, Magician of Faith. Magician of Faith. Um. Yeah, without even cheesing the enemy, just always having 2750 was pretty good. If only I knew as a kid... You know, getting, like, any, literally any equips. Like, I think, actually, 
Dragon treasures were the equips that I used the most. Ancient Elf. On, um, Aqua Dragon. Even though, you know, you have the, like, High Tide. High Tide Gyojin and, and Power of Kaishin, a.k.a. Power of Gyojin. I'm pretty sure it's because, um, by the time I, like, knew about the second half of the game, which was the easier half of the game, the White Rose side, I wasn't actually... My deck was overpowered enough to the point of not caring, or I just actually knew about all the, like, duping your cards, like, you know, Deckmaster K and all that. Something that was really missing, though, that I think probably is, like, really just game destroying we never had um not that i even knew this but we never had a ps1 memory card and that's man deck master t deck master t actually just is the easiest opponent to duel you literally just crash into his cards and then attack his deck leader a few times that's all you do and you literally get like some of the best cards like most useful cards you can get in the game Stuff like, you know, pretty much all the trap cards that are obtainable. And, um... In particular, like, you get Paralyzing Potions as well, but, like, between Paralyzing Potions... And, um... What was it? Shadow Spell, man. Shadow Spell is just so strong. It really is, like, crazy how strong that card is. Just... In, uh, Player versus environment in general, just trap cards, you can literally just put them randomly just in the middle of the field and the opponent will attack them. Even if they're like freaking face up, like it's actually insane. What the hell is this password? Wubuk? Yubuk? Laruk? <laughs> I, as a kid I try to always say the passwords like like, pronounce them as if they're a word to help remember some of them. This password is literally Yubuklarook, and it's the Unhappy Maiden. Well, that fits. I feel like I've entered this one before. I don't know what it is, though. Maybe it's just like a similar pattern to a, a different password. What is this? Oh, left arm with a bit- well, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, so what was that? Okay, and then this password is Exodia, the Forbidden One. That's uh, ominous for whatever's coming up. There you go, there's Exodia. That means we've, we've uh, summoned Exodia, right? We don't have to do anything else, right? Right, can we just can we just call it there? We've done the hardest thing in the game, guys. We got Exodia, the forbidden one. So it's all done now, right? Right. Oh my god, where is the T? It's Soggy the Dark Clown. Guys, remember Soggy the Dark Clown? Remember Soggy the Dark Clown, like with fucking when uh, Kaiba first summons it. <laughs> and he puts, what's the card? Negative energy generator on it. Where was negative energy generator in, you know, the booster packs as a kid? Love this game, I'll help myself. No, I love my subs. I love my subs who got me to this point. I'm doing this for the subs. Because I love you guys. I want to take care of you guys. I... Don't want to fail you guys on my promise. Now, I do love this game, but of course, it's pretty obvious that uh, I don't... I'm not in a rush to be doing this again. Pretty much immediately, I think everyone knew that this was going to be a massive pain. But honestly, I think after the password thing, it'll actually be a lot of fun. Um, yep, we're getting all the cards in the game. Yep, so that means we're literally entering in 734 passwords. 
And then we're gonna have to farm uh, all the other stuff that doesn't have passwords. And for every unobtainable card, we have to basically special summon them or, you know, just summon them basically because uh, special summon isn't really a thing in this game. So like for example, to get Summon Lord Exodia, we actually have to physically summon Exodia to put that card in our library. Um, we also have to like Destiny Draw, Woodland Sprite. We have to Destiny Draw, Woodland Sprite. We have to Destiny Draw, uh, what's it called? Arsenal Bug. There's no other way to play those cards or bring them out apart from Destiny Drawing them. Um, but in all honesty, I don't care how painful that stuff is. It's going to be way, way, way more interesting than, you know, just a password entry. So that's why I'm doing all this now. And then we also can use these cards to build a deck that can do more interesting stuff. And I, like, I am very aware that, like, this is going to be... That's going to be a lot more interesting than this. Yo, what's up, Tater Talk? I hope, you do, I hope you guys are going, doing well. I hope you guys uh, won't be so emotionally drained by this. Oh, nice, you did it with the fist. What is that, like a Mario fist? I don't know, I can't really uh, see it right now. What are we doing here? We're losing track of where my mouse is on the screen. That's what we're doing. Oh, yes. Yes, I gotta move my mouse pretty much whenever I enter a password so I know what password I'm on. Otherwise, I'm gonna, gonna screw it. You live for these runs? I'm glad, man, because as, I, as I've said a million times, not literally a million times, um, this is a hard part. So I'm basically front-loading the part that sucks. And then, um, I don't know. I doubt we'll do the rest of the stuff tonight. Um, I would, you know what? I would actually like to do it all in one run. That would be fantastic. Dive the runs with a gun. Ah, uh, I mean, I I gotta tell you guys something. How many am I in? Uh, like sixty, approximately. You can see my chest in my library. I've entered in fifty-four passwords actually. So, uh, pff, I don't know. We're five to ten percent of the way in. At twenty-one minutes. <laughs> We're doing great. I don't know, I don't want to, like, destroy myself over these passwords. I am kind of taking my time. You know? And at the end of the day, like, I want to accompany you guys. I don't want this to be complete bore fest for everyone. You guys are keeping me sane here. You guys are my my contact. You know, like, oh my god, what is, what is going on? I'm entering in a different password. GBNP. Yeah. Dude, I'm also forgetting my... I have, like, an iced coffee thing in the fridge. One, when I want a break, I'm absolutely grabbing that. Yo, Dot Hack, thank you so much for coming in, man. And thanks a lot for the honest feedback, honest, honestly. Uh, how, many, how many honestly is about to say the same sentence? Blah, blah, blah. Thanks for the honest feedback on the emotes, man. Um, again, I probably will talk about emotes a lot today. Because I am still, like, OCD as fuck about them. Um, basically to get the value out of what I'm paying for these emotes, I have to basically make sure they're as perfect as possible because, as everyone's seen, fucking Angel Roaster is amazing artists. Like, they look so impressive. But what I'm actually looking for is what's not perfect to be perfect. What the hell? What am I doing? Um, thanks for popping in though. And again, for anyone who's lurking, thank you so much. Uh, I do understand... That this is the boring part of the run. Like, obviously I'm well, well, well aware of that. Um, so I just want to uh, provide as much hospitality as possible. Um, and I said before, um, I start work uh, on Monday. And I've got four shifts in a row lined up. Okay, I've entered that. Well, that makes sense. Um, so... At that point, I'm going to be going... I want to get this out of the way so I can go back to, like, no password speedruns and stuff. You know, I'm probably going to be doing that until I get a, a pretty good time and then eventually go back to console any percent. Still want to get that uh, 104. I want to get that podium. The boring gameplay part of the run. You really want me to suffer, don't you? You guys love me. Tater Tot is sadist. E-R-S-R. -R. 
Yo, Necker, what's up? Hello, how are you? I hope you're doing well today. I hope you're all doing well today, of course. I really, really hope you guys are doing incredibly well. Hope the job's fitting. Yeah, so we're going to find out the hard way. I have to be honest. I literally, like, I kind of need money to a point where I am just going to shut up and zip it. And just follow instructions and work. I have not much of a choice really right now. You feel sick? Oh, what's wrong? What sort of sick? You better be taking care of yourself, man. You better be, uh, better make sure you're hydrated. Get some nice nutritious food in you, and if it's a struggle to get nutritious food in, make sure you get some, like, easy energy, like, easy calories in. What kind of job is it? So I'm actually working at a Nando's. I don't know if you have Nando's and what country you're in, but it's basically a chain restaurant that serves, like, uh, roast chicken. It's like spicy roast chicken is what they specialize in. You take care of yourself. Good. Good. I'm starting to sound like you. Uh, are you sick as well? Or are you like a nanny like I am? I do want to make sure everyone's taking care of themselves. Or do you mean just the desperation for money? You're also motherly. Are you a mother? You could be. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely, I got it from you, but I mean, seriously, like, if you, uh, it, it's very important if you're skinny, again, I don't want to open up a huge bag of worms, but, like, skinny people have a responsibility to take care of themselves just as much as people who are not skinny, and we have different problems and different things to tackle, so, if you're underweight, I have plenty of experience being underweight, I still technically am on the border of being underweight, Yo, this password says G-Car. Shout out to fucking G-Car. <laughs> G-Car 2006. Alright, sorry, had to. Person don't want kids? I understand that. Kids are a double-edged sword. Um, I think it would actually be awesome. But it would also be a fucking massive headache. Like a massive headache. I don't think I'm really prepared to raise kids or anything like that. Yeah, it's Buku. And yeah, um, I do, like, I have warmed up to the idea of, you know, I do love life. I love celebrating just life in general. Um, the problem is, you know, I can't really... I don't even know if you call it maturity or just, like, headspace-wise or sensitivity. I guess sensitivity is a word. I'm a pretty sensitive person, for better or worse. I don't actually know if I'd be able to handle, like, and stay sane dealing with a baby crying and screaming all the time. And I think it's a more rational thing for me to just say no. Like, even though having a kid would be great, like, I think it would actually... It would be so massively draining that maybe I am not fit to raise one. Like, I wouldn't be a, the best father if I would be, like... I don't know, what if you're, like, plugging your ears, you know, as your baby, like, you're changing your baby's diaper or whatever? Oh, illusory gentleman. I think having a kid would be amazing. But it also would be massive, like, years of a headache, years of struggling. And I haven't even mentioned all the financial part and everything like that. You have a daughter on the way. Oh my god. Dude, Congratulations. I'm sure it sounds terrifying, but remember, there is, uh... There's a healthy level of being worried and being anxious about something. Like, it's a good sign that you don't just think it's all going to be fun and games. Like, you are obviously understanding that it's going to be quite a lot of work. But it's a healthy level. Because, man. It will be a lot of work, but it's going to be so, so, so rewarding. I know so many people who have had kids, and it's been an absolute blessing for them as much as it's been terrifying as much as it's been draining it's given them like a purpose and you can't really like replace that there's really not many things in the world nowadays that gives you such a big purpose and like i as long as you do it right i think it'll be one of the most rewarding experiences you can actually have like period you know um it would just be so awesome to see your own, like, your own creation, your own being, your own kin grow and expand. 
Um, and just, man, that will be so awesome. And I feel like if I don't have a kid, which is quite likely, to be honest, I'm definitely, when I'm older, I'm going to miss and regret not having had that experience. And I kind of try to live vicariously through, you know, other siblings, which is, you know, I feel like I'm the uncle type and not really the father type. I don't know if any of you guys understand or agree with that sentiment on, like, your own behalf. But I'm so ready to support, you know, the family around me, but I can't, I don't think I'm going to be the best to be responsible for raising uh, children. Like, I just think I need to do a lot of self-work before that. Oh my god, Leo is the worst guy in the game. Yeah, and exactly, you could, uh, like, unironically, not teach them to speedrun, but... Your kids will play the games that you played, you know? They're gonna grow up with, like, your old games, and they're gonna wanna, like, especially if you're playing it, they're gonna wanna play it. They're gonna wanna have a go at it. And, um... Your kid could be, like, a goddamn freaking prodigy. Or a pendulum. My jokes are so shit. They learn in the wrong one. Exactly. Nobody's born ready. No one's born ready for anything. That's part of the challenge. Because the thing is, if you got something coming up that has some degree of responsibility, it's still really nothing. It is absolutely nothing compared to... Like, the challenge of a kid. I think that's the ultimate challenge. Like, well, that's a freaking... <laughs> not, a, not a Ratchet & Clank 2 arena ultimate challenge, but an actual, like, the ultimate challenge you could have as a human is raising a family, honestly. There is, like, nothing that has more of a burden of responsibility than that. Yeah, exactly. Go, Timmy. Go kill the god. Go tell the god who's boss. Aw, oh, Timmy, you did an awesome job slaying that god. You were here. Hey, man, what's up? Fabric, I'm literally entering in over 700 passwords, so... Please help. Please send help. <laughs> also, I saw you were uh, streaming earlier, man. How did that go? Also, uh, within the next 24 hours, or I guess on Sunday, man, I'll be sending you the last pieces of the puzzle. Not the Millennium Puzzle, but um, the cache, collector's cache things from Dota 2. And then I can finally uninstall that game to clear some hard drive space. Guys, can you believe that I'm actually going to uninstall Dota 2? Can you guys actually believe that? I have 7k hours in that game. 7k hours in Dota 2, and I have literally nothing to show for it. Also, already, I'm kind of prepared to let go of... Like, I have, um... PlayStation 3, it's at my friends currently, but, like, seriously, I will so give that to my future niece. You know, assuming that my, uh, sister and brother-in-law actually end up having a son. Um, I'm so ready to be like, hey man, here's a PlayStation. Like, treat it well, then you know how to take care of other video games later on, like when you get them as presents, or you save money for them. I'm so prepared f for them to play that and, you know, play some, like, of the Ratchet & Clank trilogy and stuff like that. Oh, we're at the zombies now! We've moved on, we've done all the spellcaster passwords, guys. Isn't that exciting? Can't take streaming seriously because he interwebs his garb. Are you still with, uh... You're not with Telstra, are you? It's funny because Telstra is literally the best thing we have. And it's such like a... It's a red pill to realize that Telstra, out of all fucking brands, is literally the option. Yeah, I'm really excited. Like, that's the one thing I'm really excited for, which probably sounds lame. I mean, I would love to teach them cooler stuff than that. But to be fair, like, I am a nerd as fuck. So, honestly... You know, they're going to learn a lot of shit in real life. And then if I'm ever, like, babysitting them or whatever, here's, uh, here's a PlayStation 3, here's some Maccas. And, uh, you're on your way to Uncledom, as they call it. Do you guys actually think... Because I don't think it's a really a hot take, but I think the best console in history, for its time was absolutely the PlayStation 2. I don't know really, like, what even comes close. 
I actually think that the PlayStation 2 was the turn of gaming consoles becoming the one thing that everyone just needed in their house. Like, yes, this was before the internet was really booming, and somehow, you know, just the integration with the DVD player, basically, like, suddenly, not everyone needed a VCR player and a Nintendo. It was now you need a PS2. Like, that literally is the one thing you need with a TV in your living room. And if you have a PlayStation 2, you can do anything but, you know, access the internet. Past PS2. I mean, in terms of hardware and graphical fidelity, absolutely. But... It's just, I don't know, man. The PlayStation 2, like... It still goes so fucking hard, man. The PlayStation 2. Like, how can you... How can our generation possibly grow up without being nostalgic when we grow up with the PlayStation 2? It's fucking impossible. It's actually impossible. Yeah, the PS3 was good, but... Mm, uh, uh. Like, how many actual good games did the PS3 end up having relative to the PS2, right? All the good series from PS2 started to really take a dive. The PS3 is good, don't get me wrong. But I feel like... A lot of the good PS3 games were the multiplats. Um, very few good exclusives. Again, of course, God of War is one. Yo, Pandora, how's it going? Guys, sorry, if I've missed anyone in chat, please scream and yell at me in all caps. Um, because I am actually basically entering in 700 plus passwords and um, trying to scan my eyes to chat whenever I can possibly. I already called you, Neko Cat. I already, I already addressed you. It's okay. Hi again. I'll say hi again. If I haven't said hi to you a second time, you can claim your second hi right now. If I miss anything, please, again, you can let me know. And uh, I appreciate that you guys are also being very hospitable towards each other in the chat, because a bit tied up at the moment, you know. Well, my eyes are. I'm free. I can move my hands, but... For now. I think if I talk more shit about PS3 exclusives, someone's going to get me. Going to birthday on Wednesday? Yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming very close. Uh, I remember it felt like only just a couple nights ago, it was 10 days. Where am I? Um, yeah, happy future birthday, woohoo! I don't actually know if I'll be streaming on that day, by the way. Or if, you know, you'll be spending it in a stream if I am streaming on that day. Where the hell is the queue? Here it is. Yeah, Temple of Skulls, what a broken card. Temple of Skulls is actually very, very powerful. That'll be one of the most degenerate cards if this was multiplayer. How is it broken? Do you know the effect of Temple of Skulls? It means neither player can activate monst um, sorry, magic cards. That also means you can't destroy it with a magic card. Or, you know, like you can't fissure it, you can't, uh, like, eternal rest it. You just can't. You have to attack it to destroy it, which... I know that so it sounds a lot easier than you'd think it is. You have to basically build an advantage over someone who's... If you... If the enemy has first turn and they activate that card, like, and you're... You just can't use magics anymore, pretty much. What the fuck is this password? Look. Eri. Look at this. E-R-E-H. It reminds me of uh, Spider-Man 3 when he's like, Harry. You know, the villain, the bad guy, Venom, whatever's played... I don't know who it is, but his actual, like, real name is Harry. He's like, Harry. Zeno, what's up? Yeah, everything's been good, man. Congratulations, by the way, on your sub-110. That shit is fucking juicy. Sorry I didn't, uh... I would have uh, probably celebrated that a bit earlier, but I haven't been streaming for six days. You totally deserve that, man. You've been working your ass off to get that time. Do not stop. As long as it's... As long as you're not going absolutely insane, do not stop. I really want to see more people succeeding with this game, and... I know you're capable of more, if you keep applying yourself. Stick of Truth? But isn't Stick of Truth multiplat? 
most broken card of the game, why is it Mirror Wall? The most broken card in the game is Ryoku. Mirror Wall is very powerful. One of the, obviously, Mirror Wall is in the top three of trap cards, absolutely. Um, you can argue that Royal Decree is better than all other trap cards. But on the contrary, if other trap cards weren't good at all, then Royal Decree would be useless. Ryoku is head and shoulders above every other card, though. It is really in its own tier. Absolutely within its own tier. Also, I never played a God of War game. I know that's a big exclusive. Uh, the PS3-wise, the game that I played... The PS3 exclusive that I played was... Um, Metal Gear Solid 4. Very, very, very good game. Um, I know any Metal Gear Solid fans in the chat are probably going to be like, What the hell? That's like the worst one! But you know, if it wasn't for that game, I would have never had uh, any decent experience with Metal Gear Solid games. And I honestly, in my opinion, you can disagree with me if you want. I actually think that Metal Gear Solid 4 is way better than Metal Gear Solid 5. Like, way better. I actually think that... I don't know. I don't know why Metal Gear Solid 5 got rated so highly. I actually don't understand that. I get the whole open world thing, but man, I played that game. I bought that game and I played it. And all I did was fault on shit for hours. And I'm just like, man, I actually would rather have, like, missions, you know. And, like, levels in a game like this, to be honest. Yeah, Fire Reapers in this game, you can actually get it via a three in a row. Um, one of the random ones. Yeah, so multiplats, I don't really count multiplats, honestly. I just don't. Because then you can't, like, obviously you can have fun playing these games, but if you're going to argue that the PlayStation 3 is great and you use a game that was also on the Xbox 360, it's kind of like... What? What? I don't know. Where the hell am I going? Overshooting the mark. What the hell am I doing, actually? T-A-H. May one of the Aeon unit pick up ten cards. You are brutal. Do you ever do that to bread? You should. For the bants, you know. For the bants. It's kind of news to me how Resident Evil 4 is this ultimate multiplat game, because really, in my head, the ultimate multiplat game was Skyrim, you know? And I guess GTA 4, uh, sorry, GTA 5 as well. Resident Sleeper 4. What? You don't like GTA 4? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Wait, what's the, what's the fucking Jordan Peterson interview meme? So what you're saying is you don't like games. No, no, I was, I was just doing my impression of Kermit the Frog. So what you're saying is you hate children's toys. Alright, I'll drop the drink. It's not even that funny. I just love the so what you're saying is like and taking it out of context. I think that's a fucking hilarious meme format. It's like I support equal rights. So what you're saying is no, no, no I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. You do it to win. Owned man. You should be like uh, whoever uh, win, whoever loses a game of Uno has to cook. Just do that to bread. And then just give him the old fucking pick up four. Draw four, draw four, draw four. Even though you can't win on it. But I don't know. You know more about the game than I do. Remind me guys not to play Uno with Pandora. Because I'm going to get my ass handed to me. And I'm not prepared for that amount of humiliation to lose at a card game when I am a speedrunner of this game. Do that to Walter White. Why? Uh, what What happens? I haven't watched Breaking Bad, guys. Please don't kill me. Yeah, I don't. Instead, I've got to play freaking games like uh, Trivial Pursuit and Risk. You know, I'm stuck with those. We have to cook. Yeah. Let him cook. 
But it's fucking Woody in Kingdom Hearts 3, you know that meme. Oh, great man with a gold fine! Look at that card, a speedrun card, right? We're entering in Patrician of Darkness deck stuff. Oh my god, you played with someone colorblind Neko. You can't do that, that's so mean. Oh my god. That's actually brutal. <laughs> that's one of those real, like... What's it called? Like, dark humor sort of jokes. That's actually brutal. Brutal as hell. Does it actually come free? Let me guess, it's uh, digital download. It's funny, because you guys remember uh, Christmases and birthdays going to, like... Maybe your family was lucky enough to get, like, a package deal of a new console with, you know, a couple games. Now they do that, but you don't get the games. They just give you a piece of paper. A piece of wax paper with the download codes. You... S U7, bro? Look at this, U7. Uh, Moon Envoy, dude. Moon Envoy! Oh, underrated card aesthetically, for sure. I think that card looks very, very cool. I kind of just wish it was not shit. U7, bro? Yeah, U7 was just part of the password that I was reading out, and it's like, instead of you mad, bro, it's like U7, bro. Yeah, true, true, true. That's in like every second freaking password is U7. Or like FU7. It's like, dude, what, what did 7 do to you for you to say FU? Yo, Danny! Hey! Sorry, I actually have to... It's alright, I gotta stretch my hand out. Uh, sorry. Uh, wait, it's a judgment hand. What's up, man? Sorry. I'm like, very, very immersed. Yo, Alyssa, what's up? Alyssa speedruns! What else would SR stand for? What I just enter? Guilty of the D Knight. I am now doing Luminous Soldier. You love Roy Spectre of John this game? Why is that? Oh, Neko! Neko! I'm not joking when I say one of the upcoming emotes is actually Ro Spectre of Dawn. I'm not kidding. I wouldn't say this to bullshit you. So get excited. Maybe I've already told you that. Um, yeah, Danny, uh, I feel bad. I'm like, um, sorry, because I'm like trying to enter the passwords, trying to have a chat, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, thanks for the congrats, man. Uh, it's, look... Not everything is going exactly how I imagined things to go, but, um... I have to go with this, really. I do... I'm on the grind, pretty much. Like, my goal... Oh, we're at Warriors. Okay, that's right. My goal, really, right now, my priority is to get money. And, uh, the job will actually have to be my number one priority, guys. I do not want to put you guys second, but let me tell you. My motivation when I'm at work is to know that I can come home and I can stream to you guys. And I want to keep my stream... And, you know, this whole community, as best as possible, I really want to fight for it and protect it with all my life. And part of that is getting a job um, and grinding, really grinding my ass off because I've been way too lazy for way too long and I really needed to do something about it. And um, truthfully, again, like, I'm not just saying this to try and be nice or sentimental. Like, you guys are actually a huge, huge, huge part of my life. All of you guys. Like, I do... I do think about you guys quite often. And I know it's... Maybe that's just kind of blanketing, like, umbrella style. But it's every now and then, like, just... I'll look at a card or just look at something. And something will just remind me of one of you guys. And hopefully, uh, it's a it's a friendly reminder. But I am honestly thinking about you guys a lot. Um, and trying to not get too hard in my head about stuff like, uh, you know, feeling guilty for taking days off because I've just had a lot of real life shit going on lately. Yo, Dusk, what's up? How are you, man? Hello, streamer, my dude. Uh, dude, man, I didn't even know what you said yet. So, so uh, let me read that in a second. Let me read that. Let me cook. A hop shed. How do I shit-ass cum dragon card? Uh, it's impossible. You need to, uh... You gotta take the game, Dust, and you gotta shove it up your asshole, basically, is how you get that card. Um, so try that, if you have a copy of it. You streaming as a form of therapy for myself? Uh, I will say that, yeah, um, there is some therapy 
into being in this environment, I'm just like... I wouldn't call it therapy. I feel like, again, I don't know, I have actually no confirmation if I have ADHD. It's just very likely to a point that if I get tested, it will probably confirm it. Um, but I, again, it, it costs money for the assessments. And right now, I think the solution for me is to do things that, you know, stimulate or whatever. Don't take that too lewdly. Oh, it was Green Kappa. And then, uh, so basically, streaming gives me something to interact with, something to do with my hands, which is my hands get very, very, very restless if I'm not actively doing something like typing. I type a lot. If you guys have ever talked to me, you know I type a lot. I, I, I'm, well, I'm well aware of that. And uh, I get to socialize. Like, this is really... I, I really like the social buzz. I love chatting to you guys and not just like... Not just everyday people you bump into that might hide their interesting things that they have to say, but, you know, people... We all have a similar interest. We all grew up with the PlayStation 2, pretty much. And apart from that, we're all very, very, very different people. Really, we're all very different, and there's, like... It's actually very, very, very interesting to get to know, like, all the different, like... People. Oh, that card sucks. You have ADHD? It kind of... I never really want to say to someone, like, it makes sense, but I do believe most people who are, like, on Twitch and multitasking, like, you know how you like to watch the stream while, um, knitting? It makes sense, because pretty much whenever I'm on, the com uh, on my computer, I have to have something going on in the background while I'm doing something actively, and I need the right level of comfort and activeness to achieve, you know, that flow state. That's not an ADHD-bound thing, obviously, but um, to be at comfort, I need to be really occupied, and my brain needs to be stuck into something. Um, and I'm sure, even without ADHD, I'm sure a lot of people can probably relate to that. Um, again, that's why I've not really been too focused about diagnosis or whatever with that, because talking to people... I, I, like, th I don't know if this is really a hot take, I feel like it doesn't matter what it is, ADHD, autism, whatever, I feel like literally, you know how they call it the spectrum. Same with sexuality. I think that's actually probably the best example. I think it literally all is a spectrum. And we are all just somewhere between 0 and 100, basically, if we can quantize 100, obviously, but... That probably expands, the number expands as, like, we open up more and more media and people are more creative. I mean, let's be honest, if you guys didn't grow up watching, like, some anime that had, like, cool gender-bending characters, would you like it as much as you do? Probably not. <laughs> it just kind of happens. And yeah, exactly. Um, I never really, like, think too hard about it. Or try to read to uh, too much into it. It's just one of those things to think about. Uh, also, hey, Jinjuo. That is like Jinzo, but also like Jinjo from uh, Banjo-Kazooie, which is also a fantastic game. So I don't know where you got your name from, but hello. Uh, sorry if you've already left, because this is just me entering in passwords, so... Yup! Yup! It's great fun. The AI keeps bullying you. Well, he's just getting redemption for you making him pick up all those cards, so how do you, how do you feel now? How do you feel now that the tables have turned? What the hell? Okay. Carbonala Warrior has been entered. Alcyon Blue, thank you so much for the good luck! Oh my god, thank you so much for popping in and saying hello. I really do appreciate that, and I uh, hope you enjoy your stay here. Hope it's nice and comfy for you. Thanks so much, man. Or woman. You know, I say man as in like, yeah, dude. The turns have tabled. Exactly. Table's turn just remind me of Bounty Hunter and Dota 2. The table's turn! He says that when he dies as like a death line. Nice comfy emotes you've got there as well. Oh man, uh, don't, yeah, I'm gonna get started over and over and over again on emotes, but I love a good emote. I literally subbed to someone today just because I like fell in love with their emote. I'm still a child at heart, okay? I just wanted to give them love for their taste. What the hell did I just enter? Axe Raider? Yeah, uh, Zanki? No, we're doing Zanki. This card sucks! Look, we all have that child inside us, and I think it's... Like... 
I think it's important for us to keep some of that child. Like, I don't think we should be letting go of it entirely. I think we still want to have, like, an active imagination. I think we should still desire, you know, or embrace what we like and what we did like that made us who we are today. Alright, enjoy your shower, man. Go rinse off the terrible code entry. <laughs> I wish I could. I will be, uh, I will be here probably when you get back unless you're going to bed. Um, because I know it's the weekend but it's quite late for you as well. In Australia here. Especially if you're on the east. It's 10pm for me guys. I don't know what time it is for you guys. Or how long you guys are prepared to watch this, but I, uh, I probably, um... I don't know how late my stream is gonna be. Yo, Ricardo, what's up? Every time I see you, man, I just think of the Ricardo meme. And I wonder, like, if you embrace that meme. 3 p.m. for you, Danny. So what are you up to, Danny? It's the afternoon, uh, it's the weekend. I hope you're enjoying your time off. Uh, work or whatever it is you are taking a break from. Oh, Sugar's still here. What's up? Hey, Sugar. I don't want to play favorites, guys, but I love Sugar. Sorry, but it's just true. I love you all, though. Uh, SRWT8DQT. Oh, guys, guys, this password contains you guys. Ready? Ready? Are you ready for this? Look at that. Guys, this, this password is for you. Look at that. Q... T. Oh, isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Whoa! What, what just happened? There we go. Had to keep the window up. Pfft, I shat bricks there. Where are we? Dream Clown. Dream Clown! Dream Clown is an asshole. I hate that guy. Uh, he's a cool card, but you run into him. DQ. What, what's that supposed to, to be? I, I'm dumb. I'm missing out on this. 5Y... YP. Again, YP? Like, that's a guy on Twitch. Like, YP underscore or some shit? I'm not going insane, am I? Please don't remind you. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll, um... How about this? To make up for it, I'll try to never bring that up again to you. How about that, Ricardo? Does that work? You are the loved one. Penis with bowls? Jesus. Calm yourself down, Nick. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> we haven't even got to all, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh! waifus yet. Actually, we got past a bunch of them. We got past all the spellcasters. Uh, this is the password. Yeah, cool. Monster Egg. It's like that Monster Garage show, but with eggs. So how'd you uh, stumble ap across me, Elysian Blue? Do you like this game? Are you willing to uh, tell me about your origin story? You don't have to. Um, but if you'd like a chance to introduce yourself to me, I will happily accept your introduction. I almost pressed X there and, like, ruined everything. Not everything, but uh, what are we talking about here? You are the loved one. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you like the FFZ emotes? Where were we, M? New emotes are coming soon. They are coming soon. And all the previous ones uh, will be on FFZ. So if you miss any of the old ones, like the, the IIR with Ishtar, that is on FFZ. Um, because I know some people actually really did like them, but truthfully... They were all placeholders, all of them, until I was able to get something more robust and uh, sturdy and durable, like a tank, you know. Lurking big time, yeah, it's all good. No obligation to chat. Um, I don't want to purposely, like, de-lurk anyone. It's just, like... If there is time to chat, it's literally right now, like, 
when all I have to do is enter passwords. You guys help me keep my sanity. I know it's a big responsibility to help me stay sane because I am crazy. But it is much appreciated. So favorite type of chocolate? That is a very good question. So I think over time, you mean, uh, so do you mean out of like milk, dark or uh, white chocolate? Because I actually really, really, really have grown out of white chocolate. I really don't like white chocolate anymore. I don't hate it. But for example, you know Dream? I can't eat, not Dream as in the guy who cheated in Minecraft, but Dream as in the chocolate. Orange infused. Um, so, uh, hmm. I really like, yeah. What's that lint with the orange? I really do like that. Lint with the bits of orange. That is great. Traditionally, my favorite ever chocolate was Cadbury used to do this dark chocolate. Again, this isn't like a hyper bitter dark chocolate. It was just dark chocolate, like a sweetened dark chocolate. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys remember this, anyone in Australia. Like, this was, uh, pff, two decades ago when I was like a kid. Cadbury did a dark chocolate with peppermint chunks, like hard, crunchy peppermint bits. And uh, that was my favorite chocolate ever. Now, if I go to buy a block of chocolate, I do admit I will go to Cadbury, the Cadbury chocolate section, and I'll get a block that has other stuff in it, like it's mixed with other things. And my two favorites, my two favorite Cadbury blocks are the Black Forest and the um, Rocky Road ones. I really like both of them a lot. Um, but funny enough, over time I turned away from chocolate because it just melts on your clothes and ugh, I just can't be fucked with that, honestly. So over time I started buying non-sugary snacks, um, especially things that don't melt into your clothing. Because ultimately, I kind of, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm, uh, even though I'm very, very childish in some aspects, I feel like I took the responsibility to replace snacks with, like, nutritious stuff. So like, even beef jerky, like, I know it's salty, but it's a lot of protein rather than a lot of sugar and just, like, empty calories, you know? 2K, this is supposed to be C and then B. I love beef jerky as well. What's your favorite, like, flavor of beef jerky? I mean, usually I'll go for plain or chili. I don't mind spicy stuff unless it's like overly spicy to a point where you can't even taste anything, then I really have no time for it. Genuinely have no time for it. But yeah, anything nutritious instead of just empty calories, I try to buy those Genuinely try to buy those uh, over any snack so that when I'm feeling peckish and I don't really want to have a full meal, I will literally just go to one of those snacks and start eating it, and it's more beneficial than, uh, you know, eating just sugar. Which is funny because I... <laughs> I can afford to eat free calories because I'm underweight, but I may as well use that hunger and peckishness and everything to get some actual nutrients in me. Haven't had beef jerky for ages. I only really buy it when it's on special. Because it's very, very, like, expensive. Just because, obviously, it's like a massive chore and process to make all that stuff. Barbecue flavored one. I think it has like Jack's Lynx. That some people don't like that sort of beef jerky, but when it's on special, I buy like five freaking packs of it so I don't have to buy any for a while. Soft or hard? Um, I would say soft. That's in the context of jerky, by the way, for anyone who isn't reading the chat and uh, takes that completely out of context. Uh, soft jerky. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Get your minds out of the gutter. There you go. I did like a weird voice to, to try and diffuse that. 
Yeah, it is just easier to eat. And this is the same with, like, you know what chocolate I really liked? Um, I think, again, this is an Australia-only thing, but fantails. And there was just, at one point, I was just like, I don't think, like, if my teeth had brains, they would be saying, like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Do not eat this. I do not care how much you like it. There are so many other tasty things you could be eating. This is not the play. Like, you are literally just ruining your teeth. Do not eat this anymore. So, I haven't bought fantails in ages, even though I really like them. They're one of my favorite things to snack on. Ever, pretty much. I got Monster Tamer next. Give them out for free? Uh, Fantails. Dude, I would have so come up and like asked, like, can I take two? And then like, yeah. Eat them and then like take another one on the way out. <laughs> what is this password? This looks familiar. CZ81UVGR. Is this... Oh, uh, I think I know what this is. I think it's Swordsman from a foreign land. Yeah, I'm a boss. Oh, man. Handfuls. Of course they would. So what uh, job was this? Was this... Because I was going to say it sounds like a restaurant. But restaurants have the mints. Minty fresh teeth for after you eat. You know, all the oniony, garlicky, greasy food. Very, very handy to have that stuff. Uh, we're gonna do, I think, 200 passwords and have a small break. A bottle shop. Dude, why would a bottle shop give those out for free, man? You'd have the dodgiest people coming in, honestly, and just grabbing it all. Or, like, running out with a whole bowl instead of just grabbing stuff. That sounds terrible. One card left. What is it? Is it, a uh, Dark Magician? Because that would be great. It's like a local Thai cafe has a whole bowl of um, candy that you can take for free. But it's literally like the shittest candy ever. And there's literally stuff just like... You know, stuff that was obviously they bought uh, in like November for Christmas and people still haven't taken it. Like candy canes that have been there for months. You know... And it's just kind of cursed. Because, you know, the only people who are actually going to freaking eat that is like a kid that looks at it. It's like, I want that. And the parents give it to them. It's like the most disappointing candy they've ever eaten. And then they probably like never, they're probably so traumatized that they never want to go to a Thai restaurant again because the candy was just like so below their expectations. What the fuck was that? Karma for talking shit about Thai food places that give out old candy. Did I... I think maybe I actually know the mistake that I made. Ah, oh, yeah, I always do that. I just start entering in the previous password halfway through entering in the new one that I'm supposed to be entering in. It's a skip a turn card. Can you actually win on that? I thought that was illegal. To win off of, like, a card that was, like, draw four or whatever, right? I thought that was unironically illegal. Well, not as in you get arrested, but you know what I mean. Like, it's not a legal move to make in the game. You know what I mean. I'm sure the FBI aren't going to break into your house because you last played a, a, a skip a turn card. I'm pretty sure. I hope so. Q, holy crap. Where the hell am I? You can win if that's the only card you have. Good. Good. Because you just have to save those cards for last, right? Unless someone's actually going to beat you in that turn. Is that how it works? But Empress Judge. Oh, finally. Like, a, a, a Empress Judge is a sight for sore eyes when you're doing this.
V. Eight. X. Oh, and that's an even better one. Uh, Warrior of Tradition. By the way, guys, Warrior of Tradition is actually the deck leader that I had in my uh, first YouTube video, actually. Just coincidentally, I was just like playing the Japanese version of the game to do that, and I was like, you know what? I like this card. For I never thought about it before, but I actually just I leveled it up. I just did, and I committed to it. So that card actually has some significance on my channel. Oh, I saved the power-up cards. It's not like this game at all, is it? Where you chew through those as soon as possible. Best judge? Well, the only competition she has is Judge Man, Alyssa. Also, you have SR in your name. Do you speedrun, Alyssa? What games do you speedrun? Or are you like a speedrun dilettante, like I was, where... You wanted to get in speedrunning, so you put it in the name of your account, and then you just didn't speedrun anything. Because I did that at some point. Well, actually, no. I didn't actually put SR at the end of my name. I But, like, I always wanted to be a speedrunner. And then I just didn't speedrun anything until I speedran this game. And I only speedran this game because I knew I had, like, a, no a lot of knowledge to work with. Having played it that much. That's how I became assigned to this fate. Oh, it's Princess of Sarugi, guys. Princess of Sarugi. That's another emote that's coming up. Um, very, probably very soon, by the way. Again, it depends on, um, like, I will be getting the final render of that very soon, like, within the next day, probably. It's just a matter of, um, if Twitch approves it instantaneously, or it takes some time to do that. Ah, oh, song request. Okay, so was the running joke with someone who was a speedrunner? Because, yeah, heaps of people have SR at the end of their name, and it's... It's quite funny. Love the new emote stuff. I'm glad. Thank you so much for validating my purchases, Zeno Knight. I'm really, like, again... I... I, I don't know why I'm so goddamn apologelli... Uh, apologelli? What the hell? That, that, that sounds weird. Jelly from Apollo Asteroid Field. Uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, the emote stuff is literally one of the... I'm, uh, you can, guys can laugh. <laughs> you can laugh at me as much as you want, but it's honestly one of the things that I'm really looking forward to most days is that. Like, getting an email back about the emotes and being able to upload them and having you guys use them. Really, it is bringing me, unironically, a lot of joy and happiness, and it's kind of just like a vessel for... Like, I'm sure... I, I'm not actually OCD, but I'm sure we all want control over certain things, and it's kind of cathartic to really kind of micromanage something that is not frustrating, if that makes sense. Like, focus a lot of attention to something that you actually do have a lot of control over, and ultimately, the final result of it's going to be very, very good. Um, and, um, again, it does cost money, but, like, I have spent money on so much stupid shit in the past that this is honestly one of the better purchases, period, like, that I could have possibly made or have made in a while, because it's kind of an investment. Like, if you get return subscribers based on a set of emotes, you know, it's quite a big deal. It will pay itself off. Um, and, you know, committing to the streaming stuff. I don't think it'll ever be my full-time thing. It probably will be my side gig, but I would love to kind of punch above my weight. And really, like, I think part of it is communicating to you guys that I'm taking it very seriously. Even though, like, again, I didn't stream for five days, but it was literally because I didn't want to give a shit stream just out of obligation to stream. I literally had shit that had to be attended to, and that's... Like, the better I can be in real life, the better my streams are going to be. So between, like, whatever family stuff, or what's going on around the house, and... Sorting out the new job and all that. Hanging out with my friend again once a week for that, uh, social buzz. It's all pieces of the puzzle. It's all... It's all part of the Millennium Puzzle, basically. I can't bring out the Pharaoh Atem without all these things. What am I doing here? Q Padur, what is this called? 
And again, that's also why your guys' feedback, uh, especially subscribers, is so important. Because it, 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 a lot of it, uh, again, it's not just about me. It's about you guys are the ones who are going to be using the emotes. So I would love for you guys to all be happy with it. If you're subscribed and you're not in the Discord, you can join it. And then you will have access to the channel where you can provide feedback for my emotes if you guys want to. Um, if anyone also just wants a hangout place, you can type exclamation mark Discord. And it'll give you the invite link to my Discord. And that also means, by the way, if you are subscribed and in the Discord, you can use my emotes when you chat with people or w like anywhere as if you like without Nitro. And that's one of my favorite features about Discord um, with like the Twitch integration. Because if you ever sub to someone who has really cool emotes, you can just casually use them when you're chatting to someone. It's awesome. One who hunts souls. Ogre the Black Shadow. Rude Kaiser. Like, I literally join a streamer's Discord for no reason other than to use their emotes sometimes, if I really like their emotes that much. I'm already in so many goddamn Discords that I can't possibly be checking them all the time. Like, I just do not have time for it. But for that integration, it's pretty cool. Very, very cool. So I'm kind of, like, wondering why I'm so warm. I might change my sweater on my break. I'm going to break this up and do false quarters, by the way. What I mean is I'm going to do every 200 purposely so that the last 200 is only 134. Have to stretch out my hands for a bit, in a second. I'm not even pressing the buttons intensely hard or anything, but because you have to like tap and hold and tap and hold and tap and hold, moving your hand around the D-pad, it's ridiculous. We're on the beasts now. I do want to still get to uh, 200 before I... I think what I'll do is save, just in case something goes wrong, every 200. What did I just enter? The dark rabbit password. Okay, little chimera is the next one. Little Chimera. That's exactly how you pronounce Little Chimera, right? Little Chimera. I wonder... Probably there were people who said that as a kid. I'm like, ugh. I wanted to get... I wanted to get a King Tiger Wong here and I got a Little Chimera. I hate this deck. I hate this game. Oh, Wicked Worm Beast. Old shitty leveling up strat card. Useless. That card isn't even that terrible, it's just... If you guys don't know, by the way, uh, any card that says it shuffles itself into the deck in this game, literally shuffles it all the way to the bottom of the deck, and you can unironically break your deck and not be able to draw your last cards. I don't actually know exactly how it works, but it happens way more often than it should. Like, it's unreasonable. Torak. Everyone loves that card, right? Again, Torak just reminds me of dealing like 2k life point damage to Yugi. And just kind of knowing that I had that duel in the bag when I was like literally losing my baby tooth at the age of like 8 or something. I gave no fucks about losing my baby tooth. Because I was just smashing Yugi the first try. Like, I don't know why I thought, like because I was a kid, I kind of assumed he would be harder. But it just wasn't. Like, he's, it's supposed to be Hell Climactic, he's got his own battle theme and everything, and you literally just attack, like, an 800 attack monster or some bullshit like that. I mean, that card was 16, uh, sorry, 1200, but still. You know. Shout out to 
Freaking Torak, man. What a joke. Oh, well, speaking of Yugi, that was uh, Silverfang. You guys remember he summons that uh, in the duel against Pegasus through the freaking VHS tape. Devam. Instead of Devon, it's Devam. And this this password is some Hungarian word. If you if you look at it closely. Lemevkin was actually no. That's like this password starts off being a, a Hungarian word, and then it turns into a Polish word. Lemevnikus. Great. All right, one more password. Then we're taking a short break. I'm not going to stop the timer or anything. I don't really care about the timer, honestly, that much. Why did I press X there when I hadn't even entered the last half of the password? That's how you know it's time for a break. That really is how you know it's time for a break. Oh my god. Guys, 200 passwords. Entered. Oh, wait a minute. Save. Abbreviate, save again. Rough stream? Oh, we've barely started. <laughs> we've only entered in, uh, like a third to a quarter of the passwords. Also, I meant to do this all in custom duel. How are you going, Hydro? I'm gonna take a bit of a break. So... I, um... Stretch my hands out a bit. Actually, you know what? While we're, uh, while we're waiting on break, we'll play this different music. I do need to stretch my hands out a little bit. And then I'm gonna get, um, my iced coffee out of the fridge, because I actually forgot that I had it in there still. Any takes on modern gaming these days? Um, games are too expensive. And that's not just microtransactions, that's full price games. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just me getting older and becoming a boomer. And I don't really care about the time. This really isn't a competition. This isn't an official speedrun, by the way. It's not. There are no rules. Like, you could do whatever the frick you want. Hey, guess what? Hi, John7. What am I guessing? What am I guessing? I think I actually am going to change my sweater. I don't know why this is so warm. Like, if I turn on the Louvre, the fan... Oh, it's Prime Gaming time! Thank you so much, John7. Thank you so much. Here, have a heart. Thank you. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. John, join the chat. What's your hot take on a new game? I'm going to change my sweater. I'm actually going to go um, to the bathroom quickly and then grab my drink and I'll be back. I'll be back. Thanks again, man, for the Prime Sub. They want to go Super Saiyan? Do they? Do all games want to go Super Saiyan? What do you mean?
I'm back. With, of course, my favorite beverage of all time. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, oh, yeah. There, yeah. there we go. Nice. Look, I do think we are making better games nowadays. I think the problem with gaming nowadays is the economy behind gaming. Um, I think that people are really enabling microtransactions. I know we all complain about them, but the truth is they do microtransactions because they actually make money from that. So, yeah. Um, Free-to-play models with microtransactions are fine. Bullshit is not fine, but apparently people can get away with it, so they keep doing that. I'm not going to lie, though. If you compare a game like Elden Ring to Dark Souls, it makes Dark Souls, which is one of the greatest games of all time, look like a sad joke. Games, are, and the thing is, Elden Ring has so many things it could improve on. Um, they make you super mad? Why is that? Why don't you like new games? New games is like, I don't really want to believe that older games are uh, better, because really a lot of them aren't, and very few games of the past I think actually hold up. Like, I don't, I'm not really like a rose-tinted glasses kind of guy. I am very nostalgic for a lot of things, but you have to acknowledge that, like, there are great games that have been released since the time that we actually really were a kid and liked games to a point where we gave most games like a free pass. Anyways, uh, I am delaying the inevitable, so let's get back into this garbo part of the run. What even was the last card that I entered? Sleeping Lion. Now we do Lavas. Guys, what's your favorite pre-2008 game and then your favorite post-2008 game? Very important questions here. I, I, and I know it's a hard question, it's very on the spot, but I think some people do have distinct favorites. And also, favorite isn't equal to what you think is actually the best game. You might have a personal favorite, for example. This game, obviously, is one of my favorite games ever. Do I think it's very good? No. This game is honestly like a 6 out of 10. Like, I would say this is an above-average game, all things considered. I think it has a lot of problems. You were like two then? So, did you play this game at two years old? Are you here for the game? Did you actually end up playing uh, Doors of the Roses, John? Is this what you came for? Also, Emma, I do want a sip emo, but I am actually starting to run out of slots. I need, uh, I probably already said this to you already. I'm really excited to get the follower emote slots, but I think maybe... Maybe you're in the, even though it says up to five, I wonder, I, th I don't know if affiliates are actually allowed up to five. Maybe it caps at 3, or I don't know. I think it is 5, honestly. I do like to believe it's 5. Forbidden Memories. That's the thing, like... Forbidden Memories, and a lot of people are nostalgic for the aesthetic of PS1 games, but a lot of them, like... Is it Silent Hill that has, like, the tank controls? And, like, if you look at the, uh... Oh, people did, like, PS1 D-makes, and it looks terrible. Like, it actually... I'm so glad that these games, like Bloodborne or whatever, came out way later than that. Yeah, it's so much better. Silent Hill 2. Is Silent Hill your favorite series? Again, guys, uh, obligatory. Never played Silent Hill or Resident Evil or uh, Devil May Cry. They're just... I know they're not entirely related, but they're all like PlayStation 2. Well, they were exclusive to PlayStation 2. Uh, around, like, PS2 time, right? Like, 3D anime kind of violent games. It's up there for you, but no. What would you say your favorite series is, then, in that regard? 
Quake and Unreal Tournament 2. Which Quake? Which Quake's your favorite? I loved uh, Quake 3. I really liked Quake 3. I even had, what is it, Quake 3 Revolution on the PS2, and I did play it a lot. And to the point, I have a really bizarre memory. I, like, just remember the smell of this one particular Rexona spray deodorant that I used when playing that game when I was, like, I don't know, 11 or 12 or something? And I also remember, um... In a time before, you know, Call of Duty and, uh... Just first-person shooters in general, like Halo, being so popular. Had a kid from, like, my junior football come over. And, uh... We're playing Quake, and after, like, I don't know, 20 seconds, he's like, How do you change view? And I was just like, man... It's just funny, because, like... People just weren't used to first-person shooters at all. Like, they unironically were like... They didn't want to play a game that was in first-person. And then fucking suddenly, out of nowhere, between Halo and Call of Duty and all this shit, every fucking person was playing a first-person shooter without even realizing what the genre was called, or that it even had a name. That's right, I entered the same password twice. That'll happen plenty of times. Plenty of time. Yeah, but what I mean is, um, Quake 3 wasn't called Revolution. It was Quake 3 Arena. And the thing is, as a kid, I was so used to doing things like playing with bots online in, uh, like, Battlefield 2 or whatever. Especially, like, if I had an account and no access to the internet, or internet was just not connected to the computer. I was so used to playing against bots that a game like Quake 3 never phased me. Because it has no real storyline. And also, oh my god... Goldeneye and uh, Perfect Dark, man, I would, I, especially Perfect Dark, I would play against the bots all the time, like, Perfect Dark, I would literally handpick two different sides, I would pick the color, I was so, I had such a huge imagination as a kid, like, I would spend hours just playing against bots in, um, Perfect Dark. Because for whatever reason, oh my god, I don't know how much you guys know about Perfect Dark, but I had, uh, we had Perfect Dark, but we never had the expansion pack. And I had no idea that the entire frickin' campaign, campaign, companion, the entire campaign of that game is locked behind the expansion pack, and I just never knew that whole part of the game existed. I unironically thought, I unironically thought, that... The campaign was, like, the single-player missions. Like, I, I literally thought that was all the campaign was, and I was happy to play it. Your favorite might be the Halo trilogy? I actually never- I never played Halo, and it sounds weird, but... I just never actually really sat down and played Halo. We never had any of the Xbox consoles except for... Funny enough, the original Xbox. Which was my brother's, and I wasn't really allowed to play it, he just wouldn't let me. We, whenever we were allowed to play, um, we, like, me and my sister would play Super Monkey Ball. And, uh, we never really, I mean, the thing is, we, it's not that we weren't allowed to play it, but it was basically, it was in his room all the time. So unless he was outside of the house, we couldn't play the Xbox, basically. You like Quake 2 the most. So Quake 2, um, I actually never played Quake 2. I had the shareware version of, uh, the original Quake as a kid. Same with, like, a bunch of other games, like Doom. They were literally some of the the first games I ever played. Like, I would be, I would have been playing them before I even realized exactly what I was playing. I think one of those around that time, again, was Pursuit of Greed. Pursuit of Greed, I don't- I remember liking that game a lot, but I think it was just because I had a chain gun. All I cared when I was that young was picking up the coolest guns and shooting things, like aliens and whatever. And obviously, big shout out to Duke Nukem. Um, Duke Nukem 3D, we actually- that's one of the few games that we had the full release of. And also... 
we had uh, Duke Nukem 64, which is actually, all things considered, not a bad port of the game, honestly. It's not atrocious. So I played that a lot. Uh, in my childhood, a lot of Duke Nukem 3D. So gory for the time, they absolutely were. Like, gibbing or jibbing, I don't know exactly. It's jibbing, yeah, because giblets. That makes sense. Jibbing. Yum. Alright, that's gross. I don't actually think it's yum. Yo, Wild Shadow, what's up? Dude, we are so alike then. Look at us. We're, we're, uh, we've gone from Duke Nukem 3D to Duels of the Roses. We're like best friends for life now, man. What's up, man? Good to see ya. Always good to see a new face in the chat. Really appreciate you coming in and just giving a little, little old typo and hitting enter. Do appreciate the chat participation a lot, man. I don't want to lose my sanity doing this either. So anything you guys have to say is it's a perfect time, honestly. Gonna head to bed. All right, thank you so much for popping in, sugar. Thanks for the good luck. Um, I plan on doing the non-annoying part tomorrow. I plan on basically entering in all the passwords today. Maybe constructing a deck for the rest of the playthrough or something like that. Or maybe ranking cards up. And then going to continue tomorrow, hopefully finish this and get this out of the way. Because then I've got to focus on work stuff next week. And then probably the streams next week will just be more like no password runs. So have a good night, man. Have a good sleep. Take care of yourself. Thanks so much again for popping in. Lots of love. I'll see you later, man. Thanks again. Because of me, I actually started... Oh, nice! Are you playing, uh... What starter deck did you pick, man? What are your goals for this playthrough? Are you... Have you not played the game in a while and you're just looking to start it up and just have a bit of fun? Because that's pretty cool. Yeah, catch you tomorrow, man. It'll be good to see you there. It'll be awesome to see you there. As always, of course, you know that. It's awesome to see any of you guys. I say that as I like stare blankly at my screen, completely emotionless. I hope it still means something. Where actually am I? Here I am. Uncle Bo, here I am. Thank you, ma'am. I don't actually know the line for that. Uncle Mo's family feedback. Can you get the fries off my head? They're extremely hot. Also, uh, if you have access to, like, say you're emulating the American version, you should totally consider Redux. You should totally consider Redux mod. Um, if you're not too experienced with the game, probably it's, like, way too difficult. But if you are, like, you're very comfortable with beating the game and you want, like, a new experience, like, you want to play Yu-Gi-Oh! for the- f you want to play Duels of the Rose for the first time again, this is probably the closest thing to that. Like, all the duels are new, all- even, like, the three in a row and the way, like, Reincarnation's cards are new as well. Oh, We're entering in a based password, uh, where is it? Yeah, here it is. King Tiger Wang Hu. Start with Axe Sword Adventures Grinder Mark for Water Deck. Well, you can start with the Water Deck. There's the Maiden of the Aqua Deck, man. I don't know if you're playing the NTSC version or the PAL version. I don't actually remember all the names to enter to get certain, like, starter deck stuff. But there is a Maiden of the Aqua Deck, and it's... I think it's honestly worth using that. If you want a water deck, start with that. And then go to Marco. And then you can really make that deck really, really, really powerful. Definitely powerful enough to beat the whole game. By taking all the, like, four-star low attack Aquas, taking them out and just putting, like, literally any of Marco's good cards. And man, that deck goes off, like, completely. It's actually insane how powerful that deck is. Especially because the AI just do not really know how to play around, uh, like, terrain-changing cards. Like, they just don't. What? 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 Alright, what did I try to enter? Niwatori. Alright, we're doing this password. I'm stupid. 
Again, anytime I mess up a password, it's because I start entering in a different password halfway through the other one that I'm trying to enter. That happens all the time. Plus that Wolf Axe Water starter deck is probably like the second worst starter deck in the game, honestly. Wouldn't recommend starting with that one. Even like, if you had a... Uh, what's the... If one of your options was the Illusory Gentleman one, that actually has a handful of Aquas in it. It's not really good, but... But yeah, um, I don't know if you're in a position to like reset and take your time, but I would try entering in different names, trying to get the Maid of the Aqua one. Because you get some very, very, very good cards for an Aqua deck, obviously. And it's also very, like, editable. There is just a lot of cards in, um... Like, a third of that deck you can just remove and replace with, like, any decent water card, and it will be an improvement of the deck. And I kind of like that. I kind of like when there's junk in the deck, because it feels just really cathartic to take out. Like, really nice to just be like, oh, thank god, my deck's getting better. A again, any of the four-star cards, like Night Lizard or whatever, in that deck. God. Holy crap, this password coming up, look at this. NF2, and look at this, take 9, is the game telling you something, it's telling me to take a 9 minute break, look at this, the password literally contains take 9, holy crap, that's like subliminal messaging, that's a password for faith bird, cause you gotta have faith, oh you've gotta have faith, faith the faith the faith, down, down, down. you know that song, everyone knows that song. Whether you like it or not, you like that song. Well, not like it, you just know of it. Hey, it's Drollbird. What a hilarious card. Eventually, uh, we got Droll and Lockbird, and that sort of... It's still seeing competitive play to some degree. I need to kind of watch my posture doing this. Grim to like throw your back out unironically by having it tilted for like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Ugh. I don't know. I don't want my back to go before my thumb does. My thumb's very valuable. I'm glad it's my left thumb and not my right thumb that's being butchered by the password entry. Okay, three, six, whoa, no, 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 four, three, yeah, 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 why did we just enter that, did I just enter that, wing eagle, yeah, I did, uh, okay, well, we're not entering that password again, we're doing skull red bird, six K, Q, G-T-U-R. Great, great, great. Four seven, uh, S1, S-K-G-T. This sounds like a gun. What the hell? Where? Why am I struggling to find T? Uh, UTC. That's a time zone, right? UTC five. That's what the password says. APG five. Great. What's the first starter deck that you guys picked when playing this game? And what were your favorite cards from it? What carried you through the game? Hey, there's Skullbird. Skullbird. Oh, shit.
<laughs> LV6Z. It's like a level 6. And then W1GZ, it says wigs. That's funny as hell. It's like if it was written on a, a, on a license plate, you know. Wigs would already be taken, so you have to put in one instead. You're getting wrecked by the AI again. How do you do this to yourself? Why, if it's that bad, why don't you set the difficulty to be lower? I always scroll past T. Why do I do that? Why do I do that? By the way, who wants to... Uh, who wants to help me feed me my iced coffee? Because I have to take my hand off of my controller to do that. Actually, I could use my right hand. I totally could. Here. Strats. Mmm. Oh, why didn't I think of that earlier? I am in flavor country. Oh, this is another password that uh, I've entered before. Actually, the vampire one starter. Dude, I really envy uh, people who started with that deck because it probably was one of the few decks that would have made the game feel beatable without passwords. Birdface, that's why. I should have guessed that considering I'm on uh, Wing Beast. Because I literally, I started with the Cruel deck, and that is the worst deck in the game. So, of course, I feel like I needed to cheat. Pixelator, what's up? Hey, man. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to Torture. Well, you're not getting tortured. I am. Entering in those passwords. I'm literally, uh, like, one-third of the way in currently. Almost two hours in. Ooh, we're at the Fiends now. This is going to take ages. All right, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. How are you doing, Pixelated? Thanks so much for popping in. Um, on a desperate stream like this. Yo, Mike. Drop the mic. Mic drop moment. Fairy deck over and over again. It's a good deck, actually. That one's good as well. It's well-rounded enough. Has a bunch of support cards. It's also, like, I would say any of the decks with support cards and, like, a dupable deck leader are good. Just rage quit off a of master door? What made you rage quit? Let me guess. You were playing against, uh, Flawanderies. That's my guess. Fiends your favorite creatures? Dude, same! That is literally why I picked the Cruel starter deck over the other ones. Just in my head, I don't- I hadn't played any games like this. It was like, I thought that was my ticket to getting a summon skull for whatever reason, so I just picked them. Exactly that. I don't blame you, man. I don't, I actually, uh, I'm pretty sure I've uninstalled Master Duel at this point. I hadn't played it for months, so... I'm just like, I actually feel stupid for playing this game. I actually feel so stupid for saying, I'm gonna play Master Duel, enter in, and then I start to see Flu set up their board, and I actually just... I'm like, why am I playing this game? No other deck was like that. I actually enjoyed playing against literally every other deck but Fluander Rees. Oh, cards. Yo, Kimmy. Kimini, Kimini Jillikas, please, please send help. I'm only like a third of the way through entering in the passwords. And then, um, I don't know what I'm going to do after that, but tomorrow will be the second part of the stream, and that's probably when I'll be doing all the cool, more like fun, you know, dynamic stuff that isn't me just like torturing myself for your entertainment. How are you, Kimini? Hope you're having a good time. And I hope your weekend is going good so far. Yeah, I would literally rather play against Sword Soul like a hundred times and play against Flu like five times, honestly. Alright, maybe that's a bit hyperbolic, but... I know Sword Soul are painful, but at least it feels like they have to... Kind of... I don't know, like when they set up a board, it feels like they actually... 
there's interaction there. Like, there is actually still interaction. It's not floodgate -y. And they're kind of the... the floodgates? Are like... The floodgates that they have are kind of interactive. It's like... I think it's Shishao, it's like, if you uh, banish a card from the graveyard, then they get to banish a card from your graveyard, or something like that. And it's like, that actually is a lot cooler than just, like, your opponent can't play. You know, I'd rather... I'd definitely rather play against something like that. Sub are very cute. Didn't you... were you gifted a sub? Flute players are just sad, honestly. Like, you know that that shit is degenerate in a uh, single dual format, in best of one format. If you go to flu like, around tournaments and you're playing against, like, the higher brand decks, like, good for you. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna talk shit about those. But if you're playing flu and Master Duel, you are actually just like, I hate you. Period. <laughs> Don't be a Master Duel flu player. It's just literally the worst things about Yu-Gi-Oh! in one deck. It, it unironically is the things I hate about Yu-Gi-Oh! in one deck. And it just has shit like they finally ban the freaking barrier statue. Here's an idea, ban all of those cards, because it's only a matter of time before one deck enables them. It's just like, flu... suddenly, all these really painful cards. All like the wind cards, beast warrior cards that are just really shitty and useless are suddenly now broken. And it's just like, this is not how this deck was is supposed to be. Use Ancient Gears, good. I mean, they're not good, they're actually quite terrible, but I respect you for playing something that you think is cool. I respect that. Flute is not cool, so that doesn't apply for Flute. Limit them all to one. I think just get rid of bullshit floodgates. I really think that... Look, I want to play Devil's Advocate and say that Floodgates are a necessary part of the game, but they're the least fun part of the game, period. I hate the fact that the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! aren't cards that say you can do something. They're cards that say your opponent can't do something. It's not fun. It, it is not fun to watch your opponent set up a board and then have no possible play. It is the least fun thing possible. Ah, uh, okay, sorry, my bad. I gotta admit, I don't really... Uh, I'm not too big into Ancient Gears or any of that stuff. I'm not really... I never really liked GX. I just kind of didn't. You're to plat with Ancient Gear, nice. What's your... what's the strategy? What's the secret weapon? Are you playing Ancient Gears into, like, Lynx or something? Is there, like, any secret weapons? Because basically, when I was playing Dragon Maid, I was just basically playing like a a less good Dragon Link. And you know, a lot of the time, like in gold or whatever, basically you just do the fucking Borrow Load Wombo Combo. Borrow Load? I think it was, no, it was Borrow Sword, I think. You just do, you know, the, the OTK. Once you have like five dragons out in the field, like it's over. But yeah, I never really, uh... Honestly... Yu-Gi-Oh! GX was when I stopped caring about Yu-Gi-Oh! Ancient Gear Ballista. So tell me about that card. Trust me, I've got time. I have time to learn about this card, so now is a very good time to... Tell me about your Ancient Gear Ballista. Bexy. M25. What a password. Is the M25 Bexy? Very sexy. Oh my god, I'm over scrolling again. J3, give me power. J3, oh, nice. It's tainted wisdom. Weirdest card. Terrible effect. And again, I did not play Dragon Maid for any reason other than it was one of the starter deck, like, structure decks thing you could buy three of and go from there. 
And it did have a bunch of good cards in it. And, um, I like how they played. Honestly, I thought it was a good mix between what I knew about the game and what modern Yu-Gi-Oh! was like. Um, I really enjoyed playing that deck. But I just, yeah, I, it's, it's not a very good deck. I really enjoyed having equal matchups with other people. Any deck that was obviously way better than mine was just miserable to play against. Um, Sword Soul, I say fair enough because... Just the interactions and shit. Like, not only are Sword Soul head and shoulders above Dragon Maids, but Sword Soul are actually very good against Dragon Maids and, like, Dragon Link. There's, like, not a lot you can do if they've set up their board already with, like, Chi Xiao and shit. Like, you really just can't do anything. You can't banish anything from the grave. Activating graveyard effects is also not the play against the uh, Sword Soul, as far as I can remember. Um, so, like, playing against Sword Soul sucked because it was just a shitty matchup, honestly. Um, and that's fair enough, I say. Like, I'm not really going to complain about that. It's some decks are good against others. Not just that, but they're also just better than my deck, so I really had no chance against Sword Soul. Flu are just bullshit and unfun. Complete bullshit. I literally was main decking cards like Gadala, the Mystery Dust Kaiju, just so that I could tribute um, the Wind Barrier Statue and then try to play from there. So if I didn't top deck that card, I could not win against that deck. And hey, Unreal Gecko, what's up? Hi. What are we doing here? H. Balo, what's up? Balo della Vita. How are you? That's not a first time chat, but I actually, uh, I can't remember seeing you in the chat before. So, hey man, how's it going? Are there passwords for every card? 734 passwords. 734. Claw Reacher. Terror the Terrible. That's the next one. So try and help me keep my sanity, guys, as I go through the hard part of this. You got tired of it. I thought so. I was thinking that. Because I recognize the badge and also the name of the color. But that means we don't have our resident e-girl anymore. So that sucks. We're missing that. Unless someone else wants to step up to the plate. Terror the Terrible. I never thought too much about how goofy it looks. But it, it is kind of funny. Cards like Terror the Terrible and like the Three-Headed Guido, um, they're like nostalgic for me because again, I started with the Cruel Starter deck, so they were just like... You know when you watch the anime and it's like a bunch of crap in people's hands? They were like my fodder in my deck that I was just sifting through until I saw my Air Eater or my Ushi Oni. So I don't know what to call you now. I'm going to call you Vita. Like, PS Vita. The Midnight Fiend. It's like Midnight in a Perfect World by DJ Shadow. The Midnight Fiend. You got, I don't know if anyone actually knows. DJ Shadow much. Ricky would if he was here. But he's not. He's at ESA. Magin Gun. Ha. Huh. More like Mad Shit Gun. That card sucks. I right, now we got... Now we got Dark Titan of Terror. That's how I said it as a kid. Actually, no, I didn't. I'm lying. Jeez, I, yeah, uh... A Lynx actually are fine. Uh, pendulums, I think, are garbage. I think what telegraphs that they got it wrong with Pendulums is the fact that they changed how they worked entirely. Um, the thing about Lynx is they made it, like, they introduced them, forcing people to play them. So that people would actually play them and get to know about them before they were like, okay, you can just play whatever now. I don't mind Lynx at all. I really don't. I just think it kind of starts to make decks a bit lazy, but... To be fair, it does unify a lot of different strategies. Like, if you're... Most strategies now rely upon, like, special summoning a bunch of different monsters. So I say, you know what? Every deck having a Link monster is probably a good thing at this point. Ca 
handle of fate. Guys, it's the mini perfectly ultimate great moth. The mini version, the fiend version. The friend version! Oh, get it, get it, get it. But yeah, links, uh, they're not a confusing summoning. I, I don't, like, I understand if someone doesn't like all these new summoning mechanics, but really, I do think the game now is way better than it used to be. I don't think people should really look back at Rose Tinted Glasses and claim that Yu Gi Oh! used to be great when it was literally just because they were just playing with a toy in the playground, you know what I mean? Like, of course it was great. That was what you played when you weren't doing schoolwork. Of course everyone remembers that Yu-Gi-Oh fondly, but that's because you're all making up the rules, using your imagination and shit. But real Yu-Gi-Oh back then was so bad compared to what it is now. And I'm not saying Yu-Gi-Oh is great now, I actually think it's like not fun. But compared to what it used to be, holy crap. Old Yu-Gi-Oh is not nearly as good as modern Yu-Gi-Oh is. Oh, so that password had Kex in it, top Kex. Great fun. We're all having fun, aren't we? Right? Oh my god. We're getting closer and closer. Wait. This is supposed to be a Y. Okay. Bias towards old Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, you have a right to be, but... I think links were actually ultimately a good thing for the game. Like, I would say Link format is better than Pendulum format. Pendulum format, like, I think they were just trying to figure out where they wanted the game to go. They still kind of constantly are trying to figure out what they want a game to be. It's kind of funny, actually. I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, whoever the fuck's in charge of Yu-Gi-Oh! has no idea what they actually want to do with the game. It feels like... Most of their ban lists are just like... For everything they get wrong, they get something right, and vice versa, like... It takes them way too long to ban some cards sometimes. To a point where I really think that like their desire to gain money is in the way of... It's the same as like how long it took them to ban Firewall Dragon. And then you know what the worst thing they do is? They errata these cards that they ban and then bring them back in a in a after they've been nerfed completely. And it's the most sad thing ever. Because it's a card game and they can literally just make a new freaking card. I genuinely don't understand. I'm really apologizing if you guys can actually hear, like, my drink in my mouth, like, when I'm sipping, because that probably sounds really gross. Oh no, they won't remove Pendulum Summoning. It's just that Pendulums are basically useless unless there's a really good Pendulum engine, and then suddenly they're, like, freaking broken. They're, like, unreasonably strong. Yeah, funny you say that, Gecko, because I also think that that's a very, very cool part of the game. One of my favorite things is an old, shitty, random card suddenly becoming very, very, very good. Um, but it's also, in my opinion, one of the worst things about the game. Is that there are all these really overpowered cards. What the hell was that? There are these really overpowered cards that are just in the game for way longer than they need to be. And then they're not addressed or banned or gotten rid of until Konami are finally like, oh, okay, we need to get rid of it. A card like, it's not ultra old, but a card like uh, Kaiser Colosseum. It's like, I think they banned or limited this recently, and I'm just like, this card's been degenerate for like its entire freaking lifetime, and you're only just banning it now, like, because I guess enough people complained or like pros were using it, and they only decided now that it was too broken. And yeah, it is cool when they give cards all support. Like, I like how they gave Harpy 
like a bunch of support. I know they're still not a very good deck, but it is cool because I don't know. I like harpies. I like seeing the artwork of the harpy cards. I think that's really cool. I love seeing all the retrains and designs of that. I'm a suck of a harpy lady. She's cool. Hope she doesn't claw my goddamn face off. Exactly, Gecko. Like, I do really find those interactions very entertaining and very cool, but at the same time, it is actually kind of, like, sad. Sometimes, because it's just like, wow, these guys really just make cards and do not account for any of the old cards. Like, it's way out of hand now. Like, they designed these new cards, really not taking into account some, like, old cards that are just now completely broken. And then, like, after a lifetime of a card, an old card, not getting any play, it's now suddenly literally overpowered and they have to ban it. So once it sees the light of the day, it gets, like, banished to the fucking Shadow Realm. They walk into a dark room and throw a dot up. Exactly. Exactly. Sorry, it took me a while to read that. But, yeah, it's just, like... Man, I don't know who makes the decisions or, like, uh, what their meetings are like, you know? Where they just make the weirdest decisions, honestly. I think, like, they hit... Flu in the OCG and then didn't touch it in Master Duel and then they hit it in the TCG. And it's just like, how about don't even touch them apart from fucking Master Duel? And how about a Master Duel you make a best of three format so this one deck, this one rogue strategy deck isn't like blatantly overpowered compared to literally everything else. Surprised they dropped making games? I think they really, like, as sad as it is to say, they just know that the way gaming is now, you basically just have gacha games, like free-to-play games that have microtransactions in them, and that's how they earn their money. Like, I don't honestly understand how they get a lot of money through Master Duel. Because you can literally play that game without throwing any money into it. You literally can build a whole freaking like, competitive deck just by playing all the single player stuff and actually knowing what to do with the gems, like, unironically. And people actually throw money into it because they want cool, flashy, new cards. Like, they really, really like that stuff. Bistro Butcher's great! It's actually... Bistro Butcher's a very good card in this game. Not, like, overpowered, but if you're playing, like, a Fiend deck, it's honestly one of the better cards you can put in your deck. Um, as far as, like, vanilla monsters go. The best vanilla monsters for Fiends are, again, um, the lowest SP cards that fuse into Summon Skull. Which are, um, yeah, Bistro Butcher... And uh, La Jin, the 1800 attack, they got the same stats, but then also, after them, like, they're both basically equal first, and then after them you've got, um, Man-Eating Treasure Chest. And these are the three cards in the game that are no more than four star that fuse with Job Change Mirror to make Summon Skull. But yeah, they've stopped making games... Because they just want to make the goddamn... They're free-to-play, like, mobile games and everything. And they obviously don't seem too interested in making any big, like, ambitious different games. If anything, the only games they're interested in making that aren't pure Yu-Gi-Oh! are just, like, different formats of Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, like, Duel Links or whatever. Like a Yu-Gi-Oh! Lite or a Yu-Gi-Oh! Turbo sort of game. Like, literally, they have Speed Duel, you know, and they're trying to make that work. And again, I hate to say it, but we're never going to really get another game like this, the way Konami is. Yeah, the pachinko machines, exactly. Shadow Girl Wolf Shadow MVP. It's not a bad card, honestly. That card really does work. 
uh, in quite a lot of duels. Nah, that's actually literally how you spell Pachinko. That is actually exactly how you spell that, uh, Romanized from Japanese to English. Give more capture monsters. Um, funny you say that because for future, uh, sub goals, I have limited things that I would actually be doing or prioritizing. One of them would be a, a casual playthrough of, um, Capture Monster Coliseum because I'd never actually played that game before. I've tried it once and I was just like, eh. I was just doing other shit. And like, what about, maybe, I guess there's a handheld version of this, but like Dungeon Dice Monsters, that never really got off the ground. And it's sad because Kazuki Takahashi was a massive, massive tabletop game fan. You know, if it wasn't for him playing tabletops, we would never have any of Yu-Gi-Oh! We just wouldn't, period. And so the fact that he never really got to fully get off the ground with that sort of stuff... It would have been nice if, you know, more of his wishes and his, like, desires and his origin of what he liked was more popular and kind of got off the ground. You have world record in that game. God damn it! I didn't know I was talking to a freaking pro jank PS2 game speedrunner. So, you're gonna... When I do... Let's just, let's assume that at some point I will reach a sub goal like that. You're gonna watch me and you're gonna hate me and how bad I am at Capture Monster Coliseum. So uh, I apologize in advance. Please do not uh, kill me. Please don't hit me over the head with a bat. I don't know what your instrument of choice is. No, no what? Hey, it's cruel. What are you saying no to? Nah, good, good, good. I like that energy. I am also the same with this game, actually. Years ago, I used to hate, 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 hate when I saw people playing it ca casually. But to be fair, it does depend on what the player's like. I really, I don't like the type of player in this game that um, just basically doesn't want to learn or try or apply themselves. That's actually the same with any game. But if someone's actually very enthusiastic about the game and actively trying to learn, I do very much enjoy it, and I enjoy the learning process a lot. As long as they're actually giving the game a good go, like, I do actually really enjoy seeing them play the game and learn as they go, and I always hate backseating people, but again, I don't know, maybe it's a narcissistic part of me, but I do like to think that I only give people advice that actually improves their gameplay experience. And I'm also very aware that pretty much everyone who does subtle freaking backseating or just full-on backseating probably also thinks that. But when people play this game, I kind of just want them to know like a few little things that are good enough so that they can beat the whole rest of the game by themselves on their own accord. Because there's a lot that this game... Oh, we're at the fairies now! Yay! Uh, we did all the fiends. Um, there's a lot of games uh, that, like, don't tell you what you should know. And you have to basically bash your head against a wall until you learn the hard way. Like, you know, well worth learning. What's worth learning? What exactly is worth learning? Yeah, Baron Sword literally looks like he's going to fucking shoot you in the knees. Hey, Tony. He's Italian. He's Sicilian. I'm allowed to say that because I am Sicilian. So I'm safe from the Sicilian Mafia. Actually, I don't know about that. Maybe they'll come after me and be like, You're fake. You grew up in Australia, man. You can't claim to be... And of course, they would use that exact same language and accent. They'd be like, Yo, man. Nah, we're not having that shit in Sicily. That's exactly what they would say. Your dad would hell backseat you. Did you hate it? Like, shut up, dad. You know what I would do? I would play my kids save file while they're in bed and just give them like a few good cards. So the next time they played, like, next time they went to play and they were struggling, they went to edit their deck and be like, Oh my god! I didn't know I had this card! And they would put in their deck and be like, yeah, I'm a boss. 
I'll just be like, and if they ask me what happened, I'd be like, Oh, sorry, I was, uh, I was playing last night and I thought it was my save file and I actually got a three in a row. So yeah, that's uh, your Blue Eyes White Dragon now, and man, they would love the Blue Eyes White Dragon forever if you did that for them. I never had anyone to backseat me in this game. I did start to like backseat my friend's game whenever you played this. Because, uh, but he was actually happy for me to tell him, like, what to do. Um, like, I would, when I figured out exactly how to do stuff in the custom duel, man, we were actually, like, very, very, very happy to go into the custom duel. Plus, we had to basically make, we didn't really have that many games back then, so when we hung out after school on a Friday, and, like, he did his karate, and then we get McDonald's on the way home, and we'd eat... We had hours to do shit, and we were so happy to honestly um, go to the custom duel and like strengthen our deck and then go back into the main game. And even though, oh my god, what the hell did I do? Even though we like never finished the game together, we were super, super, super happy um, to just do that stuff. Like, we were even happy just to hear the custom duel music and stuff, you know? This is surely the same password, right? Yeah, good. I don't know what I got wrong on that. Yeah, I know, right? It's funny that, because I know, um... One of the guys I used to work with, he's approaching his 40s, actually, and is a huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan. And it's literally because he's always been, like, a, a... A gamer, like a tabletop gamer. He's always loved trading cards. So, when Yu-Gi-Oh came out, it would have been an exciting new thing for him, you know. Yu-Gi-Oh wasn't like the other card games he'd played, like Magic and stuff. So he really got into it, and out of everyone I know, he owns, like, the most cards out of everyone. Where he's like, you know, he's like... He plays tabletop games, he's actually been Dungeon Master for us when we play, uh, Hero Quest. Um, you know, and it's funny, like, you think, why the hell does this guy play Yu-Gi-Oh? Isn't he, like different generation like again not saying older people can't enjoy it but like kind of thinking that he would like things of his own generation but it's just because he really always appreciated games like this so yeah and so we've had plenty of nights where we've you know smoked it up and uh played some tabletop games and stuff like that wing a elf i just entered that i'm pretty sure yeah okay cool uh, rain temperature yeah, it's funny that. It's the same as, like, also realizing, you know, uh, Yugi's grandpa and what he is as a character when you get older. Like, how he owns a game shop and everything, and you think, like, oh, it's just a kid's anime, right? Like, it's he owns a game shop because of plot reasons, but it's actually, like, that guy must have been just spending his whole life playing Dungeons & Dragons and actually just be a lifetime player of tabletop games, and that's why he eventually got into Yu-Gi-Oh!, yeah, I'm approaching that H2 wall shadow. It's just, uh, you know, with like... What am I doing here? Entering in freaking wrong letters again. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like, what... It's like, as I grow older, I still hold on to Yu-Gi-Oh! rather than like things that came out after Yu-Gi-Oh! But it's not because I... It's because I'm not really a tabletop game fan first, and a Yu-Gi-Oh! player second. I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh! like, fan first, and then, like, an everything else second kind of deal, you know what I mean? Why always scroll past? The T. The T, goddammit! You tell I'm going insane already, guys. Catch me in about six hours in a goddamn straitjacket. Yo, Tater Tot, what's up? Ooh, Exodia, you finished him. Impossible! You guys remember fucking Seto Kaiba? When Yu-Gi-Oh! summons a ghost, he's like, Uh, impossible! Like, it just sounds like he's just seen a fucking ghost. Yeah, I never played any card games before this. Yu-Gi-Oh! I got into it from uh, the morning anime, and I thought it was really cool, so of course, I wanted the damn cards, and I asked for the birthday. Yeah, he looked like that, he's like, uh, sorry. <clears throat> uh, I don't know, 
Kaiba probably wasn't constipated. Grown men still collect Hot Wheels, yeah, and it's like varying levels of cringe, depending on your collection. I don't know, it depends what you like. Anyone can say something's cringe, but I mean... I, um... Collecting isn't innately cringe, I just... In my opinion, for myself... I think that... Collecting... Prioritizing collecting over a lot of other things that you should really be on about, like, I can't personally do that. I don't think there's anything wrong with collecting, but I think if collecting is the number one priority of your life, I don't think it's too healthy. Um, I also just think in general, again, when I say this, it only probably applies to anywhere from 20 to 80% of people rather than, you know, a hundred or zero or whatever. I see a lot of people that collect fucking Funko Pop vinyls and go through phases of selling them and buying them and it's just like... I think it's a very, like, materialistic trap to get into collectible items. Um, and I also... I think it's basically glorified, like, shiny hoarding. I know people, I, can, I know you can organize your collections, but I think there's something to me is terrifying about collecting lots of objects that don't actually do anything but kind of just sit there, and there's only for you to look at them. Um, collecting for the sake of being very interested in the history of something is respectable, but collecting things for the sake of collecting things... I, I don't like that, personally. That's just my take on it, so... Feel free to disagree. I'm not going to vilify anyone. Have I been entering past two and a half hours? Yes, I absolutely have been. Approximately 2 hours and 22 minutes. And I have another, uh, I guess... We'll probably be doing this until the 5 hour mark, I'm not kidding you. And that will probably be the stream for tonight. And then tomorrow's stream will be the actual interesting collecting, like the non-password stuff. So, uh, feel free to join me, Crooked Cop, and stop me from going insane. I really need it. Oh my god, this password's cursed. Oh my god, wait, wait, wait for it. Alright. QR89 W FAP Literally FAP are the last three letters of this password. Oh my god. What percentage of cars are... Okay, so... There are a total of 853 cars in this game. And there are... Whoa, what the hell was that? Dude, my controller just spazzed out for a sec. What the hell? I was not holding that. Sorry, um, that was like a ghost was touching my controller. Um, like I wasn't holding the button there for a second. Anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah, there are 734 passwords in this game, so I'm entering them, and then the other 100 and whatever, 120-ish, approximately. I will be collecting that they're not passwords, so I have to duel people and collect their cards from the graveyards, and, you know, like... It's a lot more interesting than this, obviously. I can't even begin to really say... I don't think I need to actually tell anyone you know, the difference between entering in passwords and not entering in passwords. But there's a lot more stuff that's going to be going on in the the next part of the collecting old cards. Um, so if this isn't your cup of tea, which I don't blame you, tomorrow will be... Uh, basically, we're getting all the dumb, boring password entry out the way this stream, and then the next stream is going to be all the actual fun stuff, you know. Quote-unquote. Maybe not ultra fun, but, you know, a lot more dynamic. Yeah, you only need to collect 120, and by collect, it's like... Only a small fraction of them are actually, like, really painful. Um, Probably the most painful ones are, like, the reincarnation. Oh, what the hell was that? Like, having to save the game and reincarnate and exit, you know, so... 
Like, the only way to get Firewing Pegasus, apart from starting with the KGW deck, is to reincarnate it. But it's not the most painful card to get via reincarnation, honestly. So, yeah. Reincarnation is probably going to be the least fun part of the whole thing. Um, because instead of entering in passwords, we're going to be saving the game and then reincarnating and then exiting and then going back in. Like, most painful card to get. Um, probably... I would say the Exodia pieces that you have to reincarnate for. Those are ones that I'm actually kind of worried about. Because again, um, you can revive those cards from someone's graveyard. You can technically summon Exodia without having reincarnated them, but you have to revive, like, you have to kill Grandpa's stuff. And then revive it from the graveyard, which I might do, actually. If I can't, like, reincarnate and get stuff. I need to worry more about the cards you actually can't revive to reincarnate them. Um, for example... Firewing Pegasus, as I said, if you don't start with the King Tiger Wanghu deck, you absolutely have to reincarnate that card, or you will never, ever, ever see it. Never you will see it. Do I have a favorite card in Duels of the Roses? Um, I have several favorites. If you'd like to narrow it down to, like, favorite aesthetically, or what I think the favorite is, like, good, you know? Um, my favorite traditionally it was Summon Skull as a kid all the time. And then when I played this game, I valued, um, Toon Summon Skull a lot as well. So I'd probably say, I would say Toon Summon Skull. Like, if I had a gun to my head and I had to pick one, I'd probably say Toon Summon Skull. Before I got, you know, capped. Do I like Labyrinth Tank? I don't mind it. I like the Dark Machines in this game. But I'm not exactly partial to Labyrinth Tank. I probably like uh, Barrel Dragon more than that card. There's your Dungeon Worm for whoever was asking how to get that. I don't know if they're still in the stream anymore. Red Eyes. So I actually, I like Red Eyes a lot more than I did as a kid. And I don't fully know why. Um, I don't know. As a kid, I didn't like any of the real ace monsters of the main characters. I love Joey, but I didn't really care about Red Eyes. Yeah, Toons are great. I forget how much I like them, and also... Um, one of my favorite cards as a kid was always, uh, Relinquished. And I just totally forgot... That that card exists. Because it's not in this game. You know what I mean? So... I actually remember very early on dueling Pegasus over and over and over and over and over again, hoping he would play it. What the hell is that? I really remember, I like, coping as a kid, trying to get relinquished from Pegasus, and just, like, like really struggling to accept the fact that, like, he didn't have it, and it wasn't in the game, because in my mind, there was no good reason for it to be in, uh, for it to not be in the game. Okay, that makes sense. No Jinzo. The thing about that again is, like, I did realize early on that there just wasn't the Magnet Warriors in the game. But I couldn't accept, like, Relinquished. Because Relinquished was literally... It was featured in the same anime as, you know, all the other cards that were in this game, pretty much. But, um, I kind of, I did kind of understand that, like, the Magnet Warriors were after the original anime or whatever. In my head, I thought that it was acceptable somewhat, even though it's still bullshit, that those cards that were included in, with the game weren't actually in the game. But when it came to Relinquish, and also Blue-Eyes Toon Dragon, I was like, that's total bullshit. I didn't care as much about Blue-Eyes Toon Dragon because I was a little hipster as a kid. And I didn't actually care about um, Blue-Eyes White Dragon at all. Uh, even though, yeah, uh, Blue-Eyes Toon Dragon is cool as hell. And way, 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 way cooler than normal Blue-Eyes. And I still do believe that. 
uh, it was just like, okay, well, if literally every single fucking card that Pegasus played is in the game, except Relinquished, and Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, it's just like, why? Like, I thought they were walled behind a three in a row or something, but um, if Pegasus didn't actually play them, I was like, yeah, okay, they're not in the game. And it's like, you know it's a Ritual card, right? So you're expecting to flip over the Ritual, but instead he has freaking Gama Sword Oath and the Millennium Shield Ritual, and it's like, okay, but where's Relinquished? Literally, where is Relinquished? The only, like, Battle City card that's in this game is, uh, what is it? Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast. I guess then, uh, the contents for it, Gazelle and Berfame. Yugi plays them in Battle City as well. But who the hell cares about those gods, right? No disrespect to anyone that actually likes them, but I they're not they're nothing special, honestly. They're really not. Mod Redux type Flinkish? Absolutely not. Uh, modding things into that game is infinitely harder than anything that we did. Like, it's not even close. I don't think anyone on the planet is actually capable of doing that. Not even like the developers themselves at this point would probably retain that knowledge to add that stuff into the game. It's honestly... It was a miracle that we were able to make Redux in the first place. And the difficulty of what we accomplished is nowhere near as like big as uh, adding cards like that. Like, if we couldn't even add in the effect of Relinquish to a card that exists, we couldn't even change the picture of it. Like, it's very, very dire. To create a whole new monster, add a whole new number entry for it, add a whole new 3D model, animations, particle effects, like, it is so out of the realm of reasonable possibility. You know... Redux almost never happened. It was very, very lucky that the stars aligned for the Redux mod. And uh, it's probably the best mod we're going to get of that game for I don't know how long. I like to think that someone eventually will put more effort into modding it or whatever. or But I really doubt it. Like, the community is only getting smaller, it seems. You know... No, it's all good. I'm happy to talk about it, honestly. I'm happy to discuss it. But it's just, yeah, not possible. There are so many things in the game that should have worked that weren't even possible. Um, again, I'll say this till the fucking cows come home. We couldn't even make... Okay, even though we could edit the entire fusion table and... Uh, you know, say we could pick any two monsters to combine to make a fusion... When we pick one monster, like, say, for example, if we put in an entry that says Dark Magician plus Black Illusion Ritual equals Magician of Black Chaos, it doesn't work. And we still don't know why. Like, this is a thing that just should have worked, but it just never did. And we could never figure out why. So... What what I think would have been the, the coolest thing out of everything, making Rituals be a card that would uh, fuse with, like, their main monster in order to make that Ritual, that would have been the best thing. And it was the one thing that we were unable to get working. And I'm talking about things within the realm of possibility, obviously. Not like adding cards in the game or any of that shit. This is something that literally should have just worked. It just should have worked, and it did not. And we still don't know why. We can make any two monsters fuse in the game into any monster we want, no problem. Doesn't matter what the attack or defense or any of that bullshit is. It just always works. But if it's a monster plus a ritual card or a spell card or something, it just, does, it just doesn't. And, uh, yeah, we, as I said 50 times before, just then, we do not know why. We could never figure it out. 
It's a huge shame, yeah. Massive shame. Oh, that's all the insects done. That's all the insects done. It's not even that, Gecko. It's that we literally just try to make a fusion. Just monster plus ritual card. And yeah, it just doesn't work. So, actually, like, somewhat what you said is kind of probably what part of the problem is. They might have flagged um, non-monsters to just work entirely differently as a mechanic so that they could accommodate for the equip card fusions. And that's probably why they don't work, because there's probably a hard exception code... Or, sorry, a hard-coded exception that just says... This mo like, a monster shouldn't fuse with the non-thing. Or if it... If a monster fuses... What I think is going on... Um... Is that... If a monster fuses with a non-monster, it's probably... Trying to draw from the pool of, like, the equip fusion list. And so that's even more complicated, because... That's a pretty good assumption to make. The problem with that is... For us to actually make the, the uh, ritual fusions work, we would have to use those existing pools and change their contents. Um, which would ruin everything, really. Um, again, to make this mod and make everything smooth, we had to keep the byte size, the file size the same. We were basically, the mod was all about changing values rather than adding them. Adding things not only broke compatibility, but made things... It was just too complicated. It was... It's orders of magnitude more complicated than just changing a value in the game. Which is literally how we made the whole thing. Um... So, when you go into a duel and it's a completely different duel... It's because... All the hex, like, numbers in that duel are changed. Like, one for their tiles, each tiles on that field, one for each of their contents on that field. All we literally did was just change the value of each tile, each deck in the, uh, in the, each card in the deck. Um, the, like, leader of that, like, the deck leader, the rank of that deck leader, and the actual deck leader themselves. What the fuck? I did the thing again. Oh my god. So it's like, the fact that we're able to make an entirely new gameplay experience just out of replacing a value with a value across parts of the game that we could access without causing any problems is kind of, like, miraculous. Okay, I'm not trying to get people to, like, blow smoke up my ass or anything about it, but you know what I mean? It's just, like, I don't blame people for asking too much, but I think uh, people, if they kind of knew how, like mind-blowing it is that we made a whole new gameplay experience just out of replacing hex values with other hex values, they probably might be able to visualize how actual, like, how big of a challenge it would be to do a full-on mod. Yo, Glavitus, what's up? Like, it's actually unreal that the mod is the quality that it is. Um, when we literally just change hex values. That's all we did. Um, and again, I don't want to talk up myself too much, because I'm obviously, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without any of the other three guys. But I literally sat here for months in a modding tool that Blair made, and I just changed values until every single duel was as close as I could get that I, you know, to make a new experience out of it. And I literally just had to work with what resources were available in the game. For example, I could only use... We couldn't reverse engineer the AI. Even GMS, who wrote the book on this game, literally wrote all the good info about this game, has never been able to figure it all out himself. It's a massive undertaking, so... What I had to do... was manually test the AI, see what cards they could play, see what cards they couldn't play, um, see what maps they would work with, like, what tiles I could give to the AI, and I had to just make 21 duels out of 
giving the enemy different sets of cards and one of the existing AI in the game and all this, like, that is literally how I made all the duels in the game, was just changing the contents of their deck and the tiles on their map, changing the deck leader rank, and, like, for example, again... I had fun with it, that's why I did it, so I'm not really... Again, I don't want anyone to pat me on the back, because I genuinely really enjoyed that part. But I'm just kind of saying, like, instead of making good AI... Like, we couldn't touch the AI at all. I had to literally be like, alright, what is this AI good at? What can this AI do? What can that AI not do? And just had to do the best that I could for what I wanted a duel to be. I obviously had in my head what a duel should be. And then I had to make that work, and if I couldn't make it work, I had to make compromises. And then that's just... I basically just did that and tried things and tried things and tried things. Had to drop a lot of ideas, which sucks. Um, had to drop off a lot of cool ideas, but... Again, I'm happy with the final result. I have few regrets about it. Um, and I think ultimately it was getting to a point where everything that... Anything that I changed was taking away just as much as I was adding at that point. That's why I kind of... It was released when it was released. Solid in a fish. You can actually do that. You actually can do that in the modding tool. So check out the... Uh, I should probably link this resource, actually. If you go onto my YouTube, you can find the modding tool video there, and you can actually do that stuff. You can give any monster an attack up to like 8,192 before it breaks. Why do I keep doing that? What the hell? That was really bad. Sorry about the grunty... Gruntilda voice. Um, but yeah, the modding tool is there so that you guys can do whatever the hell you want. And honestly, the best use of the modding tool is to create the version of the game that you want to play, you know. You literally can just mod the base game so that all the, um... All the cards you can't obtain are obtainable. Just add them to the reincarnation pool, the three in a row pool, blah 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 blah. But again, oh my god, like it's so much more complex than that. Uh, for example, in the graveyard slots, it only loads the images for cards that are in both decks, and also cards such as what could possibly, uh, like, so to, basically what I'm saying is to save, like, loading times, the game only loads certain cards that you would actually possibly be able to see during a duel, which is all the, uh, destiny draw cards, it's all the fusion cards, all the special summon cards, like, for example, it loads the pictures of, um, all the great moth related cards in case you actually use other cards to summon those. Uh, all the destiny draw cards in case obviously you get a destiny draw so the pictures are loaded. It does not load any other card. So what this means is if we put a card um, such as like widespread ruin as a three in a row the image wouldn't load when you got the three in a row for it. It would tell you what the card's name was you would get the card, but the image wouldn't load. Whereas cards like Royal Decree, because you can actually Destiny draw Royal Decree, that is already loaded. So we could make that a three in a row. That's why I actually selected it as one. And um, that's why also... Not, not that I wasn't going to do this anyway, because it's actually worked out very conveniently that because you use different cards to summon all the ritual monsters, it preloads all the ritual monsters. So we could add them as a, an, as a three in a row. And so that way, when you get a three in a row of a ritual monster, if we set it that way, which we did, that image actually is already loaded into the game. So instead of getting a blank screen, or like a blank, just a black box where the image should be, that image actually loads, so it actually looks like you've, you know, it looks like smooth and it looks good. Um, and, uh, basically, if I didn't, th the thing about the Redux mod is, if I didn't tell you this, you probably wouldn't know. I'm not kidding. If I did not tell you that not all the images were loaded in a duel, 
you probably wouldn't know. Because when you get a three in a row in Redux, the image always loads. But it's only that way because we only assign preloaded image cards as a three in a row. That's why. So the game looks so smooth that no one would ever even know that. Unless they knew. Text describing the starter decks is clearly just ripped from the deck edit menu. You mean the white text that's on the screen right now? So that's the... It's the same text that they use in lots of points of the game, and it's also text compressed. They use a really weird text compression system. Um, I can't provide exact examples because I don't know it fully in depth. But, um... Basically, text compression is the reason why we couldn't change any dialogue or text in the game. It's like its own really complicated language, and we couldn't decode the text compression in this game. What do you mean? This is the... what? This is the password to Serpentine Princess. What am I getting wrong? Look. U-M-Q-3-W-Z-U-Z. U-M-Q-3-W-Z-U-Z. Oh, I'm doing Z-O-Z, I'm stupid. I literally entered in that three times. Okay, that's my fault. I am stupid. I am stupid, guys. Laugh at me all you want. Point and laugh. Here we go. Ready? This will work. Yeah, I'm stupid. Alright. Yay, reptiles! Do you actually... Oh yeah, your name's Unreal Gecko. That makes a lot of sense. And also, um... Yeah, Thoughts had to manually edit the starter deck info because there's no intuitive way to do that, and I don't actually know exactly how they did it. But I'm glad they did that, otherwise it would have been just left looking really dumb and stupid. Serpentine Princess deck is nuts. It's funny how it's really stupid, actually. Like, you can tell it's an oversight. You can get three copies of... Um, Serpentine Princess at the start of the game. But you can't even get a duplicate of... Tactical Warrior. And that is absolutely an oversight, because Tactical Warrior is quite weak. Especially plus, I forget, it's freaking... It's five stars in vanilla. It's actually such a bad card in vanilla, honestly. And Serpentine Princess, literally, you flip up three Serpentine Princess, it gives all of your cards 2700 attack. Like, all your reptiles... 2700. It's stupid. Like, the fact that they let you get that, but they don't let you get bonus copies of other cards, like, you know, the one I just mentioned. Detective Warrior is stupid. It's a complete oversight. Oh my god, like, do you guys know that you can't even get fucking armored starfish in the graveyard slots? There's literally no good reason for that. It is absolutely an oversight. That card doesn't even have an effect. It's just a boring, terrible card. But if that was, like, your favorite card for whatever reason, you like the model and, like, the you wanted to be a deck leader, too bad. You can't duplicate it in the graveyard slots. They just hate people who like armored fish and want armored starfish and want to punish them, I guess, somehow. Hey, Bonk, what's up? Hello, I, uh, welcome to hell. Enjoy your stay. I need to, like, use my right hand to enter some passwords, I think. Maybe that's the play. I know, right? I'm very confident that I fixed that card and you can obtain it in the graveyard slots and redux. Deep Sea Shark. How are you going, Bonk? How are you? We have more emotes on the way, by the way. And yes, I will talk about this over and over and over again. Because I'm very excited. And it's likely that some from this next round of the commission are actually going to be live before um, the two from the previous round of commissions that I did, the blush and the smug emote are up. Because for whatever reason, Twitch needs to manually approve those. I don't know how it works, but you know. I don't have instant eligibility, like instant upload eligibility, which is what you need to upload something without it being checked. And, um, apparently you need to stream for 60 days within a two-year period to gain that. 
And because I uploaded a trifecto emote, which is one, like, you know, they were smoking, uh, I... that resets the, like, it revokes the right, or whatever you have built up. So I have to basically stream until, like, April to get this. I should get it sometime in March. Um, and then that actually is what enables me to have follower emotes, which I also want to commission follower emotes. So I have a really strong set for you guys to use. I think with follower emotes, you can't actually use those in other people's chats. But um, as affiliate, your emote cap is like 9. No matter how much your channel expands, you can't get more than 9 tier 1 non-animated emote slots until uh, you get partner, which I am nowhere, nowhere close to that think you can you as an affiliate you cannot get more than oh you mean okay okay you mean the other ones i hope so because that would be really cool because effectively i'm going to use those follower emotes just as bonus sub emote slots that i guess people can have for free whatever yeah 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 um because uh not to be entitled but i would like to have more than nine slots where am I going here? Okay. And the weird thing is... Now they give you, like, proportionately, they give you, like, different... Like, they give you up to five animated emote slots, so don't worry about it. It's like, can I trade these? Can I swap these for normal ones? 1k bits emote you posted, yeah. Very different. Yeah, the follow emotes I'm pretty sure are only in that chat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's something like that. Oh my god, what is wrong with my throat? Um, and also, I do eventually want to commission emotes uh, for um, the other, like, you know, the bit stuff. The thing is, no one, uh, especially, I don't think anyone's going to do this anytime soon. No one's donated, ten, like, a thousand bits, so... No one is here to reap the reward if they were to do that. Maybe after I give it a good emote. I do have plans for the bit emotes, and I will also commission those. I plan on it, at least, anyway. And, um... My idea for the... Tier 2 and Tier 3 subs, because those are, like... I don't actually really expect anyone to do the Tier 2 or Tier 3 subs. I want to put the IIR ones there. I'm going to do... I'm, gonna, I'm trying to commission a Dark Magician one. I'm going to set that as the Tier 2 one. And then for the Tier 3 one, I'm going to put that Magician of Black Chaos IIR there. And then all of my Tier 1s will be emotes that are drawn by Angel Rose Star, so they all just look cohesive and like the same. And in case you're wondering, yes, I am extremely OCD when it comes to this shit. As, oh no! Oh, that was literally... I literally needed to tap one, like, one time. D-pad up one time to enter that password. God damn it. Also, I gotta take my break. My short break. I don't have to, but I would like to. That could have been it. See? I pressed X here, but I'm supposed to press up. And then X. For the Kairu Shin. Oh my god. Alright. Save. Not just once, but twice. Kairoshin is great. Very good um, single player card. Mm. This isn't cold anymore, which kind of ruins it. But I do appreciate a good sip of the coffee. There we go. Let's get that moving around. Hmm. Alright. That's done, though. Now to wash it down. Hmm.
Oh, Lord, spare me. Trying to stretch my fingers out, guys. Give me a second. And I don't care about the time of running, by the way. I really don't. It's not a competition. It's not an official run. It's just there. Uh, you know. For the sake of argument. So I can actually say how long it took me. Breaks inclusive. And also, you guys get to hear a different music for a bit. So how's that? How's that? But yeah, this is an official category or an official run... Oh uh, yeah, I forgot to announce that because I wasn't streaming for like five days. But it's great, isn't it? The gifts are very, very cool. Yeah, no, you remember that in the anime, right? That's when he's, um, he's looking at, he's looking through Joey's deck, and he's basically like, this deck's full of trash. Obviously he doesn't, I'm paraphrasing, but, yeah. He's just like, no one can win with these cards, Joey. Is pretty much, that's a lot closer to what he actually said, yeah. But it is funny. Um... The thing about the, um, the animated emotes is basically that one and the My Sass one are two of the only, like, good, reasonable gifts that I could find, and, um, I got my, uh, friend, you see him in the chat sometimes, his name's Nick at LOL. Um, my friend Dusk, I've known him for, like, ten years. Um, he is very savvy, like, very computer savvy with that sort of stuff. So I got him to edit both of those gifts so that they had a transparent background. And he nailed it. He's very, very, very good with that stuff. Um, for the other slots, I don't know what I'm going to do, though. I think... I actually have, uh... I have ideas for other animated emotes that aren't just anim like gifts from the anime. Um, but they're a lower priority than the commissioning, like commissioning the emotes that I actually want to commission. Spike Cedra. And um, basically, my plan was to get all these done. As soon as possible. So that I have a really good set for you guys, and then I'm just... I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I think part of that is actually kind of future-proofing the stream itself. Like, I actually kind of want a few more emotes than I can afford to put, like, assigned slots for. And it's literally because in case I do ever expand, or then I actually... I have the full set and everything... So that's kind of why I'm going to commission the follower ones. Because that way, if I get more slots, like if I ever make partner, which I'm not really sure, I don't actually... I'm not overly optimistic of that happening. Um, then that... I actually have those emotes ready to assign to those slots, and then I can assign some other random stuff, or commission from someone else, or like, you know, on Fiverr or something. A new set of emotes for whatever. And it's the same with, um, the... Yeah, basically for Sea Serpents to make a deck out of them, you need three copies of each of them. And then a bunch of the best possible five-star Aquas, like a few copies of Roaring Ocean Snake and stuff like that. So that you can just fuse Aqua Dragons. Is the best way to make a deck like that. What was I talking about? Of course, emotes, but like, where was I at? Yeah, the bit ones. 
So I have ideas for that. I have really cool ideas, but the reality is I'll probably be paying, like, a lot of money. Um, considering probably no one is going to be donating a large amount of bits to my channel. But I do think that it looks good, and, like, if someone's looking through my stuff, they can tell that I'm taking it quite seriously to, you know, put a lot of money into that. And that might actually influence someone's decision to just subscribe, even if they don't donate into bits, which is fine. Um, in Honestly, like, for me, the coolest thing about someone donating, say, a thousand bits would be seeing someone with a uh, leader ability badge next to their rank badge. That's literally what I think would be cool. Like, it would be cooler than the money. And I've wanted to, I, I've wanted to say this, but I don't want to, like, bait anyone into donating at 1k bits. But the first person to do it, I would be like, yo, which leader ability do you want? Because I can rearrange the badges, you know? I can set whatever bit badge to whatever I want. So that's why I set the first two to the white and red rows. Because they're at one bit. Uh, red and white, sorry, respectively. Because it's just one bit and 100 bits, which is nothing. It's like a cent and a dollar. After that, the leap is then dollars. Australian. Oh no, it's more than that. It's like $10 American? More than that? Anyways, um, I, I always thought it would be cool, but I, unfortunately I can't add... This is the only way I can do that. Um, I can't modify... You can't modify VIP badges on Twitch yet, or even mod badges. I don't know if they're ever going to do that. I hope that they do. More lower common denominator videos kind of... So what exactly do you think, or what are you on the lines of thinking? Because... Uh, I feel like the lowest common denominator stuff is more the editing style or the mass appeal that you're going for. Like, if you clickbait to be like, I played this shitty old Yu-Gi-Oh game. Not literally like that, but I'm paraphrasing. Or like, what is the worst Yu-Gi-Oh game? Or like, this is the most jank Yu-Gi-Oh game of all time, and then it's just basically a glorified clickbait of a playthrough of like... I don't know, Falsebound Kingdom or something? Um... I don't really want to do that. I would consider streaming, but... Like, you know, different stuff, but it's not me. Like, it's totally not me to stream a game that I don't play, like, freaking. I'm never gonna stream League of Legends or Fortnite, like, I'm just not. Like, I played Dota, I got 7,000 hours in Dota, and I am quitting, basically, I've already quit, effectively. And, um... I wouldn't even play Dota on stream, I just genuinely wouldn't. I'm not saying I would never react to a video on livestream, um, but if I reacted to something, it would have to be, like... I would... If there's a one reaction I would like to do... It would be reacting to... You know, Joel from Vine Source. He played this game. He obviously didn't get very far. I don't blame him. Um, but it would be a good opportunity for me to have a look at, like... What kills this game for beginner players. And, like... What different things that people could do... To improve their gameplay at the start enough to enjoy it at the start enough to want to keep going because this game isn't really fun until you actually feel like you're accomplishing something. Tier lists are spicy content and I did attempt to do those a while ago but they were very lazily made and um, I kind of don't like when other people, doesn't matter what they're talking about, just make them in a kind of lazy way. Like, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with people doing that. Just, I would rather make a tier list be, like, I want to have, like, I want to give each thing the spotlight and provide footage of how they're used, blah, 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 and it's a massive undertaking. It really is, if I put it that way. It goes from being a very easy, digestible format to being overwhelmingly difficult to do, and yeah. Segments where I give my opinion. I would also like to do that, but it would have to be relevant to the channel. So say, again, Yo, sure, what's up? We've been entering in passwords for three hours, by the way. Join in on the fun. Um, so... 
I would be like, the purpose of reacting to, um, Joel's playthrough is literally to discuss how bad the game is, like how unfriendly it is for new players, and stuff like that. Training passwords? No, this is an old cards run, I'm entering in passwords. As you can see by the title. Could definitely get part nine. It's actually very, very, very difficult. Um, I do appreciate the compliment, and I think it is possible. It's a massive, massive, massive grind. Um, it is way, way, way harder than you would think. The main barrier is you need an average of 80 viewers per stream for a certain period of time. And then it's not even guaranteed that you'll get partner. It's not even guaranteed at that point. You have to apply, like, most speedrunners, the most successful, like, speedrunners, apply multiple times before they get it. Um, and the requirements just get more difficult, more and more difficult over time. But, basically, at this point, unless you're averaging 80 plus viewers per stream, it is not even possible to get partner. It's just not. Yeah, so there's, a. Uh, 734 passwords to enter. And I'm about two-thirds of the way, I like to think. Ooh, Blast Feel. Yeah, that thing explodes. Ah, uh, look at that. Wait, what the hell? Did I just... That was a speeder on a moment. That car's not even on my fucking screen. I literally just started entering in the password for Violet Crystal. While in the middle of looking at passwords for machines. What the fuck, dude? I just entered the Matrix. That was... What? I'm literally looking at the Space Megatron password. And I just entered in the fucking password for Violet Crystal, randomly, without even realizing it, until it was in front of me. Holy shit. Oh my god, I'm in trouble. <laughs> what the fuck? That actually tripped me out, so I was like, wait a minute, did we just finish all the monsters? Like, no? What? What the hell, man? Oh my god, you can tell that my brain is... something's going on in there right now, it's... Turning into autopilot mode. I'm terrified, guys. Please, help me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, launch a spy, that's a pretty cool card. Need to backseat the stream. No, you're all fine. Dude. Nah, don't, don't apologize. You apologize about apologizing. Nah, no, I'm just kidding, man. Dude, I love having you here, man. Honestly, no need to apologize. It's all good. Look, I don't... Again, I hate to play favorites. But, like, most of you... Pretty much all you guys who have subscribed and are hanging around... Hanging around? I was going to say hanging around and hanging out at the same time. Hanging around? I really do appreciate. And at this point, man, you're comfortable... You, honestly, I'm comfortable having you here and talking about these things. Like, it means a lot, uh, it's a lot different to some random guy coming in, not introducing themselves, and someone like yourself having the same discussion. I do not mind talking about this at all, and I'm actually really appreciative that you're having a discussion with me, man. Like, I genuinely, I appreciate it. Turbo Diesel, what's up? How are you? Are you at attention to the, the sergeant? We've got to come up with new cutscenes. Feel strong, man. Uh, honestly, I'm very happy to have you here, man. I am. And, um, from one apologetic person to another, you don't need to be sorry. Um, I understand it's like, saying sorry is like a habit. Um, and it's a habit that I've been in for ages. But it's a habit that's worth cracking, you know. It is absolutely a habit that's worth uh, breaking at some point. Because uh, you want sorry to mean something, and I understand that it's uh, 
I understand that you might feel bad, but if there's nothing to feel bad about, man, you're all good. I did do the panels. Do you like them, Shura? I hope you like them. Again, those emotes that aren't present in the subset yet, I'm just waiting on Twitch to approve them. You see the Dark Witch blush emote and the... Um... The Tactical Warrior, or Command Knight, Smug One. They're, um... They're on their way. It's li I'm literally at the mercy of Twitch. Deciding which emotes I upload that they have to manually approve. And then I'm at the mercy of the time it takes for them to approve them. So the new set of emotes I'm commissioning, actually... One to four of them, any number of one to four of them will actually probably be up before those two are approved, and I'm not even kidding. Uh, but those, the new set are coming soon. Probably within the next 24 hours, honestly. By the end of the weekend, I would have uploaded them, and then it's up to Twitch if they approve them instantly or not. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But, um, basically, like, unless you hear an announcement from me, the Dark Witch and Command Knight emotes are basically being held hostage by Twitch. And it's up to Twitch to release them from prison. So that you guys can use them and enjoy them. You know, the emotes. And I hope that's as soon as possible, because... They're cool, and I would like for you guys to use them, because you guys have supported the channel, and I literally paid money for them, so you guys could use them. Including myself, of course. I do get joy out of them. Yep, I'm still passwording rats at FIFA. I, uh, I'm two-thirds of the way through, I guess. Uh, I am not losing my mind yet, which is good. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna get there eventually. Anyway, hey, FIFA, how's it going? Again, uh, I understand this is not the best part of it. That's why I'm getting this all out of the way and just doing it all first. Embrace the insanity. Exactly. Gonna wake up in a cold sweat. Before, actually, I think you missed it. Yeah, at Rancid Fever. A few minutes ago. Oh, this would have been bad. Um, just randomly, as I was looking at the password for um, Space Megatron... I just literally, without even thinking, or like I had no idea, I entered the password for Violet Crystal. And it's not even on my screen. And I was like, what? Like literally, what the fuck? Like my brain just farted. So badly. I, I don't even know what the hell happened there. Like my brain just went to autopilot for a second. And it thought I was like on a speed run for like a, a few seconds. Mind muddled, so am I. Your game of Uno is still going on. What is, like, the world record of a game of Uno? Like... Oh, look at that. Oh, F. It's only fans, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm going insane. Oh, my God. You like the panels? I'm glad you like the panels, man. I'm really glad you did. And I hope the... I don't know if you've actually read through it all, but I hope the what I did panels for is also reasonable. I don't know if you actually read through them all, but I hope, like... I hope the FAQ is good, like, and the links, the resources are good. I know, this is the ultimate peak, Clovis, but basically... Um... As I said, getting all this out the way first so that tomorrow's stream... I don't have to do any of this... I literally can do the fun stuff. Um, collecting all the cards, the f you know, the the, the non-password way, I guess. I don't know how else to describe that shit. Welcome, Zeno. Welcome to hell. Alright, uh, I need a Z here. Oh my god. Welcome to hell, Zeno. Jesus Christ. Thanks for being here, man. I appreciate it. And I hope the lurking uh, ended up alright. The thing is, you probably still want to lurk, like, I don't know, have this, uh, window minimize. 
Here's what I would do if I was watching this, unironically. I would pop out chat. I would pop out chat. Minimize the window or just like watch a different YouTube video entirely or something in the background. And just participate in chat pretty much. Fingers must be exhausted. Uh, they should be. I have taken brief breaks to stretch them out every like 200 passwords or so. So... I feel like I'm s this is slowing down a bit, though. I'm doing my best, Xeno Knight. Please send help. Anxiety. Ah, that's alright. I don't want people to be too nervous. I'm um, about participating in my chat. Um, just know I've got your back, man. I do, I do appreciate you being here, so... Don't be too shy. I know it's easy to say that, but, um, it's a psychological tip for you. I hate to play armchair psychologist, but it's not, obviously I'm not a psychologist. I have been to plenty of psychologists, though. Participating in things that make you nervous and succeeding in them to a degree is the best way to overcome those sorts of anxieties, if that makes sense. Um, when you, say if you participate in chat and it goes well, that is literally the best thing to confirm that you don't need to be nervous about participating into a chat, so... Again, I don't want to force anyone out of their comfort zone to a point where they... You know, I want to throw people in the deep end so that they drown, but... I think... Being out of your comfort zone in a comfortable environment... I know that sounds like an oxymoron... But having an opportunity to push yourself is very, very, very good. Um, so again, if like, again, parties... Maybe it's too overwhelming, you know. But, a Twitch chat, like, no one's even going to give you a funny look. The streamer might look at the camera... And you might feel personally attacked, but like... Nah, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Like, I'm not here to vilify you or anything, man. It's all good. Um, I don't even think there's anything, yeah, that you can say... That would really bother me at this point. Um, and the thing is, most of you guys probably know what you should and shouldn't say. Um, like, what isn't really a Twitch chat friendly sort of thing to say. Even if you want to say it or not, somewhere, to someone. I smell- oh my god! Oh my god, I can't handle this criticism. Challenge accepted. Well, shit. Now we're in trouble. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you can- uh, I don't want people to- I smell like pee pee poo poo. Well, that's lewd. Actually, no, I- Take that back. Why did I say that? Someone please send help. I'm going insane. Jesus Christ. I smell like pee pee poo poo. That is disgusting and I just showered earlier. So that is impossible. Alright. Oh my god. Okay. Sorry, but this password literally also says FAP. So holy fucking shit. I really wish these passwords didn't say that. Look at... Uh, uh. Uh, get off my screen, electric snake. Electric Snake, please. Don't want to see that password again. Uh, someone help. Chill then, yeah. It's when it's us, oh, same. It's funny because in my early 20s, I thought I was so much better than my teens, and now I'm just like, man, in my early 20s, I was a fucking literal baby. Literal baby. And I like to think that when I'm, like, you know around 30, I'm going to look back at my mid-twenties and be like, oh, I've improved so much. Because I really feel like it's a linear improvement at this point. I feel like, uh, you can tell my voice is dying at this point. I've just been talking for three minutes, 20 straight. Um, I feel like I used to not really be able to quantize time and learning things. But now I've I kind of... Uh, the one skill I've really learned over the past couple years is looking at things more objectively. You know, not letting your emotions get in the way of things. What the 
fuck is this password? I look back in early life and cringe. Yes and no. There are definitely, trust me, there are definitely things that randomly pop into my head that I still cringe at. Absolutely. But also, there is something like humble and... Like, you learn humility by realizing who you used to be and how far you've come, you know? Again, I don't think I'm perfect. I definitely look back and cringe. I actually, I cringe at my own aesthetic in older videos. Like, I can't believe for someone like myself who's so, like, sensitive to aesthetics, I didn't even know how to, like, do my own hair properly. And what I mean is not do it, but I mean just, like, why did it take me to the age of 26 to know that I should brush my hair while it's still wet? So, in all these old videos, I probably thought I looked nice. I just cringe. I'm just like, what the fuck? I'm like, did I really think that I looked good enough to, like, be on camera and shit? You know what I mean? And I've gotten over that for the most part, but it is also in part because I actually am more confident with how I look and blah, 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 blah. And most of the time, people uh, who have something to say generally are positive about it, which is good. And I'm like, at this point, I'm confident enough in my appearance to not really be... Like, I won't take it personally if someone makes fun of my appearance. Because... Look, if I was so embarrassed to have long hair and wear what I wear, like, I wouldn't fucking wear it. And it's taken me till my mid-twenties to realize that. That I'm comfortable enough. Um, that stuff takes time to get good at. Like, you know, in your late teens and early twenties, you start wearing a bunch of, like, weird shit. You're thinking that it makes you cooler and stuff. And it's not until you actually go outside and other people see you and the looks that you get and how you deal with them is, like... What actually makes you comfortable, like, or realize what you're actually comfortable wearing. And then that's eventually how, like, I went from wearing all random different crap to just wearing what I wear, like, all the time. Because I genuinely am happy to see myself in it, I'm happy to be seen in it, and I have nothing to be apologetic for. I'm more comfortable wearing this than I am uncomfortable being criticized for it, and that's the equilibrium that you want to reach. That's the equilibrium that anyone should aim to reach, really, is just being comfortable with what you're wearing. Why am I getting so hungry? I had, like, a big dinner, honestly. I had quite a bit of food. With polished versions of media life. Exactly. I've never been a heavy, like, social media head. Um... I gotta say this, though. I've lived with, um, family that are very, very nitpicky and critical. So that's where I get that from. And it's taken me a long time to kind of realize this, and now I have to get over that. But at the same time, it's who I am is someone who's, like, really sensitive about their aesthetic. It's something that I care about. And it's hard to tell yourself to not care about things that genuinely fuel you, you know? Still hungry and you've eaten more food than you usually do. It's weird that. What are we doing? Like, how much calories are we burning playing card games, you know, Pandora? Maybe because I'm pressing so many buttons, it's burned all these all this energy that I ate. Oh, you would absolutely get used to that. At some point, it would be a power move just knowing that everyone looks at you and they're like, Whoa, he's tall! And it's like, damn right I'm taller than you. Chocolate biscuits. What chocolate biscuits? Do I get any, Pandora? Because I'm hungry. Uh, I promise not to eat too many. I'll leave you some. I wish I had chocolate biscuits right now. Finished any percent over three times so far. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, assuming those runs go well, I need to de-rust from that shit whenever I get around to it. Um, after the hundred, uh, sorry, the old cards. I got to call hundred percent. After all cards, 
Um, I'm going to be going back to no passwords and still be doing that, I think, before I go back to any percent console. Because I am having fun with that still. Malted milk biscuits for one side. Is that, uh, are they digestives? What brand is it? McVitie's? McVitie's? I don't know how you pronounce that. Yeah, do you play basketball? Yeah, no, 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 I... As someone who's always been short, I do kind of understand to a degree what it's like. Um, people don't stare at me all the time, but they do patronize me. It's... and I eventually got used to it. What I eventually got used to is when I... because of my appearance, again, I'm not saying, oh, look at me, I'm such a princess. But very often, if I go into an uh, environment where, like, you know, it's mostly, like, say a pub. It's all boomers and they never ever see a guy who looks like, has a female silhouette. I, like, fucking old men stare holes through me. And they just stare at me. Because they also give no fucks. Um, they're not apologetic about staring at me. And after a while, I just, I've just embraced it. It's like, okay, cool. I'm literally living rent-free in this old boomer's head. He's probably gonna... Probably coming to terms with the fact that... I'm not actually... They've stared at me up and down and I'm not even a woman. And they just can't comprehend that. And they have no idea how to live with that. I start to find that very entertaining. And it's like, at some point, like... Like, nowadays, especially in summer... I, obviously not in winter, because it's fucking... But, okay... Summer here is so hot, and I hate wearing shoes and socks, because you just get really fucking sweaty. Like, it's really... some days are just too warm, so I literally... I just go out wearing flip-flops, and if someone wants to look down there, they're looking at the floor, I don't care. I genuinely don't care at this point. If they're gonna look there and then start to look up and then realize I'm not actually a woman, I just, honestly, that's funny. That's just funny. If people are checking me out from the bottom up because they think I'm a woman and then they see that I'm not, that is just hilarious, honestly. It happens, trust me, it happens. I'm not saying it's great, I'm not saying that this is, oh, I'm getting so much attention because it's usually attention, obviously you don't, you never, it's, it's never people you actually ever intend to attract, trust me, it's not. So it's not like it's all fun and games. Uh, but it is funny. Eventually just deal with it. Eventually just deal with, like, lonely old men just looking at you until they realize you're not a woman. It's their, their problem to deal with. Anyway, sorry if I'm being way too fucking weird, guys. I'm just basically giving you uh, some Clovis lore in case you wanted to know. Yeah, because I've heard that, like, Pandora, like, people, uh, women, sorry, especially women, like, will go out and, uh, I got friends, like, they go out wearing, especially on purpose, wear clothes that just don't highlight their figure or, like, cover up their figure. Like, really loose tops and everything, so that they don't get, like, gawked at by men and, like, ogled and stuff. No, there is only 734 passwords, so that's what I'm entering. And there's 120 cards in the game that you have to, um, get by other means, and either obtain them, or just revive them, or fusion summon them. So, after this stream, I'm probably going to run through that list and see what I actually need to do. Um, because for any card that I can fusion summon instead of gaining a hard copy, I will just fusion summon it. Picture a cow on the biscuits, yum. What, Sag? Or are you, like, way out of sync now and need a refresh? Or you mean because there's so many goddamn passwords? This is a password that's, uh... Ah, oh, this is, uh, Beast King of the Swamps. QN, QXNT Q packs. It's funny because this password just now reminds me of what is a PAX. Because it's got Q packs. Just PAX. I don't even know what that stands for. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's fucked up. And it's funny because... You guys know me. I've had my own, um... My own history. With all the woman stuff, obviously. And, like, it wasn't until I talked to more women that I understood that, like, being a woman is really not something to be envious about. And the attention you get for being a woman is not... It is not something to be envious about at all. And I'm glad I had these discussions in my late teens. Because it's, like... In no way should any sane human be, like, empowered by having people stare at them and make them feel, like, uncomfortable. Like, it's not healthy to basically, like, prey on people with your own eyes. Like, you just should not do that. And you don't really want to be stared at because... The thing is, you don't know the intent behind a stare. You don't know what they're thinking about. Maybe it could be some charming guy who's actually just, like... Oh, like, that woman is very attractive. It could also be someone who's a legitimate fucking creep that could ruin your life, and you don't know. Little girl should... Yeah, that's just fucked up. Like, people who... I don't know what it is. Like, look, we can all agree that we probably looked at someone else and thought that they were attractive. But you don't fucking, like, film people and make comments about what they're wearing and... Like, it's just like, what the fuck, man? Like, if you're gonna sniff someone's hair, like a stranger's hair, fucking go to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Like, just please... Please fucking... Get a life. Like... You know what I mean? Only go outside and bread with you. Yeah, I can totally understand that as well. And it's totally reasonable, honestly. Like, again, it took me enough conversations to kind of realize, like, what's actually going on. And that's also, you know, the more social you are, the more, more uh, socially aware you are and more responsible to not do shitty things. And, like, I think we actually... People kind of need to have these conversations to understand certain things. And it's just a shame that some people never really understood or had these conversations enough to understand that you should, like, respect other people and not be a fucking dickhead, you know? You know what I mean? So. Zone Eater! Those people are just fucked in the head. It's like, anytime I read stories about it, I... Like... Sometimes when people are talking about stories where just strangers are just fucking with them, I kind of... Like, I'm not saying I don't believe them, but they're hard to believe because I can't even remember the last time that someone here around where I was um, ever did anything that, like, anywhere close to being that ridiculous. And that, like, if I look at things objectively, it just makes me a lot more grateful to be uh, just in an area where people actually understand, you know, to not... Be a fucking weirdo. Here's the thing, like, I, I will be the first to admit, I'm not a fucking normal person. I have weird qualities about me. But there's this thing about knowing you're weird, being self-aware, and fucking treating others with respect. You know, like, just because you're weird, it doesn't mean you need to fucking make other people uncomfortable. I learned that way, way, way long ago, trust me. Oh, shit. <coughs> I did it again. I did this earlier. The last letter is G, uh, sorry, H, and I entered in as G. And I pressed X before pressing up. So that cost me a whole password entry. Which is great fun. It's like, I don't care what you're into. Fucking do that in your private time. Don't fuck with other people. Like, just don't. Good, he should have been arrested. That's the thing is, it's one thing to not fuck with other people, but if you fuck with other kids, you should go to hell. Unironically. Uh, to be fair, when it comes to kids, the cops absolutely do take that stuff way more seriously than adults and adults. There is just, like, I'm glad that humans collectively agree that, like... Being a weirdo with kids is the worst possible fucking thing you can do. Even prisoners, like, serial fucking murderers, even understand that it's, like, 
tears below them. Like, anyone who fucks with kids is just, there is no salvation, no sympathy deserved, none of that shit. Just the worst possible treatment possible for those people, please. Sorry if this com uh, if this conversation's too confronting, by the way. I honestly, I don't mind talking about the real shit, by the way. I don't mind it at all. It's just, if anyone uh, is uncomfortable, don't be afraid to speak out, because I understand if this isn't what everyone really wants to talk about in, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh stream. You know what I mean? It's like, if we're randomly discussing, like, normal, everyday shit, and someone's like, I'm uncomfortable, I'll be like, uh... But if we're talking about something, like, this serious and confrontational, and someone said that, I'll be like, oh, okay, I actually kind of, like, understand. You asked for me expect Exactly. Anytime, uh, I hear a really, like, ridiculous, hard-to-believe story, I'm like, well, if that was possible, it must have been in the United States. Because I do believe that there are people in the United States that actually do shit like blow vape smoke in your face or weird crap like that. Oh my god, man. Yeah, and it's sad, because the other thing about that Pandora is... I think people don't want to stick out a leg out to help younger people because they think they're going to get caught up into something or, you know, end up in trouble. Like, why are you talking to this kid? It's just like... Like, I don't know. If you have family members, like young family members, you kind of realize, like, you're allowed to, you know, interact with children without being a fucking freak. That's literally what social workers are for. People who work with, like... People who work with children... It's like, these are literally people who know that the youth struggle, and they stick a leg out to help them. It's not an easy task. And it's like... Children absolutely need to be protected, especially in the internet era, like... It's the fucking Wild Wild West. And that's why a lot of other things, um... Just like... Again, uh, streamers not taking the responsibility... When it comes to, like... You know, kind of being transparent and being like, okay, this is an 18 plus stream. Like, do not talk about anything, anything lewd or whatever if you are not 100% sure that kids aren't around. I'm not saying that it's not possible that, you know, some 17 year old is going to, like, lie on their Twitch profile and say they're 18 and participate in a stream or lurk or anything. But you have to make it very clear that your intent is to, for kids to not hear what you're saying. If you're going to have anything to do with anything, you know, sexual or whatever, it's just like, it is not the place for fucking kids. It's just not. That's why my stream is 18+, plus, because I don't want to be cracking any weird jokes if any kids are around. Like, I really don't want to be. QNF or F? What is this? Zero, one, Q... Ah, that's why. There's an F here. What the hell am I doing? And now we have the end. People who carry one every day? What do you mean? Carry a gun? <sighs> Sorry, I, di I didn't really... I missed something, I think. Janie got a gun dip. Doop dip. Tsh. Oh my god, Emma. You're only three weeks old, well. You mean, uh, 20 something years and three weeks old? I don't know. I don't actually know your age. Nor do I want to actually really guess it or have to know. But it could be three weeks after a birthday. Yeah, the internet is scary because it's not really regulated. Um, it's just like, man. The sad part is it really is the responsibility of parents. 
but fucking hell, there are so many ignorant parents on the planet, it is terrifying. They're like, oh, my kid won't- I decided to have a kid and I can't pacify it, I'm gonna give it an iPad and internet access and just forget about it. And it's just like, you motherfucker, if your kid ever gets kidnapped, you absolutely are responsible. If you do not monitor them on the internet or whatever. Or if you do not attempt to monitor them or their internet usage. I don't care how much a kid bitches and screams, it is literally for their own safety. Not to mention just people who have a kid in general and aren't responsible for them. It's just like, don't fucking have a kid, man. Just don't. A gun in his lunchbox, Jesus Christ. Lunchbox got a gun, but boop da. That song's just stuck in my head now, sorry. A gun sandwich. Fuck yeah. A bullet sandwich. Parents have to work two jobs. Uh, I don't really know what it is like. But I do understand that, yeah, if you want to pay off a house, then the... You absolutely need two jobs across a house. You need the, basically... Both partners in a household should be working. If you actually reasonably want to, like, pay shit off. It's kind of weird how it is now. Houses are so unreasonably expensive now. It's just like, whoa. Like, what do you actually do? Like, what's the difference... Between paying off a mortgage and just paying rent until you, like, die. If it's the same amount of money at this rate, it's just like, well, may as well not buy a house. If you don't have anyone to pass it on to, what is it worth? And the whole abortion debate is like, man, again, I don't really want to talk about topics or a shitstorm, but it's actually crazy how polarizing it is. When really, it should be the woman's choice. Whoever is pregnant should be their choice. And I don't think I'll ever disagree with that. And I think there's a really good reason for that, and it's not really, like, a Twitch-friendly thing to talk about. But I really think whoever is pregnant with that baby, it should be their choice, because it's literally their body. And that's how I see that. And I could elaborate on that, but I don't think it's a very friendly reason to elaborate on that. So we could just stick to the house discussion, I guess. But I'm just saying, again, like, before, in case anyone's questioning, like, if I was a woman and I was pregnant and I didn't want to have a child, I think I should have a right to not have that child. What are they going to do, like, force me or imprison me if I don't take care of it? Like, and then, like, that's possible, but then that child now lives without a parent. You know what I mean? It's just, like, do we really want to force people to be born once that starts, once that process the embryo starts or whatever. And it's like, also, what if you did not want to get pregnant? What if it was beyond your control? Again, this is... You have to use your imagination here. I'm not going to suggest the situation that leads to that. You can use your imagination of why someone would become pregnant without wanting a child. And at that point, there is no justification for forcing that person to keep that baby if they did not want to have one. Like, it's actually terrifying. Um, and I say that as a guy who doesn't actually understand what it's like to be a woman, period. And I'm not being a fucking cuck or anything. I think what I'm saying is 100% reasonable. It's like, okay, so what? You want the person... You want to force the person to have a baby and then they just dump it at an orphanage? Like, how is that any better than just, you know aborting it from the get-go, like, forcing a child to be born so that there's a situation where the adult, I don't know, ends, ends up in prison and then comes out of the prison system like a proper criminal and the baby grows up without parents and becomes a criminal. Like, what the fuck? That's just ridiculous. And hey, Zerka, what's up? Yeah, we're getting a bit deep and, uh, serious here, but really, it's just kind of how the conversation's led and... 
Really, I don't have a problem talking about the mature adult shit because we are all adults here, so... And I'd want people to know that they can feel comfortable discussing these things. I don't think anyone here has any, like, crazy radical views or anything, so... Yeah, I'm just trying to stay sane during this. Love throwing your own house, renting as little opportunities of breeze. Yeah, it's basically... And the, you know what the bullshit thing is nowadays? It's like... Paying land rates. If the girl won't have the baby, should the father not be able to pay the child support? Have this choice. So, I probably have to think a bit harder before I answer that question about this situation. Because... That's obviously where it gets fucked in the system, where it's like... Now they have to argue a court case of if the father actually wanted that, uh, the partner to have a baby or whatever. And, um, pff, where was I up to in these freaking passwords? Oh my god. Here I am. Um, here's the thing. As a male, I, from what I, what, what science has told me, I cannot create a baby without having you know, sex. No euphemism there. That's literally how it works. So, I I don't really know how to answer this question because I wouldn't have this problem if I've never tried, you know, tried or not actively tried, but, you know, p committed an act that literally is our reproducing act. Like, you know what I mean? Sorry, I'm trying to say this without being, like, really strange and weird, but, like, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be bothered with child support because I've never done anything that could possibly create a baby. You know what I mean? So, I think it's different. In saying that, it is still technically possible for a woman to, you know, do the, the bad thing. And perhaps create that. And, like, try to baby trap a guy. So, I don't really know. I guess this is why the whole situation is fucked up. But I do think ultimately because... Like, I think... The child support thing is probably a different case and different situation. And I think... Having a baby grow inside of you is probably a higher priority. Um... In terms of, like... safety of someone's actual physical body probably comes first before the discussion of financial support in a situation like this. You were neglected, Pan- I'm sorry to hear that. I- it's a hard thing to swallow, Pandora, because- Alright. Here's Try Not To Cry edition. I, uh, oh, how do I say this? I probably won't cry, I'm very much over this, but it took me years to get over this, so... I wasn't actually supposed to be born either. I am the child of... I am the third child of an abusive relationship that... stayed together... because... again, it was an abusive relationship. And, um, one of my parents planned on splitting from the other, years before I was born. And they stayed together purely, because they were in a really hard position. And they had no choice. Basically, like, they had no choice but to stay together. So, if they didn't stay together in this abusive relationship, I would not have been born. And... So... I've had to go through, you know, thinking about... I'm sure... I'm, I know I'm not the only person here who has been depressed or anxious. I want you guys to think about when you feel useless and how you have no place in the world, actually, basically, explicitly being told by a parent of yours that you weren't planned. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm the only unplanned baby ever, obviously. But basically, being told... You weren't supposed to happen. 
it's like, it's a really hard pill to swallow, you know? And to deal with that, you need to kind of realize that you've been given a gift. And I don't, I hate to be really ultra cliche, but, and I know it's like a cope or whatever, but it's just like, a life of misery is so counterintuitive to when you're born and just dealing with it. Like, you've been given life and you have people around you and there's good things around you and you have to, like, believe in all the good things around you and you have to believe that the world is a good place. And this changes your perspective entirely. For people who think the world is miserable, it's obvious that they're hurt. But you need to take the responsibility to take what you have and really just, like, appreciate what you have. And I know it sounds dumb, but it could be something just like a video game that you like playing. Music that you like listening to. Because you have no option. Now that you're here, what the fuck else are you going to do? Literally, what else are you going to do? You have a responsibility to your own body now that you've been... You didn't sign up for this fucking ride on Earth. Your parents just did that without uh, without asking for your permission, basically. So now you have the responsibility. And I know this is kind of meta. But, like, your brain is this thing that suffers. It goes through good and bad emotions. And you gain consciousness. And it's kind of up to you to protect your own self. It's up to your consciousness, you, whoever's reading, listening, and interpreting to what I'm saying. It is literally your goal to take care of your body and all of its emotional needs. And also, try to support every other motherfucker who's in the same situation, you know? Everyone else who's been fucked over by the system. You know, we live in a world, and there is a lot of hurt, obviously. There's a lot of sh bullshit going on around the world, but... It's our responsibility, again, socially, to try to make the environment better for us, ourselves and others around us, like... Because otherwise, what the fuck are you gonna do? Are you gonna cry for your whole life, you know what I mean? Again, you're allowed to be sad, and it's... I'm not saying this directly to anyone, I'm just basically projecting it, like, saying what I have to tell myself. It is sad. But there are just way more things to do in life than just be permanently, like... You know... Sorry for yourself. And I'm not saying no one, again, no one's in a bad situation or anything. A lot of us are. And I don't want to invalidate anyone who's had really traumatic upbringings. But honestly, like... It is totally your responsibility... ...to make a difference for yourself. Because you're here now. You're here now and... This is what you have. This is your life, basically. So, as Eminem would say, would you capture it or would you let it slip? Sorry that I had to round up that fully emotional speech with something meme-worthy, but I kind of wanted to break the ice a little bit. And it is kind of true, I just couldn't think of anything else to say there. But honestly, yeah, spaghetti. What the fuck? Basically, you're here now, and no matter how fucking hard it is, you have to progress at whatever rate that you can. Even if it's a slow rate, it's fine. But you have to believe that there's good in life. You have to value the things that are actually positive. And what's up, Duvek? Thing is, like, yes, there are people who have been given way more opportunities, and these are people who are world-class athletes or fucking Formula One drivers, whatever. We got dealt shit cards. You know, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh hand that just sucks. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to surrender? Or are you going to play that shit out? Because I'll tell you. If you start with a shit hand and you fucking win at life, it feels so much better than if you started with the god hand and just played it out. It really does. Read your history up there. 
So, how's that situation going for you right now? Because again, I'm not going to suggest that I know how to handle a situation like that. And I actually have someone I used to work with. He had a baby with someone who was just absolutely crazy and she was just a complete train wreck and ruining his life. And he's fought and bled for custody of his daughter. But once he had it, you know, his new partner, he's, he's on top of the world right now. He would have never ever imagined getting out of the trap that he was in. But he is. And he loves his daughter more than anything. Uh, probably more than his wife. And he probably will love his daughter more than anyone but their second upcoming daughter. And even though things were so shit for him, he's now on top of that situation. And after fighting all that battle and everything, like... Yo, Four, good morning, hello. Four, I got some bad news for you. Apparently the job that I'm starting doesn't let me have my nails done, so... I don't know how long I'm going to be working here, but it's funny. It's funny because... The manager that interviewed me, that was literally on shift, had her nails painted. But apparently I'm not allowed to do that, so whatever. Um, it's working with food, so that's why. It is a bit ridiculous. I'm hoping that if I work my ass off there, eventually they'll give me a free pass sometimes, but... It's weird. It is very weird... ...to do, um... To have the double standards. I know what you're thinking. Just don't... Just don't paint them. But it's like, I like it. I want to be able to do it without thinking, fuck. Okay, I've only got do two days to wear it. It takes hours for your nails to fucking dry and set. And then... You gotta get rid of it before you work. And it's just like... You know... Using the remover on your fingers, like, fucks up your skin. Blah, 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 blah. Wear some gloves. Exactly! They're all wearing plastic gloves there anyway. That's why I'm like, what the fuck? Because I know girls at Subway, like, the Subway, when you apply the work, they're like, you can't paint your nails. And then they wear gloves anyways, and the managers don't give a shit. They don't. Yeah, don't fuck with any family members that literally just want drama out of you. Don't enable them. It's hard sometimes, but man... Trust me, I'm in a situation where I'm trying to get rid of this stuff as well. So that's the sacrifice I'm making. Is that I'm literally going to work a job that doesn't let me do something that I really, really enjoy because I need money. I really do. And that's not an invite to subscribe randomly, by the way. I'm not shilling out Twitch. I don't want to turn Twitch into a job. Because then I'll stop, to en I'll stop enjoying it. And, uh, basically... Twitch being something I enjoy rather than a chore is what's going to keep me going through the the actual difficult and hard shit. Ah, so she's a narcissist. Yeah, they're the worst. Literally the worst. Hey, Ibisu. How's the run going? It's been, uh... Almost exactly four hours of me entering in passwords. So thank you for popping in and thanks for being here. Uh, we still have, uh, 133 more passwords to enter. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. We got more than that. We got 170 or 180 passwords to enter. Um, and then, I don't know about after that, I think I'm going to be finishing this run tomorrow, which is going to be all the non-password stuff, which would be a way more entertaining. So, until then, we are just talking about, like, real shit, basically. So, what's up? What's been going on in your life? Yeah, it is dreadful. It is dreadful. So, again, thank you guys all for being here, honestly, so much. It really means a lot, because I know this is torture. Believe me, I'm doing this myself. Gonna be about. Ah, that's no problem, man. 
Um, so yeah, we. This is the thing, okay? I am going through this for you guys because we met the sub goal, and I need to respect that we met the sub goal and do this for you. I am so happy to have you guys, honestly. You guys are keeping me going through. If it wasn't for you guys, I, there was no way I would ever do this. This is my way of proving to you guys that I actually do care. And I do really, really appreciate the stuff. That's the thing, Pandora. Like, it feels bad to say, but, like, Narcissus thrives on being, like, living rent three, rent three, rent free in your head. They just play mind games all the fucking time. You would not sub. No, no, it's fine. I appreciate it. This is honestly, uh, this is not really a brutal torture or anything. I am having fun hanging out with you guys, honestly. This isn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I'm not, like, being disoriented or anything. And my left thumb is fine, honestly. I will take another break at 600 and stretch my hands out. So, uh, yeah. My brain is kind of folding, but again, I'm not really worried about the time at all, so... I told myself that because I don't really want to be fussing about the speed of this. It's more just about the methods that I'm using. Yeah, well, Pandora, we can high-five there because I also have the same problem with the narcissist in the family. So... But yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, where were we? Where were we? There we are. Yeah. Keep the save. Well, what? What do you? Why wouldn't I keep the save? That would defeat the whole purpose of entering all these. Of course, I'm gonna keep the save, man. That's the whole point of this. I'm doing this, so yeah. I'm collecting all cards, so I'm gonna save this file and then. Or do you mean back up the save in case I screw something? I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, the point obviously is to save this. And then continue on the next stream. The file and complete the file. It is better to be safe. That's the thing. I'm kind of looking out for myself right now as best as I can. I am doing my best. It's all... all my, obviously, real-life bullshit is all behind closed doors. I don't... You know, like, example, I didn't stream for uh, five days. It's because, literally, if there's family over, there might be a massive fucking explosion of an argument, and I do not want anyone to have to hear that or deal with that. Um, so there are literally some nights where I just can't stream. You know what I mean? And I, I would- I bleed to stream. I have, you know, communicated... Nah, I'm not gonna be doing this run again after I've done all this. I'm not going to be doing one of these again, period, after I've done this. That's part of why I am so keen to do this, is so that I can upload it to YouTube so I actually have evidence that I've done this before, that I've literally obtained all the cards in the game. So if everyone's like, hey, have you ever done all cards run? I'm like, yep. Yep, here it is. And then uh, they don't have to watch me enter any all the passwords, but they can see that that footage is literally on YouTube. And they can watch the whole goddamn thing if they want to verify that I've entered them all manually. But they shouldn't have to. Because why would I just, you know, not do that? And yeah, it is, um... What is it? I don't even know what fucking password I entered. Maneater, Alone, it's Yashinoki. Is this run all passwords? No, it is all cards, as the title says. Hello, Sergeant Socom. Um, 
So, there's 734. Again, I have it in the title. I do this for a reason. In the title, I have all cards. So that if you're not sure what's going on, um, you can just type that in and it'll tell you what you need to know. I made that command so that it's... All that information is there. There's 734 passwords I have to enter. And if I sound a bit dickheaded right now, um, <laughs> it's literally because I've been entering passwords for four hours and I'm not done yet. So please pardon me, I apologize if I come off as brash or anything. Sam, so got your biscuits. What are you doing to yourself? Get your biscuits, and then uh, I'll take some. Thank you very much. ADHD. Yeah, I. Oh. I, uh... Again, I don't want to say I have ADHD, I've not been diagnosed, but it's like, it's just so relatable. Whenever I hear most people talking about how their lifestyle is with ADHD, I'm like... I literally have these exact same problems. So many times I've literally told someone I'm about to make breakfast, and I'm just... An hour or two later, I'm still on the computer just typing to people and what like flicking through streams and stuff like that. Hey, Cody! Good morning, good to see you here, man. Sorry, just... Oh, I've literally been entering passwords for over four hours. Please send help. Also, Sergeant Sarcom, if, if, if you're still here, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry if my mood was... Like, if I was, like, rude or something. Just, my brain is actually fogged from entering in these this many passwords. I'm doing my best. Was that laughing flower? Yeah, a rainbow flower. Okay. What are the other types of ADD? I don't even really know the types distinctly. Alright, BC, thank you very much for popping in again. Sorry if you're already gone and I didn't get to you in time, but um, thank you so much for popping in and being here, man. I really do appreciate it. And sorry if I'm not more attentive, I actually am getting massively drained, like, over time. It's like magic drain, you know? Yeah, um... 853 passwords in this game. And there are... If I'm being honest, if this run was all pass, just you entered a password in for everything, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't even consider doing it. It would kind of defeat the purpose of it entirely, you know? So, I'm front-loading all the boring crap. I'm doing all these passwords now. Um, so that the next stream will be me doing all the non-password stuff, which will obviously be way more interesting. Um, it just makes sense to do all this now so that I have access to all these cards to do the rest of the stuff. I might, uh, at the end of this, Dual Deckmaster I. It depends on when I finish this, honestly. And, uh, do that for Immortals. Because the Immortals, such as Rigorous Lever, are very, very, very good to collect cards from opponents. Very, very, very good. It's like one of the main cards in Soul Eater as well. It's useful for farming all the non-monster cards. Because you can clear all the monsters out of the graveyard, and only the non-monsters remains, and then, so they're easier to get. How are you anyways, Cody? How is your, um... It's your arm, right, that's injured, unfortunately. I got worried about you, man. I was like, shit, man, I hope Cody's okay. 
And like as much as uh, it was, you know, it sucks to hear that you're actually physically injured. I was a bit relieved to see you type back to me, you know. Like to hear that you're okay. I don't know what it is, man. It's something definitely parasocial with you. I just, I think you're cool, man. I really do. I don't even know what it is. I think, I feel like it's taste-wise. I don't know why. I actually don't know why. But if someone has very similar taste to me, it's like, I feel it in my soul, you know? I feel it in my bones. Alright, that's all the monsters done. Alright, alright. Okay. I really wanted to keep going, but... I think I should actually do this. I'm literally stretching my hands out by, like, hand spanning. Aggressively hand spanning. Oh, look at me. Look at me, guys. I'm a... I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Yeah, good, good, good. Yo, Seto. Dude, the real-life Seto is here. Oh, my God. How are you, Seto? Have you come to tear up my fourth Blue Eyes White Dragon? What's up? I'm just taking a break with my hands right now. Yeah, Seto Smug. I'm just giving my hands a break. I have been entering in passwords for like four hours. I had a couple breaks before, not very long. But welcome. We're getting closer and closer to reaching the end of our goal. Of entering the 734 passwords. Oh my god. Kaito from YouTube. Is that Seto's name in Japanese? What? What? I... I'm stupid. You have to educate me. No, it says Kaito. What? Your name says Seto Saotome. What is this? I'm confused. Send help. I'm going insane. I can't even use my brain. Ah, okay. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your badge? Owl All Access Pass 2018. What even is Owl? You had all access to an Owl Zoo? That is hectic. Mmm. Glorious water. Where would we be without water? I probably should use this break to also go to the bathroom. We wouldn't exactly. Exactly. Hydro, homie. I love water. I did uh, finish my... This thing. My iced coffee frappe before. Yo, Seto with a prime sub. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the love. You know what you get? You know what you get? Well, you get the emotes, but you also you get a heart from me. Isn't that romantic? Guys, this heart is not just for Seto. It's for all of you because I really value you guys a lot. I know I say that a lot, and I never get tired of saying that. I really thank you all for being here. So much. Thank you so much for the sub, Seto. I can't believe it, guys. Seto Kaiba subscribed to me. Thank you. I'm going to be back. I'm actually just going to go to the bathroom quickly. And then... Guys, I actually think we're going to finish doing the passwords. Alright. Hold on. Be right back.
Got to mute my mic, so that's why I'm like peering here. Oh! I'm back. Oh, did you guys miss me? I missed you guys. Mm. Uh, stretch it out. Almost pull my shoulder out by stretching. I'm so fit. Thank you again, Seto, for the sub. Massively appreciate it. Everyone who subbed. Even if you're just participating without a subscribe subscription. Thank you for being here. And, uh... Ah! So, are you the one who commented on my member po- oh, Okay. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Alright, alright, hold on. Split, what do you mean split? There you go, uh, you now are a VIP, Seto. Enjoy. Aren't I gonna pause it? No, I don't care about the time. I don't care about the time. Alright, I'm back. <clears throat> so, here we go. You're a VIP now, there you go. Again, as I said, I think I said to you in the comments, like, I wish I could edit the VIP badges, because then... I would make it a leader ability, and that would be pretty cool, uh, to say thanks for all the sub uh, support on YouTube. Unfortunately, Twitch don't have that as a feature, which really sucks. You buy some Yu-Gi-Oh boards to put up on your wall? Where from? That thing behind me is a custom AliExpress thing. Um, basically, I had to make an image of a col like a collage of that stuff. And then... We've done all the monsters, by the way. These are all the spells now, all the overpowered stuff. Um, basically had to print that on, like, an AliExpress shop. Prints out any image you want as, like, on a canvas. So, I did that, and then I ordered another canvas board, like a DIY one, and then I made that thing behind me pretty much by myself. I got my friend to help me with a collage. Because it had to be, like, manually done. There's no, like, efficient way to do collages, apparently through software, apart from just manually doing it and clicking, dragging. Uh, apart from that, I did all that. Yeah, get some guy to make it for you. If they have a skill like that, I was actually... I was considering this thing behind me going into, like, a, a framing place, or... like, having them staple it... Um, onto canvas. But... First of all, it's very expensive, and that thing already cost me enough money as it was for what it is. 
And uh, secondly... What was I going to say? Like, I didn't really know how to get it back safely from way out there, because it was like, it's like, I don't know, 10 kilometers away or something. And don't have a car. Also, I just want an excuse to use duct tape, because that's how I actually fix that up. If you look at the back of that, it's literally, um, like I use tape to secure it. Which, I know the adhesive's going to wear out over time, but... I think it's he being held together by friction now. I think the tape's been there long enough that it's actually just going to hold. You think it's moving? What's moving? Yours is moving? Mine is moving? How can you tell? The board? What board? My board? Or you think it's moving? Oh, no, I know what you mean. Um, it's from the air conditioner. Blowing air on it. Um, if I open my window and there's a strong breeze, it will actually knock it off what it's on. So, yeah. It is moving. It's a ghost! It's a stone ghost. Oh, look at all the- we, like, we've literally got better cars in the last, like, fucking five minutes than we have, like, through most of the game, or most of the four hours and twenty minutes so far. Yeah, just front load all the powerful spells, like, Time Steel, Monster Reborn, Copycat, Mimicat, Grave Robber. Very, very useful cards for, um, you know, what we're gonna be doing. Forest. Oh, now we're going to get all the terrain cards. Here we go. Ow, do, 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 do. Like my uh, impression of the synthesizer. What do you guys even think of... How do you guys rate the deck edit music? Do you give it one thumbs up, one thumbs down, two thumbs up, two thumbs down? Thumb in the middle? Like that? What speedrun am I trying today? This is not a speedrun, it's just an old cards run. We're completing the library. Um, so I need to enter in... Uh, just type exclamation mark old cards, it's in the title. <laughs> I made that command to explain basically what this run is, is I'm entering in... I have to enter in, um... 734 passwords to start. So, yeah. I've literally been entering in passwords this whole time. That's what the time is up there for. Seven. I gotta admit, I wouldn't... I wouldn't mind this song, but the amount of... You know that synthesizer is just like... Dear, dear. It's like, that actually starts to get very annoying. If it wasn't for that... And it doesn't sound bad until you realize you've been listening to it for like five minutes. Ready? It's about to start again. Ready? That is just like, please, no. That's what you hear in a fucking torture chamber in Guantanamo Bay. Uh, maybe I shouldn't talk about that. Everything else about the song, I am happy with, honestly. I like the bass. Also, the drums, actually. The drums are the best fucking part of the song. It's like, doop doo doo doop doo 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 I love that bit. Oh my god. Yeah, it's not even, like, a bad song. Like, they did probably know that people were going to spend a lot of time on the screen. And made it decent, but... Probably could have been longer of a loop. The one they really didn't give a fuck about is the trade one. I know what you're thinking. The trade menu is great. Right? 
But it's the shortest loop in the whole game. They just kind of knew that people weren't going to be listening to it for too long. So that it's like very short. Even though it's a very like nice little emotional piano piece, it's very short. So if you actually... As much as, you know, it's a good little loop, like... If you actually sit there and listen to it, it gets old very quickly. Like, really quickly. You wouldn't realize it until you actually start listening to it for a few minutes and you're like, oh, wow. Dark hole! Look at that. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're getting there though. We're getting there. God help me. Oh, it's Harpy's Feather Dust of this next one. I recognize this password. It's funny, because if you asked me, like, what is a password for this card or that card, like, out of the ones that we had available to us, like, in the 2000s, I wouldn't be able to type out most of them. Apart from, like, I don't know, Sword Stalker and Road Decree. But, if you showed me all those passwords and I had to connect one to the other, I would probably guess them all. Probably. You recognize little patterns. Again, for anyone here entered in passwords as a kid, what... What password did you enter as a kid that you relied on the most? What was your favorite password as a kid? Richard, right now, that does happen in practice, and you just kind of have to... It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it is bullshit, you gotta get out of your chest, but it's just like... Unfortunately, as I've said this, and I know my mindset tanks every now and then, the game does not give a shit if you're in practice or if you're in a run. You need to always be ready to play your, all your cards. Mirror Wall, that is the correct answer. Mirror Wall is absolutely the strongest, I reckon, when you're a beginner. Because you actually realize that the enemy just fucking attacks into it without calculating it. So if the enemy has, like, say if MFL Chakra, like, Ryoku to Zoa, you just put things into defense mode until it eventually gets, like, 100 attack or whatever you need to beat over it. Aqua Dragon is very strong, and I did use a lot of Aqua Dragons, but... Mirror Wall is absolutely the most impactful, I think, as a kid. Um, but yeah, another idea, Xeno, is when you practice, take Dimension Holes out of your deck. That way you know how to play when you don't draw the good card. It's probably the best way to practice this game, actually. If you already know what to do with uh, Dimension Hole on that duel, Take it out of your deck, so you never draw it. Because you will have runs where you're on really good pace, like minutes ahead. And when you don't draw D-hole on that, knowing how to play it is the difference between losing a minute and losing the whole run near the end. Um, you can replace them with fake traps or whatever. Or multiple copies of, like, any card that isn't good. That's my suggestion. I... The last time I did something like this, I practiced, um, Manawan and Fabulous Skull Knight with no Slate Warrior. I did over a hundred duels of him. Sparks, oh. Oh, watch out. Anything that isn't Leo Wizard, yeah, because you don't actually play with that card, so... And the only 5-star card you should ever really be playing in a speedrun, honestly, is, um... Like, in a passworded speedrun, is, um, Shadow Ghoul, if you decide to keep it in your deck. AI had to pick up 12 cards. What did you do to them? What have you done with the AI, Pandora? What am I 
I entering anyway? Alright, cool. Final flame. Even though it's usually not, it's just one flame, and then they still have fucking 3,800 life points. So I don't know why the fuck they call that card Final Flame, but okay. So that probably sounded aggressive. Why the hell is it called Final Flame when it only does like a 20th of the life points? I do not know. It's like you have to only use that when it actually literally is the final card that's played. Ukazi. Next will be Tremendous Fire, right? Yeah, it is. I can actually see it. It's poking out the bottom of the page. And it is on my screen. Yeah, uh, so the uncensored version of that is like a literally translated to penalty of burning at the cross, like... And it's really fitting of something that does more than 200 damage. Like, honestly, that card is fucking gruesome. It's brutal. It's actually... Whoa, like... Death Metal album cover brutal. It's actually insane. It's like unreasonable how brutal that is compared to the other burn cards that are actually stronger than it. It's actually crazy. Ah, uh, swords are revealing light! Yeah, last burn card used. What's up, Luna Knight? It's like, you just literally save that as a finishing move for the BM. Funny story, in Redux... Um, I actually gave... Because I made Shardy like a Pyro slash Burn deck. I actually ended up giving him Final Flame. Because... For people who hadn't seen that card... I thought it would be fucking brutal as hell for someone to lose to that card. And also I wanted... Eventually I decided that he would be the guy you'd get that card from. So I gave him, I think, one copy of that. So he rarely plays it. But if you're like on your last legs... And he plays that shit. Man. Just like, seeing that card being like... Really struggling on that duel. Seeing that card being flipped up and just being like, Oh no, oh no. And then just being, just dead. I was like, man, I actually unironically want this to be the player experience. I was a bit sadistic with that duel. I'm not gonna lie. But, 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 but... It was also that you could enjoy overcoming the challenge. Unironically. What the fuck? I've already entered that in. Okay, that makes sense. See, the point of a duel, like, especially that one, uh, I actually found... <laughs> That shardy duel when I was creating it, that's probably the duel that I'm one of the most proud of out of all of them, if not the most proud of, is the shardy duel in Redox. That's the one duel where everything worked exactly how I wanted it to, and I have I would not change anything about that duel, honestly. I wouldn't change a single thing about that duel. And I don't know if there's any other duels that I can say that for, really. I think that duel is probably the best that I made out of all of them. I'm not saying everything I did was perfect, I'm just saying that that was, out of all the duels that I engineered, that was probably the best. And I am very proud of that one. And it's one of the ones where it's like, okay, if someone was struggling at Taya or Tristan, I feel a bit bad, because they're not really supposed to be that brutal. But if someone's struggling at Shardy, it was actually like, this is what's supposed to happen. Like, literally, this is actually what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to get to this guy and be like, oh, fuck, like, my deck has a weakness. And then you're supposed to go back and assess your options of how you can now beat this guy. And there's actually a lot of um, useful cards uh, before him that you can use against Shardy, and it makes the duel a lot easier. Because I did actually kind of want people like, if you were skating by and getting lucky at that point, now you're really not getting lucky against Shardy. Like, you're just not. If you think you're going to play these, like, cheese strategies, you're just going to lose to that guy. And then, of course, if you're struggling very hard, 
Um, like again, you have options. You can go back to Joey or um, you can go back to yeah Joey and get Life Point recovery cards. <coughs> oh, dying. Get Joey uh, Life Point recovery cards from Joey. And um, what else is there? Get water cards from Marco, like um, Violent Rain. And I'm pretty sure he has like uh, the smaller ones that you can get that change to rain. Like, um, pretty sure he drops Furious Seeking. Because I'm happy for a player to get those cards. They're not super OP. The strength of them is they actually change the terrain. That's literally why they're good. Redux Bakura seems neat. Yeah, I really like that duel as well. Um, the thing is, I think, oh, I've had people question that I, like, what sort of deck that I gave him. Like, people didn't really, uh, someone didn't really seem to think that, um, Dark Dragons fit him. But, I have multiple reasons why I did that. The main, the first thing was... You know how he talks about his duel is the Dark Duel, like he's mastered the art of the Dark Duel. I'm like, okay, I have to give him Dark cards, basically. Like, that's the first thing that I thought of before anything else. And it's like, okay, what do you give him? You could give him Fiends or Spellcasters, like... But here's the thing. You have... Panic, you have Darkness Ruler in the game, who's guaranteed to have Fiends. Uh, and then you also have the final bosses who you probably want to give a set of the most powerful cards in the game to, right? So, the way that the Manawadan Fabler, the Zero the Mant one, worked out was I gave him all the fiends that were of a certain high attack threshold, and obviously I gave him, well not obviously, but I gave him Berfame as well, just as a collectible. Basically, I gave him all the fiends that Panic didn't use, um, because I- and it just made sense with this duel. It really made sense. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? I am very, very, very happy with that duel. There is just a couple things that aren't perfect about it, which I will- I can bring up in a second. Remind me if I forget. And they were more to do with the fact that I was using an AI that was on a different side. Like, it was- I was using, uh, AI for the opposite side that it was built for. So it has this, like, counting bug, so it- takes control of the wrong card when it uses, um, change of heart. Anyways. So, yeah, I wanted to give him dark cards, but also, when it comes to dark spellcasters, like, you have, well, fucking Dark Magician. That's obviously Yugi. As for the other ones, all the other sets, I was like, well, um, Grandpa, he plays spellcasters. I can give him the dark Spellcaster deck. That makes more sense, because he's actually tied to that. So, for Bakura, I took a bit of freedom, and I gave him the Dark Dragons, because... First of all, Dark Dragons are one of the cooler archetypes in the game. I don't actually think... That's not my sole opinion, I don't think. I think most people who play this game would agree that Dark Dragons are very cool. Dragons in general are cool, and Dark Dragons are cool. There are... They're an in-depth enough archetype that I can build a full deck around it, and also a full enemy deck around it. Which you can't really do with, like, some other ones. Like, you just can't. Um, like, some types in the game, you just cannot build a whole deck out of it, let alone a deck that the AI can play. So, and also, because I, at this point, I wanted the, I wanted the player to have a good resource. Alright, see you later, Wall Shadow. Thank you so much for popping in again. Um, sorry, I'll get to what you're saying, Cody, but I do need to uh, address Wall Shadow because that's the first time you've been in the stream, and thanks for sticking around so much, even though I'm literally just entering in passwords. Like, it actually means a lot, man. So thank you so much for being here. There you go, there's the heart. Have a heart from me. Thank you. Where were we? So yeah, anyway, I wanted the player to actually have a resource to get cards like the Dark Dragons, you know, the cool ones, like... Um... Red Eyes Black Dragon, and I didn't want them to be too early, and I, I think at that point, the player deserved to have some good monster cards, because it's kind of hard to come by them. And hey, Hippo, it is just passwords, and it's gonna be until I end the stream. 
it literally is going to be... I'm going to be doing this until I'm done with the passwords. And probably end the stream there, or do some quick something, like uh, farming Deckmaster Eye, and then saving, and then calling it there, like after I build a enemy farming deck. Where the hell was I? No, I'm not doing this in a single segment. Where was I? Dust Tornado, Cold Wave is the next one. You might be wondering, why wouldn't I do this in a single segment? And why would I not pause the timer? Because I don't really care about how fast this is, it's not even a legal run. Um, so I don't, I'm not being nitpicky about any of that. I have real life shit, including I need to start going to bed earlier. Uh, because I have... Why would I pause the timer? It literally doesn't matter. This isn't a speedrun, it's a run. It's a playthrough. I'm timing it for peace of mind for people to actually know how long it took me breaks inclusive. I'm just gonna say I've got real life shit that's more important than me bleeding and losing like real life stuff over this game. Like I've got a job coming up that I really need to adjust my sleep cycle for. Yeah, I'm just... Obviously, I'm not salty, I'm just like, I'm fucking losing my head here, entering in passwords for almost five hours. So please bear with me. Yeah. But genuinely, I this isn't a competition for me. Like, I'm not, I don't care about the timer. At all. It's just there, so people will be like, why didn't you time it? You know? Just so if people wanted to know how long this actually took me, I have a measured time for it. And again, I'm also using, uh, I'm going to be using Deckmaster I. I could have also used Deckmaster S to get my Goddess of Whim. That would have been easier, but I don't really care that much, honestly. I just basically want video evidence that I've gained all the cards in this game in one save file. Is basically why I'm doing this. That way, I can upload it to YouTube. And then if anyone ever asks if I've actually done this, I can say yes, I have. So you can go and watch it. And because this is the most torturous part of the run and nobody is actually going to want to watch it, it's split into two parts so I can tell people to watch the second half. Um, like, anyone who actually wants to know how to get cards, it's like, well, you can enter in the password or you can do what I did in part two, where I farm all the cards. Because, yeah, I don't want to have to make this any more painful than it already is. I don't even think anyone should actually be doing this. Like, I'm an advocate for people who don't do, like, ultra-long streams or anything. Because health is way more important. Um, it's just basically... With all the real-life shit I've had going on, um, mainly, like, preparing for jobs and just, in general, having a break day here and there to take care of my... I don't know, like, my hands or whatever. It's got to a point where I wasn't streaming for five days and... If I don't do this before I start my job, um, I it's like I don't really want this to be what I do at the end of a work shift. Like I really don't. So this weekend is kind of the last chance that I have to do this before it's like weird that like I waited to get a hundred subs and then just didn't play or stream for like over a week or like ten days. So now it's like I basically have to do this so that after my shifts. The info sections. Do you like it? I hope you like it, man. I know you don't really care about all the sub stuff. Um, I didn't address you for um, the new emotes that I have coming up. I can send them to you if you want to see them. Because, again, like... I know you don't really care too much about it. But I just think, like, I thought... It would be cool to show you just, like, the cool images of, you know, the Duels of the Roses monsters or whatever. And also to get your feedback on them because... You do have a keen eye on that stuff and good attention to detail, which is kind of why I value your opinion on it. I can show you them after the stream, though, but... Or at least the one that um, I'm actually still in the process of getting critique or f uh, feedbacking them for. Woohoo! Thank you so much! I'm trying to... Oh, an Eldritch Truth. There we go. I'm like, how do I pronounce that? An Eldritch Truth. Thank you so much for the sub, dude. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And hello, I'm going to take my controller, my hand off the controller to wave, and give you a heart. 
because I love you. Thank you so much for the D-Lurk sub. Mm, I really do appreciate it, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, hope you're doing well today, man. We were basically just talking about uh, sub stuff anyway. Um, so, what timing? Where the hell is my cursor? Ah, cool. Yeah, good to see you, man. Good to see you. It's awesome to see you in here, man. I wouldn't have, uh, yeah, recognized you unless you identified yourself. So, thanks for that. Otherwise, I'd be calling you an Eldritch Truth. I can call you Rai Rai if you want, or Rai, I guess. Bye, bye, Miss American Rai. Alright, I'm not actually gonna sing that whole song. I don't even like that song, honestly. What the hell is this password, by the way? WXWX, is that even fucking real? Yeah, it is. Um... Yeah, yeah. An Eldritch Truth. Hey, an Eldritch Truth. <laughs> really? You love that song? Well, look, I've just read Red Pilled You. It's not a good song. It's not a good song. I don't know what I don't like about it. I think it's just like American Pie. Like, it's just like drove my Chevy to the left. It's like, th I, I don't find this cool. Like, I'm sorry, but I don't relate to this driving a Chevrolet. And yeah, Don McLean probably... Pfft. What is that? It's funny. Uh, there's a... Uh, fuck, what's her name? Lady Gaga did a song where it's like, Give me a man like John Wayne. And it's like, wasn't John Wayne literally like a gay-hating guy? Like, why is she endorsing him? You know what I mean? That was Monster Recovery? Okay. Oh, oh, it's a password you recognize. It's called the Haunted. Oh, sorry. I'm losing my fucking mind. Oh my god, I was only almost going to reference something else about losing my fucking mind, but I better not. If you know, you know. Who that was John Wayne? I don't know. Some, like, actor from the 60s or some shit. You know, like Paul Newman, except Paul Newman was apparently actually a good guy. John Wayne is just a relic of the past, I guess. John McLean, John McLean, John McCain. Ah, McCain, you've done it again. He got everyone killed, who? Ah, well. Well, that went from, like, one, 1 to 100. I would say, uh, maybe it's somewhere in the middle of 0 and 100 to 100, but holy shit. Oh my god. Actually, did you guys know, at some point in American history... Um, the fuel that they developed and what they advertised, I forget exactly who, was tetraethyl lead. And this was literally fuel with lead in it. So for like literally decades, they were, in America, they were using uh, lead and just spewing lead into the atmosphere. Um, before they kind of realized like this is a bad idea. It's the same as, like, whoever invented fucking... What is it? Chlorofluorocarbons? You know, CFCs? I don't actually know what it stands for. It's something fluorocarbons. Yeah, exactly. So we literally used to be lead in fuel, and we were spilling, spewing out lead into the atmosphere. Oh my god! It's a speedrun, guys! It's a speedrun! Oh, we're gonna add the... Look at this. Dimension hole! Alright, sorry. Got excited. Oh, this is also, uh... A speedrun card, right? What actually is this one? Y34PN1SV? Uh... Uh... I actually forgot what this one is, but I recognize it. Ah, oh, that's why I recognize that's at the end of the fucking um, game. You get that. Yeah, put that in a fucking speedrun. Yep. Yeah, it, it wasn't until I saw Earthshaker that I'm like, ah, oh, because I recognized uh, NVE, whatever the fuck, 71A3. You know, the Fairy's Gift one, that one. Yeah, that one. I would if it wasn't such a high debt cost. Then again, now the lab break is faster. 
Lap break is literally faster than that card on like Grandpa or whatever. Because you don't have to deal with that fucking five year long animation. And yeah, so, uh, anyways, going back to the whole lead thing, it actually turns out that, um, one of the, like, linear things with, like, delinquent behavior is actually the lead blood content, like, the lead content in people's bloods. That is one very accurate linked thing to people who do, like, commit crimes and shit. And so, I can't prove this, but it's probably because America spewed so much lead into their atmosphere why they have maybe more crime per capita. It's because literally they had more lead in their blood, and the people who had more lead in their blood were more likely... Yorkist, please side with the Yorkist, absolutely. I say that in the description of the video, I s it, it's also in the readme. I just didn't want to yell at people, you know, and scream at them. And be like, eh, why do I have to start on this side? It's like, because if you don't, you'll probably cry if you're actually playing against. Especially, um... Rex is actually a lot more difficult in um, uh, 1.03 because Serpentine Princess goes from 5 stars to 4 star. So it means he can bring those cards out way more often than he does. And I don't just mean like a player would, I mean literally the SP recharge rate and the way all of his cards are balanced. He will literally play them more often than his other 5 star cards, which he didn't used to. Um, so, And it's still, unironically... I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the equal highest attack reptile at four stars, so if he opens with it, he will play it. Which, that's literally the difference of him opening with it, playing another card, and then playing a second one, to literally not playing it until he regenerates five SP somehow. Which is a huge difference, actually. Yeah, and it kind of makes sense, because we literally... We're, like, our blood is just constantly flowing through us. Again, I'm not a fucking scientist, but I can believe that there's actually merit to that. E5, G3, NRAD. This is what? Elf's Light, I think? Yeah. Yep, yep. Ah. Genius. Genius! Beast Fangs. Oh, you can put it on Twin and Thunder Dragon, right? Right? Uh, uh. CZLKY. Oh, my brain's fading, bros. I would like to get a some sort of snack after this, I think. Maybe it's time for um, some Italian sausage, you know, some cacciatore salami, and cheese, and bread. I think that's the play, actually. What do you want to eat? What are your options? Let me eat. All you have is bacon. Do you not have eggs? I'm trying to look for a fucking K here. Oh my god. Give me a K! It's Vile Germs. Yo, Atomic Cat. Hey, how's it going, man? Good to see ya. Good luck for the run. It's... We're getting closer to being done on the first segment. Um, basically, what I'm doing is entering in literally 734 passwords. And then we're going to stop the timer. And then I'm going to continue the timer from that point on the next stream and do all the non-password stuff. So, thanks for popping in and saying hello. And I hope this doesn't bore you to tears. I'm... My hands are... Gummy. 
Oh my god. Might be an egg. Absolutely check out for the egg, because the difference between a bacon only and an egg and bacon in a sandwich is huge. Plus, like, you already know my breakfast, basically. It's, um... Most of the time, guys... Oh, that's right. I've got fucking leftover KFC wings to reheat. I should before they go bad. Um, I should, yeah, I'm gonna air fry them, I think. After the stream ends and just pick at them. Uh, what was I saying? Like, my birthday... Birthday. Breakfast. It's not my birthday yet. It's not my birthday yet. Breakfast for me is usually cook the bacon, then cook eggs in the bacon grease while the hash brown is going in the air fryer. Next one is Horn of the Unicorn. I recognize this password as well. And then, uh, so I put on the toast, and I have it all sussed out and timed, and it's quite consistent how I time everything. I time everything according to how cooked the bacon is, and how close it's getting to being finished. So, most of my breakfasts are a bacon and egg sandwich between, you know, not just bread, but toast, served with a hash brown. That's most of my breakfast. Should probably also reheat the little bit of broccoli that's still left over. I did have some vegetables, but I haven't had greens in a few days, honestly. I don't know if a green bell pepper and red bell pepper counts, you know, capsicum. I literally am so used to having a lot of my audience be American that I just refer to things as the American name. I literally fucking said... To my real life, like, you know, obviously Australian friend the other day, BK, like, as if I was saying Burger King when we got Hungry Jacks, and I'm like, he was like, I'm so disappointed in you, man. I'm just like, God damn it, I try. I try to please all of you. Electro Whip. That's what it is. I entered it in wrong the first time. Electro Whip, as Stewie would say. What? No, they call peppers peppers, but they call capsicums bell peppers. We call them capsicums. Americans call them bell peppers. There we go. My brain's fading. Literally, last uh, two passwords I've got wrong before I've got them right, and the list is literally right in front of me. Um, also, there are some things that I didn't even realize British said different to us, or, you know, vice versa, obviously. Like, I don't know. Do you guys call them eggplant or aubergine here? We call it eggplant here. You call them... I didn't even know that. Aubergine. Yeah, and you guys also call them... I found this out when I... The aubergine thing, and also you guys call them courgettes. I found that out through, uh... Watching fucking Marco Pierre White's, like, Nor Stockpot fucking promo videos. You guys call them courgettes. We call them, uh... Zucchini. Island too. I didn't know you're from Ireland, Zeno. Or maybe you've told me that before. I apologize. From Ireland. I was born with a golden horseshoe up me arse. Sorry, I just have to make that reference to Seamus. Where the fuck is my cue? Here it is. Yeah, Book of Secret Arts. Oh wait, no, no, no. We skipped Violet Crystal because I literally... Oh my god, you missed it. Of course, uh, Hippo before. Just literally halfway through the machines, I got to Space Megatron. And even though I was, like, I just randomly entered the Violet Crystal password. Like, I, I just, I didn't even realize I did it until I hit X. And it was just the Violet Crystal password. Like, my brain just farted and went on autopilot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
and I, it was like, literally, I was at Space Megatron in the machine passwords, and I just, I hit X, and it was Violet Crystal, and I was just like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, I, I was fucking, I, what the hell? Like, I still can't believe that. How does that happen? I don't even know. Literally, I've conditioned my brain to, if I start entering in a password and talking to people, I, like, just finish a password as if I've finished a password and gone to the next one, and it's like a speedrun password. It was actually crazy. Yo, Alyssa, what's up? What did you miss? Just passwords. Just passwords. Literally nothing interesting. Honestly, nothing interesting. If you really want to know what conversation you missed, eventually this will be uploaded to YouTube. Along with part two. So, yeah. Yas. Not that you'd actually really want to see that, but, uh, yeah. Aubergine. I do like... I don't mind aubergine as a word. Same with courgettes. Courgette. I do like that word, actually. So I have absolutely no hate for people who call them differently. And plus, bell pepper makes sense. Makes more se sense than capsicum. You don't like the vegetables or any of them? I actually, um, I don't like capsicum. Unless it's roasted. And man, then suddenly it's fucking epic. It's one of the nicest things, honestly, if it's roasted. Otherwise, I hate it. It's paprika. They stole it from Hungary, right? They got a bit hungry. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sorry. Where was I? Power of Kai Shin. Machine Conversion Factory. Raise what he follow in Power of Kai Shin. Kunai with Chain. Salamandra. Uh, it's, not, it's not even the worst joke that I've ever fucking made. Trust me, and it won't be the worst that I ever make. Oh my god, can you tell I'm losing my mind? Or is that a sign that I'm still... I still have my wits about me. Oh, it's another speedrun password. Mega Morph. Nerfed Mega Morph, so it's like Mini Morph. Good lord almighty. Is it a sign that I've gone insane if I'm still making shit jokes? Because that just basically verifies that it is in fact me. The real Clovis. Like, if you ever have me next to a clone and you've got a gun, you just, just ask them to tell a joke. Yeah, uh, I didn't actually know that Paprika is actually Hungarian. Like, that's the origin. Hungary is actually the origin of Paprika. And all, uh, Hungarian recipes pretty much have Paprika in them. Or as some people call it, Paprika. But I don't like that pronunciation at all. I really don't. I really don't like that pronunciation. I was after... Megamorph Bright Castle, and we have Fiend Castle. Okay. Paprika is better than... It's like the arrow symbol, the greater than... Paprika. Yes, we did enter that password. You would pronounce it the way you do not like. Go for it. I honestly, I gotta confess that I still don't even know what I prefer out of um, oregano or oregano. I don't even know like what the correct way is to say that. What the fuck? I don't even know the last password I had. Was it kunai with chain? No, that's before. First one. This thing is I'm so fucking bad, I don't even know which one I said first, so you're gonna have to tell me. I'm so sorry, but you guys know I do this all the time. I'm like, I will do this or do that. And then people are like, oh, the first one, I'm like, I'm sorry, but I don't even remember. What fucking password am I at? Bright Castle, Fiend Castle, High Tide? High Tide. Alright. If I enter this and it, it's right in front of me, I'm stupid. Dude, you made me experience high tide. Ha! 
<laughs> Oregano? That's what I always said. That's what I always said. Also, um, here's a fucking word that I still don't know how to pronounce. Is it vase or vase? Is it vase? Neither feel more or less correct or more or less wrong to me. So every time I read it, same with like, especially, it pops up in this game a lot because of living vase or living vase. I don't even know, like, I like, I still don't actually know what pronunciation I prefer. Because I have like never just had to say that word. So I've never actually formed an opinion about it. I don't know either. Like, I genuinely don't know. I... I kind of wish that I had, like, a reason to be fucking, like, anal about one way or the other, so I had... I knew how to say that, or just had a preference for it is basically what I what I mean. Because I genuinely don't have a preference, and it fucks me, because every time the word comes up, I'm like, How do I say this? Vase, vase... Well, in that case, it's like they're both elongated, it's just pronounced differently. Ghost fan! Oh my god. Hurricane Ian, Jesus Christ. Wasn't that, isn't that like more heavy storm? Yeah, I don't think either is wrong either, but I kind of wish there was a right and a wrong way to say it so I could correct myself and just stick it to it, you know? Like, stick my guns to it. We got Gust Fan, yes we did, so we're at 7 completed. Alright guys, this password is a little bit, um, shy. So be nice to it. <laughs> I'm so shit! Now why is my mouse covering the password? American! Seven completed. Yeah, well, uh... Yeah, well, obviously Australian is much closer to British than it is American. We're literally, what, British prisoners. And I don't think Australia wants to be like America any more than the UK does. Yeah, but again, we call it capsicum instead of bell pepper. America calls it bell pepper. Brits call it bell pepper. We don't call it what either of you guys call it. What the fuck is this password? Mult- Okay then, well. How about it multiplies into a better fucking password? I didn't even know why- That made no sense. A password was like- I don't know, why couldn't that password be used for a card that I actually care about? Because that was a pretty easy one to enter. Some of these are just fucking scrambling my brain. Oh, this one's a bit- this is a Yu-Gi-Oh! GX card, it's a, a hero, look. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX! Generation X! Alright, well, that's not- I don't think it's actually... Red, yellow, orange, green pepper. That's right, they have orange ones, I actually forget about that. I don't really see them that often. I see the red and the green a lot, and then the yellows are rare, but I can't even remember the last time I've seen an orange one, honestly. Uh, what else do we have that's like the same, but we call it a different name? I can't think... ...of any more... Because there's so many that you kind of just get used to it, or you don't think about it. But those are the ones I usually remember. Is, um, courgettes. And, uh, what's the other one? Aubergine, yeah. Aubergine sounds a lot more fancy than zucchini, honestly. And that's coming from an Italian, like, I don't find Italian words very exotic. Zucchini sounds Italian or, like, Greek or something. Zucchini. Oh, it's a different way of pronunciation. I'm allowed to do that because I'm Italian, by the way. Don't at me. 
We actually had, uh, in the fried rice, mum made, it was, uh, green and red peppers. But the thing is... Chris Pratt. Oh, dude, that's the biggest fucking insult I've ever received. I'm just kidding, you're alright. <laughs> oh, why does Chris Pratt have to fucking ruin everything? Actually, he didn't ruin that thing, because it probably already sucked. Um... I don't know, what do you guys think of the whole Mario movie coming out in the trailer? I think it's like kind of cringe. I think what disappoints me the most is actually realizing it's exactly what people want it to be. And I'm not, not gonna see it. I mean, yeah, I always knew before, you know when people were fucking laughing about the cast? They'd lose their shit over Black, uh, Jack Black, and I'm just like, no, 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 no. This is actually literally the one person they've casted, apart from, I guess Charlie Day is good, that actually is going to nail that role. And I'm not, I don't even really like, I'm not like a f massive fan of Jack Black or anything, but I'm just like, no, he's actually going to kill this. Like, he's actually going to do a very good faithful, like, Bowser. And yeah, I admit, I didn't point out um, Charlie Day because I'm just not too familiar with his works. So, but once I heard his voice, I'm like, ah, oh, they did cast this guy, like, very well. But I mean, whole, like, Chris Pratt, are you fucking kidding me? Why not just get fucking Brad Pitt, like, oh my god. Like, oh my god, man, just fucking... What does Chris Pratt even do? What has he even done? Oh, I didn't mean to press X there. Oh, shit. Oh, I guess I'm entering that password again. <laughs> what does he do, though? Like, seriously. Is he just there to piss people off? Like, God. I'm Chris Pratt. I don't actually know what the fuck he sounds like. I don't know. He's probably an alright guy, but... Go. Go. Yeah. Uh, it's a me, Mario. Arrivederci. <laughs> yeah, it's a reference to fucking... What's the movie? Uh, Inglorious Bastards, I'm pretty sure that's what it's from. That's Brad Pitt in that, actually. Yeah. Arrivederci. That's about how fucking Italian... Chris Pratt sounds. The thing is, this is fucking Mario. It doesn't need a star-studded cast. Like, really? Does it really? And like, I'm sorry, but how many fucking famous white guy actors are there that they could have picked from? Surely there's someone better than Chris Pratt. Surely there's one guy. Just one fucking guy better than him. You know what I mean? Ah! Exactly! We all grew up on the fucking voice of Charles Martinet. And it's not even a live acting thing, it's a fucking voice acting thing. So after we've all grown to love Mario, it's a me, Mario. Everyone knows fucking Charles Martinet. Everyone knows this guy. We grew up with him. We love this guy, man. We love Mario. We love his voice lines. And they're like, Oh, you know that guy who made Mario fucking iconic for the whole world? Nah, we'll just hire Chris Pratt. We'll just fucking hire Chris Pratt instead. Like, I, I, I didn't even bring it up because it's just like, it's just the elephant in the room, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's been there for so fucking long, you don't even think twice about it anymore. Shadow spell, overpowered. Danny DeVito, he doesn't even sound like that. That's what he would probably sound like if he was doing an impression of Mario though. Anyone from Sopranos or Goodfellas? Fuck it, hell, man. Just get anyone who's worked in a Mafia movie to play as uh, Mario. Anyways, the movie is blatantly going to be a family movie made primarily for kids. Um, which is fine, but I'm not going to pay... I really, as much as I love an excuse to go to gold class with my real-life best friend... You know, just to fucking sink a bunch of cocktails and order some, like, sliders. Um, 
I don't think I'm going to be watching that. We literally... And that's bold. Like, we fucking watched Avatar 2 and we're not going to be watching that shit. We're just... I, well, I'm not. We'll think about it. Because I literally would just go there for the fucking... For the, you know... The, the gold class experience if I have to. Oh, dude, those interviews are the favorites. Like, yeah, you remember the Goomba guy? Yeah, I, I loved that as a kid. I loved, uh... You guys remember the first level in Super Mario 64? Where you, uh, you climb up the, the, the ladder? You know? You guys remember that? And then at the top, it's, it's Bowser, right? Yeah, it's Bowser Jr. in Super Mario 64. Love that game. Love that shit. This has been a wild fucking ride, this stream. <laughs> this has been the most expansive. I think we're all collectively, like, trying to do whatever we can to forget the fact that I'm entering in passwords. I mean, that's what I'm fucking doing. Oh my god. I'm trying not to have a goddamn heart attack. I'm gonna be like that guy who drank Red Bulls at a LAN cafe for, like, ages. Get up and just fucking boom, dead. Crisp rat. That is gross. I apologize. Actually, tangential to that. Randomly popped over my head. You guys know how panko breadcrumbs are made? They literally electrocute toast. I'm not kidding. Like, they zap toast. To make that. Oh, sorry, bread. They zap bread, not toast. They basically, uh, they toast bread by zapping it, like, with el actual electricity. Now you know. Just in case you ever wanted to know that, now you know. Oh, God. JPJ? What the hell? ZE34T. Bread is great. Bread is an MVP. Again, I know I've said this a bunch of times on stream before, but probably the most overpowered thing um, about bread is unironically freezing bread. You know how people say the best thing since sliced bread? And then also, like, the advent of refrigeration and freezing. Freezing bread. Oh my god. You just always have carbs. You always have a sandwich. You always, like, it never goes off. Hey, Brazilian guy, what's up? Welcome. We're actually near the end of this shit. We're actually getting close. Oh, holy crap, it's actually on the page. This is the last round of fucking... Oh my god, oh shit. Oh, I can't actually believe this is soon to be coming to an end. Holy god, Jesus, damn fuck. Oh my god. I actually can't believe this. Imagine if the power just fucking goes out now. That would be bad. That would be very sad. Anyways, how are you going, Brazilian guy? Dedicated fans of voice actors, not just people who... Yeah. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, you should only be hiring people who are really passionate about something, but it's like... Everyone's played Mario, so they're probably just like, Oh, we can get this big name. Yo, Patty, what's up? You guys are honestly near the end of this hell stream. Hell. Uh, basically, uh, I've been entering in passwords for over five hours at this point, and we're almost done. My god, we're almost done. Uh... We're still alive, though. We're still alive. Uh, not for long, though. I don't actually know if I'm going to be doing anything after the password thing before the next stream. I do kind of want to do everything else on the next stream to just kind of keep it that way. Yeah, the Jim Carrey Eggman was very good. Not that I'm a Sonic fan at all, but... He did a very good job with that. I was actually quite impressed. Because um, I wouldn't have called him actually being very good for that, but he killed it, man. He was like the highlight of the movie, pretty much. Uh, K 
F. Oh my god. Yeah, guys, I've literally been entering in passwords this whole stream. And... Yes, I have gone insane in the process. But it's okay. This will all be worth it. Eventually. This is what you subscribers made happen. You brought me to the brink. Nah, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Uh, yeah, but this is, uh, I'm honoring the sub goal of doing an all-cards run, and, um, this weekend is kind of my last chance to do it before I'm going to be starting work. I mean, I technically could do this run after, um, yeah, you're right, Zen. I'm actually kind of terrified about, like, what dreams I'm going to have, or, like, when I wake up, it'll be like, oh my god. Some, I'll probably, you know, I'll probably have some dream about entering in one of these passwords during a speedrun and actually getting, like, a world record or some shit like that. And wake up and be like, yeah, that obviously is fake. <laughs> ah, where we scroll. How'd the Redux speedrun go? Um, so that's actually on YouTube, Cody. I did two full runs of it, and the second one was like two hours, 45 minutes, approximately. So if you want to actually watch that, check it out. I can give you the gist of it, though. Really, I just took it because I, it was, it was acceptable. It was... The... There's fake trap, guys. We got a fake trap. Now we don't need to get that from the graveyard slots. Um... Finally, game of Uno is over. You've been entering in... You've been playing Uno almost for as long as I've been entering in 734 passwords. That is mind-blowing. Did you win, though? After all that effort, I would hope you would have won. Anyways, the Redux speedrun, again, it was... Uh, it's on YouTube. I can give you the gist of it, though. Uh, if you have any questions... You can ask, but I am probably not doing that again. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So, the optimal way to speedrun Redux is, unironically, to get a Mirror Force 3 in a row and reincarnate it into Ryoku as soon as possible. And that's just not really feasible for, like, real-time stuff. So I basically just took the most reliable route that I could think of and just tried to play the game out um, until it was done. And that's... Jesus, where is the Q? It's on this side of the R. Jesus. You can tell that I'm losing my mind here. Having fun? Nah, bro. What did I even enter? What password did I just enter? Uh, Magic Jammer, White Hole is the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this one. We're still alive, guys. We're still sane. I'm not insane, I promise. I'm not insane. I'm not insane. You guys remember uh, My Chemical Romance? Before the Black Parade. Before the Black Parade. You know, with a dramatic fucking face. You love MCR. My real life friend is a massive MCR fan. He's like. You would never be able to tell, but he's really, uh... Because he's not emo at all. Like, he's just not. But he, uh... He's massively into... MCR and, uh... Like, Fallout Boy. Not so much Panic at the Disco, but he does like them as well. Oh, what the fuck am I entering in? I started entering in the Royal Decree password. Halfway through... Entering in this password. I don't know the fuck this password is, honestly. Till I enter it. He does. I gotta give him the respect, you know. I'm doing it again. For actually committing to liking these bands and not feeling like he's too cool to listen to them. Seal oh my god, that Seal of the Ancients. Literally, literally the worst card in the game. Perhaps. NCR Fallout. What the hell is that? Nay Chemical Romance. It's like a horse version. I don't know. Uh, oh, oh. That's another password for the books. Uh, what's next? An easy password. Oh my god. Oh, guys, it's a childhood favorite. Everyone rejoice and put your hands together. Fake 
It's a mirror wall. Ah, oh, nice. Isn't that... That is nostalgic right there. Alright, next. Next! New California Republic. Is that... A mod? For a Fallout game? Expansion? Or you just mean, uh, New California Republic is the location in a... It's a faction! Oh, I... Okay. I remember seeing that flag. Isn't it like a mutated bear? It's like the flag of California, but like the thing's mutated or something? I recognize this password. Is this... It's not Gravity Bind. What is this? Want to become famous? Improve your channel on, uh, Russian Link. Um, alright, hold on. I'll ban that in a second. Obviously nobody here is actually gonna fucking click that, so I don't really care that much. Where the fuck is my queue? This password finishing is more important than that. Wanna become famous? Download a virus. <laughs> Beastly mirror ritual, okay. This password is a cutie. Look at this, literally cutie. Commencement dance! As soon as we finish this password, I'm gonna rush to fucking save and then stop this timer. Uh, before anything goes wrong, I absolutely have to make sure that I save. I got a new job. Yes, I did! I start, um, this Monday, actually. So that's why I'm kind of, uh, making sure that I get this all cards run done this weekend. Because, uh... You know, when I'm working and I come back and I want to stream, I don't actually want to, after a hot, like, a, you know, hours of working, come back and then... do this. Like, I really don't. Exhausted after shift, and I want to have like a good time and not entering in all these passwords. I think I missed a couple passwords, but we'll worry about that later on. Alrighty. Not touching the controller. Well, apart from not, not touching the buttons. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Is this real? Did I just do all that? Did I really just enter passwords in for five and a half hours? Alright, let's ban... Brandon Bermudez. Brendan fucking Yuri. Uh, ban that guy. Yeah, see you later. Oh my god. Okay, I think I missed a couple passwords, but... We'll worry about that when we check our library near the end of the run. Okay. Alrighty. Alrighty then. Um, so... Pfft. Probably should stop streaming, in all honesty. I would like to keep going and do something like route out tomorrow. Because I kind of want to route out tomorrow anyway. But, um, I feel like I just start thinking about going to bed on a sleep, so, um, Uh, 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 what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Alright, guys. I think we're gonna call it here. Alright, so here's my plan. Tomorrow we're gonna be streaming again. This stream tomorrow will be finishing the old cards run. 
And because we've already done all of the passwords, we don't need to do that anymore. Well, unless there was like two that I forgot. Yeah, it's a uh, quarter to three in the morning. I've been... I spent five and a half hours entering in passwords so that tomorrow we can actually do the shit that is actually interesting to watch. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, oh my god. So, um, thank you guys so much for the stream. Before I go, I do want to say again, thank you guys so much for being here. If you guys stuck through this stuff, me just entering in passwords, holy shit, give yourself a pat on the back. Go fucking boil the kettle, make yourself a hot coffee or a hot cocoa, or just get yourself something nice. You fucking deserve it. You deserve all the love from me. All the love from me. I don't even care if you're subscribed or if you're lurking or whatever. Just thank you guys so much for being here and keeping me sane through the process. Um, so again, good night to everyone, and for anyone who, again, is not interested, it's fine, no obligation to join, but we are going to raid my good friend Safi. He, if you guys want some nice, wholesome vibes, he is currently doing a challenge run of Deathless, Ratchet and & Clank, and... So if you like Ratchet and & Clank and you like entertaining people, I know Safi very well, I got a lot of love for him. I'm not just giving you guys, sending you guys off to some random dude. Safi and I get along very well. So if you guys love the stream here and the vibes here, you're going to love Safi as well. For anyone who actually wants to watch some more streaming stuff. So, thanks again everyone. Bless you all. Thank you so much. I will be in the Discord if you guys want to hang out, blah 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 blah. Um, otherwise, thank you guys. Heading off to Safi. Wish him a good luck if you want to be cool. Thank you.